just go live. Okay. I have now pressed go live. There is no turning back. There are no tomorrows. Hi, you're with Scott. I'm Ganji Kid. I'm the Gravekeeper. I'm the Super Chuffer. It's midnight. It's always midnight. And uh, today I'm with Stephen the Dead, forensic psychologist. And we're going to be doing Narcissism 101. Of course, we did just have a few technical issues getting the show started. So I had all my windows open. I had everything ready. We've had to reset the computers and all that jazz. Uh, We've got all you in chat. Hello, everyone in chat. I want to see your hellos in chat. Tell me you can hear oh, me. Tell there's me you can hear me. There's a few people in chat. Tell me you can hear me. Tell me you can hear me. Make sure you can hear me. And then I'm going to get Steve to say hello. Steve's going to give us a little background for all you new people that haven't met him before about his background. And I want you to tell me that you can hear him. Okay. So let's see that. Let's do a sound check. <laughs> okay. I'm fin nearly finished my brew. I thought I'd make a brew before we started, and I've ended up nearly drinking it all while we were having those technical difficulties. So, yeah, I'm Steve of the Dead, forensic psychology degree. Um, I'm currently having a break between going back and studying my master's. I've been working with Scott for a while now. I also make long form videos about mainly psychology using the the, the lens of a, a streamer called Dark Side Phil. And I'm also a bit rushed because I'm not the best with technical difficulties, so I've no idea how people like Scott and um, ALT and Sam so I'll hold it down. So always in awe of of what you've managed to do. Cool. Okay, we're rocking then. We're rocking. Um, so, <laughs> so like I had it all. Like, we we're all we're all ready to go and all like lined up. I am confused as fuck now. What I want is my picture of my narcissists. On the air, I had a picture for my like thing, so I want to get that set up. Um, mm -hmm. Also, I want you to tell the audience. You mentioned this streamer called Dark Side Phil. Okay, I'll, I'll give the lowdown from the high ground today before we get started. We're going to talk yeah. about narcissism. We're going to talk about different kinds of narcissists. We're going to talk about the, the nine traits of narcissism. Um, Steve's done like a whole load of like show me your notes, wave them around. Um, he's done a whole load of stuff. Showing like, off the notes, they'll be able to read what we've got coming up. <laughs> um, we're going to be doing all the different uh, best material, the traits. Then we're going to be talking about um, other aspects of narcissism, narcissism and relationships. We're also going to cover for this personalities test for a bit of fun we're going to answer all the mm -hmm. questions as if you were a narcissist and then we're going to see what the results come out like we're going to give some tips and advice for anyone who's dealing with any of these problems in the real time and uh there's this um slightly other aspect of it which is that there's a streamer called dark side phil and um it's hard for me to think Mm -hmm. I know, I've got to do two things in my brain. So first of all, let's just, I'll do my, my speaking, then I'll do my typing on Google. Um, it's hard for me to think how to introduce a new audience to Dark Side Phil and why we'd be talking about this other streamer. Um, I'm going to try and bring the context, um, and you in chat as well, you can bring your context to this today. You can bring your um, ideas. Anytime you throw me a tippy, we'll throw it over to thecoffee.com and I'll read your questions from there. If you've got questions from the coffee.com for your tippies or the super chats, so you can bring your context through the super chats and the tippies that way. Uh, I will be throwing in like, oh, so Steve, what's it like living with a narcissist? What's it like dealing with a relationship? But we've got these other aspects. We've got these... Uh... I don't know. I've never done it. <laughs> yeah. oh, but, we, but maybe people in chat will be able to help us with that. But we've got this other yeah, context, sure. Sure. which is about Dark Side Phil. So I need you to quickly explain who Dark Side Phil is and why he comes into mm. this conversation and, and what's going on with this chuffer um, and why he's your uh, chosen, like, uh, favourite internet narcissist. <laughs> and I'll open up some more windows and, and do some stuff, so, yeah. Sikorsky Aircraft. Um, okay, so there's a streamer called Darkside Phil and he is basically the textbook definition of a narcissist, which is why he's very, very good as a sort of foil to, to highlight different behavioural traits associated with narcissism. Now, Phil also happens to be in the slightly unique position where he doesn't socialize much. And most of the time with most narcissists, because they're socializing with family and friends, work colleagues and sort of, you know, the, the relationships and the social networks that, that we all form as part of our lives going about our daily business. Those social situations provide lots of um, opportunities for narcissists to learn how to adjust their behavior and manage their image and you know deal with conflict and all sorts of stuff like that so their traits are usually not as outright extreme as phil's are because phil's have been allowed to fester and grow unimpeded because he's basically been in his own little fiefdom of if you disagree with me i could ban you from the my automatic chat. tax so he's gone sorry, sorry very very far very very extreme and his behavior is 
in me personally, like clinically and um, psychologically, in every sense of the word, incredible. He's, he's a good foil for narcissism and to show how certain traits can be magnified or certain traits can manifest and how narcissism can drive a person's behavioral and decision making. So he's fun. He's, he's fun as well because he's just such a toxic person. Fun to shit on him. So we've got this guy. If you've never heard of him, you'll be able to find out a little bit about him through my Run. channel. Where <laughs> Run, yeah. um, I did one live talking about how not to stream to try and introduce him. We also did how he relates to his audience as our, one of our first episodes of Thus. Um, and he comes up in conversation yeah. a bit. Uh, we did this episode about gambling, gaming and addiction and he was uh, a focus of that. He spends, oh yeah, he was in uh, that as well. Yeah. Tell the audience about how much money Darkside Phil spent on a mobile game this year or over his time. Um, I don't know about this year because it's only February. But I know that an estimate is at least a hundred thousand. One like there's somebody who also plays the game and sort of talks about it. It's a guy called TJ. He, it's so he knows how I much, and so you can see how much Phil has spent by how much his roster is worth. And so there's basically you can work out how much he's spent to get okay, so what he's so, got. So we're talking about a streamer. Um, he who, is over a hundred thousand. Who has spent over a hundred thousand, hundred thousand dollars, pounds, whatever you want to call them, on a mobile game, continually begging his audience, continually grifting. He's hit the highs of YouTube. He's been in the lows. That's Dark Side Phil. Steve of the Dead's channel is. Uh, Steve of the Dead at Archangel Steve. You can find him on YouTube. Head over there and subscribe if you haven't already. And there's a lot of videos here about psychology, narcissism, all different things. And quite a few of them are through the perspective of this dark side feel conversation. So now that I've, I've given a clear <laughs> outline as to what's going on there, I've got a few tippies come in. Um, sadly, you can't hear the sound effects going off, Steve, but uh, Cameron has sent me two I pounds can't. to say nice top. Nice top. No, he's wearing my clothes. My clothes. My nice top. Thank you. Thank you. I did choose it specifically for today because I thought I would look pretty good being as I'm a really important good chuffer. I thought I'd look pretty good in my nice clothes. See, that was a narcissism joke. Um, well, maybe they meant me. Maybe they, me and my like sort of indistinct black hoodie. Yeah, I can't, I can't never tell what. On it. I can never tell what you're wearing. It's always black. <laughs> um, black. Yeah. Um, we got a coffee tippy through in as well. In my defence. I have been quite ill and I'm still feeling a bit rough, so I've not even shaved or anything. So, like, my hair's starting to grow into those little points. Really I think funny. it quite suits you. Um, we got one in uh, on the super chat. We've got Isabella while I was offline saying the channel's excellent. Thank thank you, Isabella. And Black Cat sa sad, 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 Sabbed Crows. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. I, I can't read your name, but uh, thank you very much for buying us a coffee. Crows. I really appreciate it. I really appreciate it. And we've got a super chick, super sticker from What the Hen saying thanks. I will call these out as they come up. So uh, I do appreciate them. I really do. You know, I really do. Um, oh, you Helen, know, I always wanted to do fencing. Yeah. Yeah. Helen's brought up fencing. I used to be a fencer. Yeah. I was British. Uh, I went to the. I went to the World Championships and represented Great Britain and came 41st in the world. Um, so that was all right. <laughs> that <laughs> That's was all first right. in Britain. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> That's um, number one in Britain. <laughs> but uh, it was quite good. Uh, I, that was schoolboy fencing. You know, I, I didn't go into the, the senior squad in the Olympics or anything. But, you know, I had a good go at that. It was good fun, yeah. Um, have you got your LucasAid on hand, Steve? Got your LucasAid. I've got my Alpro chocolate soy milk. <laughs> Right, so I'm starting to settle now. I'm starting to settle after that disastrous yeah. start to the stream. Because usually start. I get here half an hour early and get everything set up, and then having to turn it all off and on again, that was a bit of a nightmare. But uh, we are up and rolling. Yeah, I think we, I think we're ready to go. I think we're ready to rock and roll. Usually I like to get straight into it so that we don't have a load of chuff at the start. But <laughs> but right, um, we're going to talk narcissist. The one yeah. unavoidable this time. Yeah. 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 Well, are you already in chat. You're already in chat. I know there's a little bit of a delay. Give me your heads up in chat. You all ready? You've got your little drink and your snack and you're ready to, to go for this? Oh, I've not got a snack. <laughs> you're not supposed to, to be eating. Stream, though, yeah, you're yeah. not supposed to be eating. Yeah. <laughs> it's a good one for people who are watching, though. You know, if you're going to be listening in and doing something while you're listening, that's fine. But I want your thumbs. I want you to keep popping back in. I'm going to be asking you some questions as we go. And uh, it's nice to have you. Hey, well, the, hang on a minute. He's got, <clears throat> he's got more grey in his beard than I have in mine. Mm. I saw that, that comment in chat. Steve is Scott's dad. 
<laughs> How dare you? We don't have to. We don't have to pick out the uh, the mean comments. We can we can focus on the nice ones. But I tell you what, I do not. I will bin out all the weird stuff. But I do not worry about what you say in chat. If you want to have different sorts of opinions, fine. The lines are drawn at things like homophobia, racism. You know all the normal stuff. But otherwise, you know, you go for it in chat and have your different opinions, and certainly bring things to our attention as they come up. Because I think there might be some people who know a bit more than me about relationships with uh, narcissists. So yeah, talking of narcissists, as as we're supposed to be fucking doing. Um, <laughs> my first question <clears throat> is: There are different types of narcissists, Steve. I've heard about covert and overt. Um, are there different types of narcissists? Is it one size fits all this, or is there certain differences? There are, there are. But um, let's. Okay, so narcissism exists on a spectrum, like all personality traits. They exist on a spectrum. So. A little bit of narcissism here and there is not always necessarily indicative that somebody has narcissistic personality disorder. You know, it, it's good to have a, a sense of ego and a sense of self-importance. You're supposed to feel good about yourself. So, you know, a, a little doses of narcissism here and there are fine. You're okay to celebrate your achievement. You know, it's fine to do that. It's healthy. But it's usually the marker is when it's come to impact your life that we look at a diagnosis of narcissistic personality disorder. So when it is starting to affect your ability to hold relationships, for example, that would that would be a case where you'd be like, okay, th let's have a closer look at you. Let's give you a proper test. But generally, yeah, there are two sort of narcissists when we talk about narcissistic personality disorder. There's your you overt and your covert narcissist. I, I, I know them as grandiose and vulnerable. Depends. The literature is different, but it's basically the same thing. It's either a narcissist whose anxiety springs from, um, sorry, a narcissist whose behaviour springs from anxiety and insecurity. These are the the, uh, the the covert and the vulnerable ones. They are very insecure, and so they make up for that by being overtly aggressive and defensive, and and sort of projecting an image of of you know security and success whereas your your over and your grandiose narcissists generally believe their delusions they believe that they are the center of the universe and they are better than everyone else and they deserve special treatment so yeah the even though like the behavioral manifestations could be the same the 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 motivation behind them is very very different one of them wants to project this image so that you don't get any closer you don't sort of like see the insecurity and the other wants to project the image because they full-on believe it and if you tell them they're wrong they're not going to believe you so nice. yeah those are um, your two types uh thank you keely who's given us a five pound super chat she says she's super chuffed to be in time for the stream she hopes everyone's good and well um that's really uh striking to me at the start then because i would have thought the, a narcissist like um, I was fortunate enough to spend some time with Eddie Hall who became the world's strongest man and he discussed narcissism in terms of his confidence and uh, veering into arrogance maybe or pulling it back from arrogance you know confidence to do things being this big chuffer being a big strong guy and uh, it always I always felt that narcissism was the domain of those that were um, powerful successful strong and that of course they thought they were some great big chuffer because they're the tallest one and they can kick the ball the farthest or something like that um but you've just described a different kind of narcissist there that uh stems from insecurity and from not being the biggest chuffer um can you well one one of those things yeah. i do need to point out here that is that um it's the idea of celebrating your success and believing that you know yeah i am the strongest i am the like the biggest i can kick the ball the furthest if those beliefs are sort of like relatively proportionate to your actual level of skill then that's not necessarily narcissism it's when those beliefs are disproportionate to your level of skill so you might be a really good fencer you might be a really good strong man it, and believing that is okay because you know you have the you know you can back it up you know mm -hmm. you know you can you can lift or you can punt or you can stab and thrust and poke you can do it so it's fine <laughs> it's it's confidence it might be arrogant sometimes but it's it's still based on a, a belief that is true at that point whereas somebody like me who's got a bad back and like uh, the upper body strength of what you might call a games journalist has very little chance of succeeding in a strongman competition but if i did believe that i was like strong enough to have a go and i could do it then that would be a bit narcissistic because obviously i can't and my delusional belief that i can clashes with the reality that i can't so 
it, it, it's it's in like how proportionate that that belief is to your actual level of skill narcissists will often exaggerate their skills their achievements and and their level of success because you know they want you to believe that they're successful and they're doing right but mm. oftentimes the reality is different the reality is your narcissist can't really do what they say they can you know they're not all that so, so that's that's like your balance there yeah, we're going to get into these specifics and uh, we're going to get into the... Um, I'm going to even ask you maybe whether they're born or created and stuff like that. But just mm -hmm. in this general chat at the top, uh, it's strange to me to think that someone who isn't good at something might have this delusional belief that they are like the creme de la creme or something. Like, uh, yeah, how, how do you think, you know, in a, in, a, in a general sense, like, is that not a bit of a strange thing, like, for somebody to think that they are so much better than they are without... Is, it, is that being out of touch re with reality in some in some way? Yeah, yeah, a lot of it. A lot of insecurity of a narcissist stems from this fear of reality clashing with their pre-held beliefs and their, their sort of like pre-existing ideas of how the way should work. So if you are a narcissist, part of your insecurity might come from, say, your relationship status. So you want to project the image that you're a success with, with women or with the opposite sex or, you know, with, with sexual partners in general, you'll project like an outwardly, what's the word? <laughs> Promiscuous attitude. Maybe you might have, you know, that sort of approach to socializing where you're, you know, constantly flirting with people and constantly hitting on them because you're insecure and worried about it, but you don't want to face up to the reality that, actually you're not all that with women or you're not all that with relationships and they've all been crap and you know <laughs> maybe you're supposed to be destined to die alone and and managing that sort of that clash between expectation and reality is a really terrifying thing for a narcissist they don't want to consider that reality so a lot of it can be argued as this is actually legit you know by definition it's a delusional belief mm. so yeah there is a lot of delusion and denial involved in narcissism and and a lot of it is down to insecurity over that image i want to be seen as successful you know it, it, it's it's one thing to project the image of success but it's another if you know that i've got 15 credit cards worth of debt um that, that was a dark side feel reference <laughs> um the uh the couple of ideas are coming up in chat here someone says uh, peter says falling in love with your own reflection and dean who's get, get, becoming a regular and hello squirrel sniper and hello kilted and you know hello everyone um uh, Dean's asking where do you draw the line I thought you're supposed to love yourself and that's a really interesting question because in today's day and age it is you know Instagram and stuff like that it is like project your best side and you know uh, respect myself love myself I'm the best chuffer um, so yeah where do you draw the line in that and how how do you uh, keep yourself from floating off in a sense you know into narcissism <laughs> I suppose it's down to the individual really you have to sort of manage your own expectations of reality and and what you think you can get from your situation you know like i i'm quite slobbly dressed most of the time but i know i can scrub up well so when i have to go to like a wedding or a funeral put on a certain suit and tie i know i look good in it so you know i can carry that off and be confident be fooling myself and even talking about that feels a bit narcissistic but i'm also tempering my expectations of reality because i know that most of the time i'm a slob so it's fine uh -huh. it's, it's it's how you manage like your your expectations of reality really basically if you can accept criticism especially from your friends if you can accept criticism and adjust your behavior accordingly, you're probably not going to end up going down the path of narcissism right. because you can temper your expectations in re uh, in relation to what reality is telling you. So, hmm. yeah. Um, just I've got a question for chat then as well. Do you How do you feel about your friends criticizing you in chat? Do you have friends that tell you things straight and can you talk to your mates straight? Is that something that you find easy and you think is you agree with? Uh, hmm. Hopefully we've all got uh, friends that... You know, like like you yeah. say, keep us uh, keep us real. Yeah, yeah. Dean is here. Also raises a really good point. I can laugh at myself. That's a very good trait. If you can laugh at yourself, it means that you can acknowledge flaws. You can acknowledge that, like you know, you're not perfect. You you have, you know, there's things that you could be poked fun of. So, you know, this isn't the first time I've been called Bono. Um, <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah. If you can laugh at yourself, you, you're probably going to be all right as well because it means that you can take a critical and 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 hilarious and humorous 
look at yourself. You don't have to treat yourself with like the self-respect and the pomposity and you know the the, the regard that somebody who is a full-blown narcissist thinks you should. Um, you can Helen, laugh at yourself. You're all right. <laughs> Helen in chat says you look good in a bin bag, as your nana would say. Um, and <laughs> I, I think what's a, a little bit of a, of a shame is that you described the only time she'd wear a suit as a, a funeral and a wedding. And I, I think we could try and add some things to that list, like reasons to wear. A, I, I like wearing. I've, someone criticised me once on stream. I used to wear these hoodies that I, you know, I like wearing, like with you know, like jazzy stuff on and they criticized me they said oh you're too old to be wearing those hoodies you know too old to be dressing like a young person with your cap mm -hmm. on backwards so uh, i started wearing <laughs> blazers to smarten up and to make an effort and uh, I, quite, I quite like it. it's quite uh, quite nice wearing a bit of a smart you know when i was a hairdresser i could wear my smart clothes to work and no one would question that maybe we need to find yeah, you see, a few I, more. Yeah. I, as, as somebody into very much into heavy metal you know it, it, <laughs> it's never really agreed with me so you know it's a bit like giving a cat a bath <laughs> it, it, it's a very rare thing. So but, we're, yeah. we're not going to see you Gucci loafers. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> That's my ambition now, is to get you out on the Riviera in your Gucci loafers and your little... <laughs> uh, it needs to be a pink shirt and, you know, where they wear the white trousers and they're done up, but they, they only go oh, to the ankles. Oh, they've got the button. Yeah. Oh, they've like, got the, like, the collar puffed up. Yeah, we yeah, can yeah. even yeah. get you in a cravat or something. Three quarter... Like Three quarter pants, yeah, that's sure. <laughs> we could go for a nice cocktail. And be crutch. An aperitif. <laughs> yeah. um, you all still keep the hair, keep the beard, keep uh -huh. keep the general look, but, you know, we'll go with that. Um, one day, me and Steve, on the what we'll do is we'll do a Madly on McCann special one day. We'll get out to Portugal. <laughs> if things go well, right, if things go well, me and Steve strutting down the, uh, what's it called? Strut, <laughs> strutting Fire. down the Pride de Luz in our pink shirts with our cravats, reason to dress up. Um, can someone explain what the dark side fill is? Yeah, um, Tubby Tabs. Uh, it is a bit of a difficult one, isn't it? There's this guy, right? Mm. He's a streamer. We explained it a little briefly at the top of the stream, but mm. he's going to come up over the conversation tonight. There might even be some people in chat who like, have come to us through this aspect of it. Um, so he's a streamer like us, but instead, not like us, what he does is he's like, um, I want your money. Uh, give me your tips. Uh, like, you know, he's always moaning about money and, and bills and um, complaining to his... Uh, he literally will call his chat lazy for not turning up and giving him tips and stuff and he sets all these targets and he's a, a pure narcissist of 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 note um certainly someone that steve steve of the dead my guest host today um has made a few videos about and talked about so there's actually a whole community on the internet that like a bigger community than watches the streamer himself comes together to talk about the, the streamer and and discuss aspects of his personality he's like a, a content catalyst so, uh, and we also. Yeah, that's a very good way of describing him because a, a huge sort of group of, of creators have, have evolved around Dark Side Phil and turning his material into, you know, entertaining. Yeah. Basically showing into... how you can do it. Like, exactly. How he's going wrong. Um, and this is the But for me, it's about podcast. the psychology of him. Yeah. Uh, that being said, podcast also features Steve of the Dead and uh, they're on regularly in the week. Um, talking about Phil. Phil's always on his stream doing bad stuff and they're always holding him to account and talking about it. And there's a wider group of, of they call them detractors, detractors talking about Phil. So that's the context for that. Um, and that's uh, like, I'm, I'm, I'm part of that world in a way. You know, I talk about it on our stream sometimes. We've even done a couple of episodes about Dark Side Phil. Um, so, you yeah. contribute. You leave contribute, messages yeah. and you, you entered King of the Ring. So. Yeah. Um, but uh, if you're a fool, if you only make content about Dark Side Phil, then you're called a detractor, and I'm not like I'm not a detractor channel. I'm a channel that does some detracting, if that makes sense. Um, you know, if as you dig into that, that's a whole internet rabbit hole. That's a that's yeah, a full internet you rabbit want. hole. Yeah, so this like, is a, a rabbit hole you don't really want to fall down. We'll, we'll hopefully be able to provide you with enough context and information that yeah. you don't have to fall down this rabbit hole. And if anything comes but up, he's tonight, a good foil. For talking yeah. about personality and if, if anything comes up tonight that's specific um steve can give me a mm -hmm. a, a, nod, a nod and i'll find it on the internet and, and show you a little clip of of him saying something awful like he the things that let's do it let's do, yeah let's do a quick list of what dark side phil has said that's awful just off the top of our heads um, we've got racism mm -hmm. haven't we like charlie chan chicky chicky chang wang um transphobia <laughs> transphobia yeah racism racism uh, but all the big ones all yep, the big sexism. ones sexism basically if you could think of it he's he's done it his wife was was very ill so he, he took her to the hospital but oh um, God, no no that time when she was he he was playing 
um, I think it was like Battlefront or something, and, and he paused the game and went, I, uh, I better go wake Leanna up to see if she's ma- ready to make breakfast, uh, something <laughs> to eat for tea, sorry. She's not been well recently. And it's like she was lying in bed sick, and he went to wake her up to yeah. make her food, to make him food. So it's like, <laughs> yeah, he, there was that. There was the pill. There was yeah. the time when he told the entire internet about a, a, a mental breakdown that she'd had. Well, panic attack. I'm but, laughing you know, because it's can... now funny in context, but yeah, mm-hmm. like, it's not funny when he does it. Is Basically, it? he's a human shit. Yeah, he's a human, <laughs> human shit. shit. So. Um, why are we late starting, Audrey? Is because uh, what we use is we use a system uh, for like um, I, I set up a room and, and yeah, <laughs> tin cans and string, and the string was cut. Uh, we set up an internet room, and, and Steve talks to me in the internet room. For some reason, the sound wouldn't work properly, so we had to set up a different system, and, and we're talking on a different system today. But but we're here now. Um, why does he look like Ricky Gervais <laughs> in a cat hole? <laughs> I think he looks like Steven Seagal. If you see Steven Seagal, you'll know. Uh, oh, yeah. also, we didn't mention Dark Side Phil's uh, piece de la resistance was that he didn't realise his camera was on and he jerked off on stream before he started. So that's the uh, opening of the rabbit hole, if you want to get down there. But what we're going to do tonight is generally narcissism, and he will come up sometimes. Um, I'm going to try and bring the... As- I know a lot of the new people to my stream are going to be thinking of narcissists um, as, like, bad people in the relationship mm. who do horrible things. And I'm going to bring that to the table and talk about that as well. But Dark Side mm. Phil gives us a chance to laugh at somebody and have a, a joke about other yep. things that narcissists do because also isn't it true steve that narcissists can be quite comedic like when you first meet them they might seem really serious and really you know uh like you say projecting this important personality mm-hmm. but when you see through them don't they start to look a bit stupid in ways it it depends it depends on like how full-blown your narcissism is because i feel like with most narcissists you probably do feel sorry for them once you realize oh there's a lot of insecurity behind you or there's a lot of delusion and you are never going to like understand the reality of your situation a lot of times it could seem very pitiable and very like you know if it weren't for like the, the the human cost of their behavior and their actions which is often very devastating especially in the context of intimate partner relationships and intimate partner violence um it could be very devastating so it's it's hard to sort of like feel pity for them in in those situations it's hard to think oh you you poor person you're just so insecure when it's like you have like mentally abused a partner Mm. because of your insecurity so yeah yeah. but with phil it's very hard to find redeeming factors so he's very like he's like the diet coke of of glow cows you can shit on him and, and take no calories um, and uh, Steve just mentioned a phrase there, lolcow is an internet term for anyone that doesn't know where. Um, this guy's on the internet streaming and lolcow, like lols as in lol, you know, laugh out loud, and cow as in you can milk him. So people go in his chat and they tease him and then he'll bite on it and he'll react and give them a load of shit. And then, you know, it becomes like a two-way street of, of uh, milking him for reactions. So um, lol I don't want to linger on him too much. Yeah, we're not, we're not doing this. It's not, that's not our episode yeah, today. Yeah. That's just, okay. we, yeah, like, we got like, to I even got... I went and dug out like my old individual personality differences textbooks so that I could like do my research. <laughs> yeah, we're doing the personality <laughs> tests as if we were narcissists and we're talking our way through the full topic of narcissism and getting all the uh, um, the traits out of the way properly as well, mm-hmm. aren't we? That's, that's what we're really here to do. Yeah, yeah. Um, I've got a question for you in chat. We've just mentioned a couple of our favourite narcissists. Do you have any favourite narcissists? Do you have anyone that you have uh, that's famous that you think, oh, they're a right narcissist? Or is there anyone on the old internet that you watch that you think, oh, they're a right chuffer? Uh, or, you know, have you, have you, are there any famous narcissists that you want to write in chat? Uh, give us, start putting your list in chat. There's something for you to do. Famous, have a little think about that. Famous narcissist. Gabby yeah. Petito, that name rings a bell. <laughs> Gabby Petito was um, the, 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 the poor, unfortunate uh, I want to call her a child. She was on the precipice of being a grown-up oh. um, who was beaten to death by Brian Lydry, her, her boyfriend, and then he um, hid it. He hid uh, instead of mm. facing up to it. Um, so it's a tragedy that happened in America. Yeah. Um, oh, right, no. Yeah. I'm not fully aware Thanks of for that bringing thing, us down yeah. there in chat, you chuffers. <laughs> uh. I haven't got any jokes about I'll tell you what, I do have jokes about that. I, do, I did a whole <laughs> stand-up routine on the stream about um, what it's like to be in a red-hot van. I, you know... <laughs> <laughs> How, how fucking annoyed you'd be if you were sat next to Brian Laundrie in that fucking red hot van. Like you'd be, no wonder she was kicking off. Like, I don't want to drive around in America in a red hot van. It's fucking boiling hot in Arizona or whatever, isn't it? What are we doing out here in the fucking desert in this van? I don't want to sleep in a van anymore. I'm fed up. Take me to the hotel. Brian was such an <laughs> idiot. What a stupid thing to do, Brian. Drive your girlfriend around America in a red hot van. 
No, the air conditioning's not working properly, Gabby. Shut up, Gabby. Right, that, oh, that, would, that went sour quick, didn't it? In chat, we've got Prince Harry, Hillary Clinton. No, they're, not, they're not in chat. That's just what they're saying in chat. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Barack Obama. You don't know. Barack Obama could be in chat. Barack Obama could there be... Is, um... There is a common perception that, you know, to get into politics, you have to have a health, like a, a somewhat larger than the normal dose of narcissism, isn't there? Because you have to be a character at this point. We are now in the era of politics where your characters are the ones that float to the top. So you people like Trump and um, Boris Johnson... You know, they all get the, the votes because like, hey, they're a character there, mm. telling it like it is and all that. And yeah. being able to connect with people. Again, this resonates because it's like if, if you if reality is pliable to you, if you are used to either batting away the, delu the, the, the reality of your situation because you're insecure or because you fully believe your own stuff. Either way, if you're good at doing that, what is truth? becomes a malleable subject for you so you could say whatever people need to hear so you can sort of like connect with people on that level and the more socialized the narcissist is the better they are at balancing that interaction and interactions in other settings so they do become better at being able to manipulate people and of course because they they lack em well they either lack or they are unwilling to sorry, display sorry. empathy they're going to be able to take and manipulate you <laughs> like shamelessly so i've got two yeah. things to say there that got intellectual quick and uh <laughs> and in chat genghis khan no you can't have genghis khan like where did you you don't even know genghis khan he might have been a really nice guy oh saying that saying that actually saying that <laughs> hitler hitler's <coughs> top of the list hitler um yeah uh uh, oh. Genghis Khan killed so many people. There's like a genetic marker for it. There's like an environmental impact he had. He killed so many people that like trees and forests started to grow in areas that were previously milled down by people he'd slaughtered. He had like a notable environmental impact. I don't think he was a narcissist though. You I think he like be. legitimately he legitimately had the skills to back up his claims. True. Um, also, uh, I wonder what he'd have been like on the, on Instagram. <laughs> I wonder if he like, <laughs> on Instagram with his selfies. selfies. He's battlefield. <laughs> selfie stick. Holding so, up the heads. Of he's he's, got, he's yeah, got a yeah. selfie stick with, with a person impaled on the stick holding the phone. <laughs> um, yeah. Uh, <laughs> so um, I'd also like to say quickly, we've got over 100 people in the stream, right? If we can hit 100 likes, I'm not blowing bubbles. I'm going to uh, give, uh, what, £10 to UNICEF? That sounds reasonable. 100 likes, £10. Um, so bang the likes. Let's give some money to charity in this stream. If you give me 100 likes, I'll give £10 to UNICEF on stream. Um, right. Nice, interesting range of people in chat there. Um, I think we should get to the nine traits because the, this is the meat and potato, the vegan. This is the vegan alternative. This is the soya protein alternative and potatoes of the subject, isn't it? Um, before, before we do, I have like a little preamble. Yeah, go for it. Like I was going to say, if you've got a, a structure that you wanted to, you know, to go with, then go more Just with that if you want. Yeah. I thought this needed mentioning before we got onto the because we didn't have half system. an hour of talking before we started today, did no. we? So yeah. No, no, no. Well, I didn't realise you'd jump ahead. <laughs> we did have our little like plan of like this is what we'll do. This is what it's right. Yeah, it's all gone out the window now. <laughs> Fuck up, they can wait. <laughs> yeah. Steve, I'm going there. for a shit. <laughs> <laughs> so. So narcissism is is what's known as a cluster B personality disorder. Right. And personality disorders are split into three different clusters depending on the the, the sort of like the symptom the, the the mechanic the mechanic sorry underneath the disorder. So uh, type A uh, cluster A personality disorders are stuff like schizotypal, schizophrenic, and paranoid, and these are cognitive disorders relating to how you perceive reality they're how you how you perceive and interact with other people and it can off it, it will have like a massive impact on how you conduct interpersonal relationships uh cluster b personalities where your narcissism is also has antisocial borderline and histrionic and these are emotional regulation disorders a lot of the problems with these disorders relate to being unable to appropriately handle your emo your emotions and, and your emotional responses to interpersonal conflict 
and you cl cluster C are uh, your anxiety and fear-based disorders. So they're like your avoidant, your, your dependence, and your obsessive compulsive, where the, the fear of some outcome is what drives the disorder. So your narcissistic personality disorder is at its heart an emotional regulation disorder. It's an inability to regulate your emotions in response to right. other people. So let, let me just break that down bit by bit so I can understand it. Uh, we've got three mm. different sort of groups that these yeah. problems, yeah. like if you've got a psycho, if you've got a psychological or what would, would you call it mental or psychological? Mental is okay. Psychological. psychological like a personality yeah, problem. Yeah, it's a personality. Yeah, right, it's not got... an emotional thing like like depression. Depression right. is an affective disorder. It's It's, emo it's you know, because of chemical imbalances in your brain and it affects emotions and mm -hmm. it affects you, but it's not, you know, the same as having a borderline personality disorder, for example. That's a whole different thing. So Right. So yeah. it's it's a it's, it's personality a personality based emotion. problem, not emotional. Mm -hmm. And you've got three different groups. And the first group was like sounded really heavy and hectic, like um, schizophrenia and stuff like that. And mm -hmm. um, what was the the overall term for that group? Uh, that's cluster A. Those are your cluster cognitive a. disorders. Cognitive, so cluster A. Those, those are like how you process um, things relating to how you interpret reality and how you interpret what other people are doing, what their motivations are, what you what you think is going on. So, like for example, paranoid personality. You might think that you know people are watching you. You might have unnecessary expectations of somebody who visits you as a friend might actually be out to harm you. You know. So it affects how you handle interpersonal relationships in that in that way. And that's how right. they're all grouped together. They're things that affect how you perceive reality. So the first so, one is um, whether I can see the world mm -hmm. and understand it properly or whether I'm confused. Mm -hmm. Yeah? Yeah. Um, right. Essentially, yeah. So the second group was about... Emotional regulation. Emotional regulation. The last group was fear, right? So yeah, the second yeah, group. So the yeah. second group is about... Uh, I, I can understand the world and I can see it, but like I kick off, like, I get too angry or like I get really like upset over something or like something sinks my boat and now we can't talk or you know stuff yeah. like that. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. It's like I have an expectation of like how a relationship should be, how my partner should be behaving, and and if they don't behave the way I think they should, I have a disproportionate reaction to that. The reaction so, to it. I, yeah. 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 So it's how you handle and respond to those things. If you say, if you message your partner, like at, at, at noon, and they don't get back to you for a few hours, if if you're, you know, if you're okay with like regulating emotions, you might understand your partner is at work or your partner is busy or there's something that's preoccupying them that's, yeah, yeah. that prevents them from messaging you. But if you if you cannot regulate that emotion, if you cannot regulate that expectation of your relationship with your partner, you might decide that partner is cheating on me. The fact that they're not answering their phone immediately means that they're with somebody else mm. so you, know you might jump to that like talking to that one specifically like we've lived through a change in the way we communicate with mobile phones mm -hmm. and um, people are more expected to respond more quickly these days because you've got so many means of communication that you know you're always on the facebook so how come you didn't reply and things like that um and sometimes people might not even have the words ready or the, the like sometimes you might not feel like you want to have that conversation immediately but you can still go on facebook so being able to communicate isn't the same as wanting to reply is it um and i actually remember growing up uh like when we first got mobile phones i remember at one point i called my girlfriend and it went on to answer phone i just kept calling because i was like oh what's going on and i had to learn that sort of self-control and um like, I suppose, gain a bit more maturity and say, no, it doesn't matter. She'll call me whenever, you know, like I, now I'm quite cool with that. Like I can do that. But when I was younger and especially hearing that, welcome to the orange answer phone, that used to make me like, what? <laughs> like, ah, like it used to set me on edge because like, why is the phone off? Like, um, but nowadays I think things are different because we use those devices slightly differently. But um, you got perhaps a word on that, like that sort of. Is that that's not narcissism, is it, or is that category two? Well, no, 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 no. The the thing that uh, that would differentiate there is that you learn that behavioural response. You learn that you know the the reaction and how you should respond to that, and therefore, in future, when you encounter similar situations, you were able to temper your expectations accordingly. Eventually. So in future, yeah, exactly. When you grew up, but basically, yeah. we all go through the process of growing up, so mm. it's fine. The problem comes when it is persistent. When it persists over time and it, it, it builds and it grows to the point where it then interferes with your ability to have relationships in future or in, you know, 
basically whenever <laughs> so if you are like that at 15 it's fine you're still growing up and this is this is often why it's difficult to sort of like answer the question of whether you're you, you're born or created nature versus nurture because you, we typically don't like diagnosing children because children are still developing so symptoms that that, that show in childhood have to be stable and then in uh, like 18 to 20 ish adulthood you can then sort of look at how stable they've been and and diagnose accordingly but typically we don't like to give diagnoses to children but those behaviors do manifest and the issue becomes when they are either smoothed out by your socializing because you've learned or they continue and they persist and they make it harder for you to form relationships so that's that's when you diagnose an issue and and that's when you might like consider Hey, maybe there's like a, a borderline problem here or a, a narcissistic problem here. You might look more closely at it if it's been persistent for a long period. If it's stable and it endures over different social situations, there's all these factors go into deciding whether or not a diagnosis is warranted in the first place. So these are the things that sort of like define, oh, that's what we'll call narcissistic personality disorder. That's what we'll call histrionic. That's what we'll call borderline. Okay. So you look at um, like... The, before we, that stuff. <laughs> before we make sure that I've understood that category three, um, mm -hmm. some interesting things in chat. Tubby Tab says she, uh, I, I instinctively said she, I don't know, they work with a lot of clients that are narcissistic, very difficult in therapy. Um, we're going to mm -hmm. talk about whether they can be cured or, or not a little bit later, I think. Um, and uh, I did want to ask chat, like, I brought up like the old phones then, no, I had an old Nokia. Like, What was your first phone in chat just on the random? Like, Keep that chat rolling, <laughs> keep that chat pumping. I want to see what, they, I'm not asking you how old you are. Just ask you what your first, mine. what your first phone was. I think was. I've still got like the shell of mine. Yeah, I think we um, all remember our first phone. Motorola <laughs> with like a really thick chubby antenna, and I got ten messages a day. That was it. I had a like, ten <laughs> text limit. Yeah, I remember and then I at didn't... midnight it'd roll over, so we'd be like texting up until like half nine, and then we'd all be like, "Oh, me and my mates would stop and we'd be quiet." And then at midnight, you'd get like a flurry of messages again because everybody's got their next day's ten free texts. <laughs> yeah, I uh, I didn't have anyone to, to contact. I just had a phone. <laughs> I just you know, my, me and my friends used to just turn up at the same place and meet each other. Like you know, we were there. We didn't really have any use for it, but I had one. I, uh, it was it was back in the day playing Snake. Um, yeah, so uh, this final category then was, uh, it, you said fear, and I think I understand this one a lot, lot more. I think this seems a lot more... So we've had people who can't understand the world, box one, category A, um, people who uh, can understand the world, but their response to it is out of whack, category B. And then category C is fear, anxiety. Uh, so I'm thinking people who... This might be a, a combination of both in some way, understanding the world and yeah. reacting to it. Um yeah. It's it's how fear of like a, a given outcome might how you might handle that because um, let's say uh, for dependent personality disorder you might be terrified of of your partner leaving you and again you know that's a an insecurity that's understandable in a relationship but the extent to which it affects how you interact with your partner and the impact it has on your relationship is what determines whether you have uh, a, you know whether you have a dependent personality so if you are unreasonably tired, you know no evidence at all from your partner that they're going to leave you they are perfectly loving and attentive and they're there you know for you when you need they fill your needs and that's fine but you are still convinced somebody else is going to come along and your partner is going to leave and it terrifies you to the point where it starts to affect how you are with your partner those are the sort of differences between well i feel that it's fine to feel it in a relationship mm. and a disorder it's the potential for it. i couldn't be happier really look at closer at that flush. point if if, it, if your fear of your partner walking out on you his is making you behave differently towards them so and again avoidant as well avoidant personality disorder you might have a billion reasons why you can't do something because the fear of trying something new terrifies you and there might be a fear of failure, a fear of making an embarrassment of yourself in public. You will find millions of reasons to not do something. So, again, avoidant personality disorder. It's the fear of the outcome of doing something. So, regulating that is fine. Uh, regulating that is not fine. Sorry, it's when you can regulate that fine that you are probably okay. Yeah. If you can say, you know, you're having to give a, a speech or it's okay to, the first it's okay time to I feel things. Terrified. It's yeah. okay to feel yeah, things, yeah. but it's then how you let that dissipate and regain control and not give in to the impulse to react and respond and let it get out of control. Yeah. yeah. 
Yeah, yeah basically, um, yeah. Trey's just bought me a coffee. Thank you very much, Trey. Um, I've got a really interesting question in chat as well. If you want to ask questions, send me a coffee and put it in the tippy question. That's that's fine. And the super chats are available today. If you want to do that, that'll put it up at the top of the screen and we'll answer that. Um, but also I'll pick out some really, like what I find to be um, interesting questions in chat as well. The, fla the flow of love. Uh, becoming a regular here. Hello, Flo of Love. Um, do you feel that pathologizing victims of trauma instead of focusing on working with the perpetrator is appropriate? So I'm going to have to break that down because it's quite a lot of big words for me. Do you feel that pathologizing victims of trauma, so what are we saying there? Pathologizing. Break it down, uh, well, basically just summing up a, a victim's symptoms and the things that they feel into basically a category categorizing it when you when you do something like break personality disorders down into groups like it's this you know, and then to break it down into a list of symptoms so, pathologizing yeah, so, things, so. um I, I don't i think i i believe it's like an, a, a holistic you, wait, wait, approach i believe wait. you could do both before you answer the question i want to understand what the question is asking okay because <laughs> I, 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 I um do you feel that pathologizing victims of trauma which means that the people who are the victims of a trauma, we pathologize. And we're basically just saying, say, you have borderline personality disorder. If you've been through an abusive experience and you've come out displaying certain symptoms, we might go, oh, you have this disorder. Or, oh, you have this thing wrong with right, you. Right, right, right. We so so we're focusing on how to deal with the people who've been through the problems and we're creating like a, um, yeah. I don't want to say medicine around it, but like a doctor med like framework you know yeah around yeah, yeah, it, yeah. yeah um instead of working with the perpetrator is appropriate so the perpetrator be the person who's caused this trauma is what's mm -hmm. being asked here so um i think what I, okay so what i'm saying is um are we going to be focusing on helping the victims recover or sorting out the people who are doing the bad stuff is that mm -hmm. the sort of question i hope that i'm getting your question right there flow of love um yeah Steve, that was uh, how i understood it as okay well, so, so you, you tell me yeah. the response then steve because now that i can understand what the question is you tell me the response your response well i think i think you should be able to do both i don't see why we can't do both because pathologizing does help it's not an ideal fit and that's the problem with it because you know you, you're just breaking you're just fitting somebody into a box you saying you display these symptoms here you go here's what well, here's how we treat this thing next please you know and that's that's not how it works you can have you, you should ideally have Scott's my favorite word is ostensibly in a functioning system you would have you know the resources to be able to help that person individually on a more um, holistic level where their wider needs are taken into consideration while at the same time another person is working with a perpetrator say okay let's let's rehabilitate let's help you see how you have behaved and how your behavior has been harmful and how you can look out for that in future let's yeah. you know go through therapy for example so i, I believe you could do both but we do tend to lean more towards one than the other and you know, especially you... as a forensic psychologist the resources for rehabilitating offenders are very lacking in, in um, especially in, well in england i can't speak for america but what, in england at least what's um top of my mind here is actually i'm thinking that some people might fit into both categories and that it might be that the reason some people end up being horrible people narcissists doing bad things is because they grew up in a situation where they had to learn the wrong way to behave maybe yeah. so maybe we need both approaches yeah um mm -hmm. although of course you know i'm not uh advocating for the not narcissist in this count uh, not victim shaming <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah um and i suppose if we could own if we didn't have the resource to do everything it's, i'll tell you what here's a, here's a question uh, first of all narc slayer has sent me a, with a fencer has sent me a, a super <laughs> chat uh at coffee.com loving the topic lived it for 20 years chuffing amazing we should we should so thank you very much for that on the uh coffee i get more of the cut on the coffee.com so i'm i think that's a better system <laughs> frankly um, but yeah uh the um the the idea that they could be the, both. Here's a question then. If you have only the resource to treat one, uh, should we be more focused on victims or the perpetrators? Like, should we, um, which would be higher priority maybe? Because I, I think instinctively I'd like to su support victims, but support then. the victims, yeah. yeah. Like, but then but what then do you We're going to get more victims, aren't we? Because this person's going to go out and cause more problems. So mm. maybe we need to address the. Yeah. Uh, the root issue yeah because we're running out of resources so if we can only fix one thing we want to fix like if i fix the perpetrator then i might save three more people from becoming victims you punish the perpetrator that's the thing a lot of people end up in prison and have mm. personality disorders or learning difficulties and they've they've ended up in the the cracks of society where they've only learned criminality because that's the world they've grown up in so a higher portion of people are repeat offenders i can't remember the stats now 
I, I, I did have to learn them in like my first year and I think it was somewhere around a third between a third and half but don't really don't quote me on that but there, there is a high proportion of, of re-offending in, in, in prison populations so it, it's you know re, we, we focus more on punishment than rehab and our rehab efforts tend to fail so mm. there, was a, there was a oh god there was um we used to have a sex offender rehab program and it turned out that like people were then going out and doing worse so it, it I was, laughed, but actually it's not funny. Genuinely. Like, so we, we, we closed well, it down really recently. They do think that prisons are like, you know, finishing schools for criminals, don't they, in ways? Uh, we're going to do an episode on prisons and, and crime. We've yeah, done we an have episode a, on... Yeah, uh, we've done one on what makes a crime and how we define a crime, and we're going to go on to address the prison system in, in the future, yeah. Um, interesting ideas in chat about whether narcissists can or cannot be cured. Um, we're going to hopefully talk about at the end. Like, you know, it feels like a natural finish yeah. to whether yeah. they can be cured. Um, but also uh, the idea that narcissism is not a crime in itself and that it's only the things that they do that then get out of hand that become criminal, isn't it? Like, Or is, or is every narcissist deemed uh, destined to become a criminal, do you think? No. No, no. It, again, it depends on the individual social circumstances you can have. Darkseid Phil is an abnormality. He's, he's not representative of most narcissists because he doesn't socialise. So he doesn't have the social pressures on him that, that would otherwise force a narcissist to, um, to, to better their social management skills and, and how they handle interpersonal conflict in relationships or how they handle people at work. For he example. did do a crime, so, though, didn't he? He did do fraud. So he did. He did, do, he did do a fraud. Yeah, yeah, he did do a fraud. I done that's... a fraud. <laughs> <laughs> but most of the time, a narcissist has to have a job. They have, you know, they have bills to pay. They have to go out and work with other people. So they have to be able to maintain those relationships, and so they have to be able to manage conflict within those relationships. So they learn over time, and that way, most of them don't necessarily end up as criminals. It depends on how you where you are basically nature and nurture both combine into this unholy abomination and personality disorder that we call narcissism when you can't manage your social skills properly if if you are a in a criminal situation if you're in you know if you grow up around criminals you're going to learn socialization from criminals and that's how people end up in gangs whereas if you end up growing up in a nice middle class area you're probably going to grow up with nice middle class people and you'll learn to handle social conflicts in a nice middle class way so it depends on your social situation. Most narcissists don't end up as far extreme as Dark Side Phil because they've had to maintain professional relationships in work. They've had to maintain relationships with their family, their friends, because they benefit. We all benefit from having more relationships, but narcissists are more willing to exploit. So they might see the benefit in keeping a relationship around and put work into managing it. So, um, we've got some questions in chat. Uh, I will, because there's quite a few different questions coming up i'll try and bring them up as they come and if you super chat then i have to i have to read them i have to frankly but um kilted and danielle will get their questions read now and we'll, we'll try and address them quick and then we'll move on to the next bit um one do they often have financial problems is that a feature of a narcissist i suppose it could be yeah i don't know i don't know if there's actually any data looking at that but um mm, interesting i would we'll have talk to look in I've got a question for, about it a bit later in a way, so we'll talk about it a little bit later about relation because I wanted to ask do they um, feed off the other person in the relationship in that way? So um, yeah. we'll, we'll look into that a little bit later as well. And do they feel guilt? That's an interesting question. Oh, that's interesting. Yeah, a lot of the time with narcissists, stuff like that comes down to: do you feel it, or are you unwilling to show that you feel it? Because there's a difference between being unable to feel guilt or the unwillingness. To, fit, to, to show that you're guilty. I think most of them have a concept of guilt, but the, the willingness to display it will be, it will be minimal. You know, you might, it's all like understand at times you have to show contrition. You have to show, yep, all right, I fucked up. I'm sorry. There, there might be times when they feel like, you know, they, they recognize they have to give a token apology at this point, but that, that is different from actually feeling it. So mm. it, it's very interesting con conversation it's a very interesting problem that we have in dealing with narcissists because treatment often depends on acknowledging guilt and um, if you are not actually feeling guilty you're not going to be honest when you say yeah i acknowledge that okay so, a couple more questions from yeah. chat and then uh we'll go through a bit more of our um structure because yeah. otherwise we'll go to the, we'll, the we'll nine 
the nine Listen, symptoms. Listen, we'll be here forever. <laughs> and uh, what we're going to do at the end, you can do some Q&A. But a couple more questions from chat that I want to read. And then uh, we'll get on to some more of this structured stuff that I wanted to ask. Um, and also, Steve makes like 10-hour videos. And I have to like edit him live. So I might have to cut him off a little bit at the end. <laughs> like, let's just do quick answers to these questions. Um, can narcs be cured? I think we're going to look at a bit later. Um, and uh, a quick answer for Snips. Because hello, Snips. Um, it's you know look oh, things I, out. Yeah, it, it's good. <laughs> Hello, Snips. Um, <laughs> Snips' question, now, Snips. <laughs> Snips's question was: uh, Are they drawn to any particular um, career? And I would say yes. Streaming, the old streaming, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the old streaming. <laughs> no, but seriously, uh, a, a quick answer for Snips on on career, and then we'll uh, we'll do question and answer. Like I know lots of you will have lots of specific questions, and we can do. Um, more of these questions at the end of the episode and even in a future episode with the calling if you want so absolutely keep asking them keep throwing them into chat um, but mm -hmm. I've got some questions of my own thank you very much that I put in a little structure we want to talk about the <laughs> we want to talk about the nine traits don't we we want to get through these official yeah, 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 yeah. Um, uh, the uh, yeah, the official, meat of narcissism yeah yeah so um, but first of all quickly are there any um, any yeah, creative Careers, ones yeah. tend to be like 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 you know your your, your band leader and you know because you because you that those are reward those are um, industries and, and and careers that reward you know big personalities and 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 they, they'll they'll tell you know if you're there on stage over the front and go yeah do, 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 I'm a rock star people are going to be like drawn to that and some people will tell you yeah you're a rock star and you know yeah feeds that delusion so it's it's a nice comfortable thing and having people tell you oh wow you're great we love your work is like you know it's it's honey to the ears of narcissists so yeah people praising you is great and if you're in an industry that does that great um but i don't i don't know about like say like like office work or um you know like like politics or something I, I, basically raining. anywhere i assume I that you would need a big personality you know you're going to be drawn to it anything that sort of like requires a bit of ego and a bit of being able to play the press maybe i would imagine they're everywhere though <laughs> They're yeah, in all industries. Um, you might not always get our dream jobs, might we? So you might end up in a different job. Um, Tubby Tubby says, absolutely loving your videos. Really informative. I love your humour. Loving the line with Steve. live with Steve. So glad you found, they found my channel. And thanks for answering my questions in the chat. No problem. No problem. Canada, Canada, Le Maple Leaves, I think, there from Canada. I'm guessing that's Canada, yeah. Canada Leaves. Canada. Yeah. Canada, Canada yeah. Leaves. Maple. And uh, I've also been bought a coffee. Uh... Oh, wait, no, wait. What am I doing? I'm reading... I'm on somebody else's coffee page. Oh, that's tripped me out there. Sorry. This is Tubby it's Tabby's page. I was going to read all your tippies that you've got, Tubby Tabbies. <laughs> okay, cool, cool, cool. <laughs> Thank you. I'll, I'll stick on my page there. Um, uh, yeah, it did. Good point. I, that, Queen, of Swords. Queen of Swords pointed out in chat very, very quickly. Policemen, social workers, people with power over others. Yeah, if, mm. you, if you can have power over somebody else, yeah, that's probably also going to be a draw for narcissists. But I, I, I don't know that much about which careers they tend to be in, so I would, I would have to look up at that. What about church leaders? What about pastors? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah you've got a lot of sway over your congregation, haven't you? Yeah, I suppose. Yeah. <laughs> I'm such a fucker. I'm stirring the pot there a little bit in the detractor community. Um, but yeah. Uh, <laughs> Um, yeah, I'm, I'm trying to think of other things like that it's as well. Um, oh, it's raining again. Swish, the flow of love. And Swish and then foosh. That's my noises that happens. Yeah, great job. Thanks uh, so much. Says the flow of love. If you've got questions as well, you know, we when you pay money like this, I'll, I'll, I'll put you at the top of the list for the questions. <laughs> um, but yeah, uh, yeah. So the reason we're talking about narcissism, right? And the reason that uh, it comes up is because there are nine traits that they've. Um, people have got together with their clever books, haven't they? And they've decided that there's nine traits. And if you mm -hmm. fall into five of these categories, you don't have to have all nine traits, but if you hit nine, if you hit five of nine, five. that's you a narcissist. Um, I, I, don't, I don't expect you to know where this has come from, but do you know like who set these ideas up and how long we've been yeah. deciding this? Oh, you do know? DSM, the DSM-5, yeah, the Diagnostic and Statistical Manual. It's a text published by, well, it's like, let's say text, huge volumes of um basically descriptions of every psychological disorder we currently know about and it's uh, published by the american psychological association they're like you over you know they're your governing body of psychologists you have to register with them in america we have the bps in in right. the uk is our equivalent but they don't publish but it's basically used more or less worldwide and it's it, it just it describes 
the, the, the symptoms. There's also the um, the ICM, the International Something Manual, um, that that also lists stuff that's on their 10th edition at the moment i think and they just basically list prevalence rates so you check them to see like how many people in the population are a given you know personality disorder for example but yeah um the the dsm5 is the uh the current cool standard um so definition. it's a bit that was a bit like i like saw someone on a skateboard and went do a kickflip and then they just like fucking went not someone up the half pipe <laughs> like wow yeah okay so you do know your shit yeah. um tippy for the cookie cookie jar from lindy luke uh, from scotland there thanks very much and uh so yeah so these nine traits uh hmm. these this is um just trying to reinterpret what you just said to me because it's quite quite complicated complicated i think um, this is the top psychological minds have come together and mm -hmm. decided this is what we're doing and these are the, the the nine traits it's not like some people think this and some people think that and there's argument and discussion like pretty much we're all on the agreement here in the the the, 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 there, the minds there around a, the world yeah there is always argument and discussion but these are sort of like the at the moment mm -hmm. This is the best of what we know. This is like our currently accepted understanding. This is why it's on its fifth edition. It does get revised. So as right. new evidence becomes more, um, uh, uh, as we become aware of new things and as society changes, I mean, um, at the moment in the fifth, uh, listed as a area of research, meaning we need to look into this before the next edition, is internet gaming disorder, people being addicted to mm -hmm. online gaming. So that's a new thing that's come up. That wasn't in the fourth or the third or the second or the first editions because it wasn't around then. So things do get revised and changed. But at the moment, this is like the, the the best of our knowledge, the best of our understanding. Here are the symptoms of, say, narcissistic personality disorder. Okay. And then it's broken down. Right. Okay, then. So chapter one, grandiosity. That's what, I've, I've got them written down here, but I might oh, be in the wrong order. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, I was assuming you were. real. Yeah. No real given order, <laughs> Thank you for the tippies. Yeah, I will before. completely interject for the tippies. Tippies over everything. Sorry, Steve. Tippies over That's everything. <laughs> um, hi, Paul. I recently found your channel. I'm Scott, you chuffer, and that's Steve. So uh, I hope you're tipping the right channel here because, like, I, I hope you are. Like, thank you. Um, I hope this is going correctly here. Like, I'm not Paul. <laughs> Paul's a chuffer. He's the chuffer that killed his, didn't kill his wife. Uh, allegedly. <laughs> allegedly, yeah, I don't mind about allegedly. I think he knocked. Anyway, look, uh, Paul's the other chuffer. <laughs> but thank you. I'm Scott and this is Steve and thank you for the tippies there. Um, and uh, am I working these tippies right? Because when I say thanks, I'm supposed to click this and it's supposed to take me to their tippy. Um, view de oh, it's view details I'm not pressing. Okay, okay, got it. Thank you. Got it. Okay, I got it. <laughs> Right, you now, you know, you were next. <laughs> I've just seen, I've just seen Paul. I don't murder. Yeah, that's. Do you know what that's from, though, Steve? Do you know what that's from? It's <laughs> you. Yeah. <laughs> I started a meme. <laughs> I started my own meme. meme. Nice. Yeah, I don't murder. I'm not bringing it up in today's episode in case it gets us wiped off the internet. But that can stay in that particular video in just one video. It can stay there. And if that video ever has to disappear, it does. Paul's I don't murder campaign for his um. <laughs> it's like cool. when people say percentile to me, right? <laughs> yeah. you'll tip me because i'm vegan thank you thank you i'll make sure i i uh share that well i try honestly now this is this is true i try and buy well obviously i buy vegan stuff don't i there's that but i try and buy uh ethically and you know carefully so i'm not just throwing the money into the hands of the chuffers so yeah you can, you can feel confident with your vegan tip we'll, we'll stay in the vegan economy <laughs> and not enter the economy of shame um that'd be fine uh so yeah you were having a point that you were going to make and then yeah, i just yeah, fucking I, shut you I, up I had, I had a point i had a point like a lot of the problems with like the, the, these these symptoms as diagnoses that the, the main point that you have to show is that, well, there's several main points actually you have to show that these things are consistent they are um so that they, they appear over time they they have not just like they're, they're not on and off they are consistent they are consistent across different social situations because obviously you would behave differently in different situations you at the pub is not the same behavior as you at work so it, it fucking was well, yeah, 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 yeah. it well, was with, yeah, that was my problem most, it was with me ostensibly <laughs> it's not supposed to be to the point where i was drinking beers as well <laughs> anyway so, so yeah they have to they have to be consistent <coughs> over time they can't be the result of anything else so you can't be like say on medication that changes your personality for example that might make you a bit more depressed and that manifests differently they, they can't be the result of any other thing you know and 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 they have to have you know been at a point now where they are affecting your life there is um clinical and subclinical i think those are the terms that baxter used um uh basically 
if it's not ha- affecting your life, if it's not having, if it's not causing major disruption to your life, probably not a diagnosis of it. If you can handle relationships well, if you can have like, you know, if you can maintain a career, you know, if you can sort of like, you know, get a promotion at work or, you know, you can you can meet new friends in different situations. You go to a convention and meet someone new or, you know, you go to the pub and you meet new people. If you could do all that sort of stuff, it's not in fact impacting your life and your ability to manage your life, then probably not. You could be subclinical. You would be considered subclinical. Clinical is the point where you need help because it's affecting your life. If it's disrupting your ability... Subclinical sounds worse. I know, it does. It it just means you're below clinical... Below clinical. I'm not not even good enough to be clinical. Not even a good enough narcissist to be a clinical narcissist. Just subclinical. Shit. Yeah, shit narcissist, you. You fucking... (laughs) Sorry, I've gone off the rails now, I have. You're so brought up I've done a murderer and that's me now. I'm like, just cracking jokes. (laughs) <laughs> Steve for Prime Minister in chat there, yeah. He'll do a better job than the chuffers that are doing it now, won't he? Yeah. Oh, my job. Fuck that. Have <laughs> you seen the state of the things nowadays? Um, I think to so qualify yeah. you, you so, need to know how to funnel the money off into your friend's offshore bank account. That's that's what qualifies you to be a good Prime Minister <laughs> these days. Anyway. Oh, um, oh, I have a lot of experience with borderline personality disorder. I'm assuming that's what you mean by mm. BPD and not bipolar disorder, which would be different. But yeah, yeah if you mean borderline i have some experience with that some intimate experience with that um but, does that uh, yeah, come into today the... we're in that. yeah okay, it, is so type, it is close to be it is close to be it is an emotional dysregulation disorder but yeah it, well, it manifests yeah. itself differently and whatever you want in chat you know in the long term we've got more shows to do and we've got more stuff to talk about so absolutely we can do a full show on bpd if it because that sounds like a proper like subject yeah? there's a lot of meat in that subject as well yeah, yeah. okay um so yeah it's uh, raining again. Oh, we've got more tippies and then we'll get on to our nine no night well if we only do six today and then we have to split into two parts i'll be cross but um thanks for the wonderful channel thanks for the wonderful tippies t- tina g thanks for the wonderful tippies that's what's sustaining this wonderful channel so thank you um yeah so number one we've got grandiosity grandiosity yeah grandiosity. that's number one tip top Full best on. one inflated sense of ego inflated sense of self-worth you believe you are all that or you at least project the image that you are all that you over exaggerate the things you've done your achievements your skills what you are capable of you over exaggerate the things you have in your life you want to put across the impression that you are a success that you have like you know the hottest girlfriend you have the fastest car you have the most expensive watch on your wrist all that stuff is in in grandiosity and again Always keep in mind, it's the level of display of that. Going ev- going all out every now and then is fine. You know, having a little bit of self-ego, a bit of self-worth, fine. When you're at the full-blown point where it's affecting your relationships with people and your ability to run your life. Because you're spending money on trying to keep up with this impression that you're putting out of being rich and successful. And you get further and further into debt, for example. That would be a problem, and that's where the distinction lies so wow um that sounds well, yeah, broadly, relating to the so. nicola bully thing actually it's, it sounds like what people accused paul ansell of uh, in terms of financial irregularity and keeping up with the it's joneses again. I couldn't um, be happier. i've got a few tippies there to throw into the hat again uh thank you very much black cats and crows i don't know murder. <laughs> I don't murder. <laughs> <laughs> is that what we're going to end up with? Is it like someone in chat also said, "I don't murder hoodies." I saw you. Don't worry. You, I mean, you, got, you got seen. You got seen. You got seen. I saw you. Um, so, like, oh, yeah. I would wear that. I would wear that. Scott. I would wear a Paul I don't murder shirt. Brilliant. That's what we're going to get up to. Is it? We're going to end up profiting <laughs> off Nicola Bully's death in, in the, the worst possible way. I mean, I'm not profit. I, I don't murder is my creation. Thank you. So, like, mm-hmm. I'm not. Mm-hmm. No, that's uh, anyway. Look. Um, <laughs> Can you copyright I done a murder? Anyway, look, um, <laughs> what we're doing today is we're talking about grandiosity. And I had a question about grandiosity <laughs> in the back of my mind then before I got, I got a sidetrack, you chuffers. It's good sidetracking. Thank you. The, the tip, tip is nice. Um, my, my question was, um, you said about displaying this stuff. So like, like, it doesn't matter if I go home to a hovel and I, I eat ramen and, and beans every evening. As long as when I go to the pub, I've got the latest Gucci and I arrive in a sports car. Like, it doesn't matter if I've got 10 credit card debts and, uh, like, if I know in my own heart that, like, things are fucked. As long as when I turn up at work, like, I'm flashy with the sunglasses and, like, buying everyone a drink afterwards and, and stuff like that. Yeah, that's the sort of thing you're saying. Grandiosity is not... It's not... It's, it's grandiosity shown to the world. It's not my own sense of my own grandiosity. 
Mm-hmm. Or can it be, or, yeah, yeah. Basically, okay, so uh, central to the understanding of narcissism is this idea of the true self and the false self. And the true self is the, the self that sees the world and understands their position in it. So it's the self that feels the shame of going back home to a hovel and eating ramen for dinner. That's the, 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 the worry, the insecurity. That's the true self at the core of narcissists. Although I would say that I was describing my own actual life there. <laughs> I've been in a hovel where I've eaten ramen. When I was like living at university, I used to have pasta and gravy for dinner sometimes. Anyway, <laughs> no, carry on. <laughs> but that self is often buried beneath the impression of the false self. The, the false self is the, the image that the narcissist wants to project. The false self is the self that gets d- tied up and goes out and mm-hmm. makes sure it looks the best before it hits the pub. So the false self, the false self is also very dynamic. It, it changes a lot depending on what the social situation requires of it. So however you need to portray success or um, wealth or personality or grandiosity in that moment, it, it, again, changes between you at the pub with your friends you at work you're acting differently but you still have this same desire to be seen as successful so you might brag to your mates about uh, work your colleagues yeah i was out last weekend i did this i did this i spent this much money i was over here and here and then at your mates you might brag differently you know oh, i've had a you know oh, i've had it you know yeah i could i could pull them so the the false self is flexible it's dynamic it changes over time and it's the thing that smothers the idea of the true self it's the thing that makes narcissists ignore the 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 reality of you know you're living in your hovel you're eating ramen you are not a success but it's not about convincing yourself like uh, when i think of narcissism off the top of my head i would think that these people um think of themselves as being great so that might come up later you, and believes you're special and stuff like that but instinctively i would say oh you're, you're over, over so we've got two different yeah. kinds maybe again then here so grandiosity yeah, yeah. so grandiosity you could think that you're great and still want to show the world but could you think that you're great and not want to show the world like is could it just be that i think i'm fucking brilliant and then when i encounter the world they butt up against this person who thinks they're brilliant but do i have to show the world to be a narcissist does it have to be just yeah going... typically because it's it's the overt display of that that defines narcissism it's that is a a shield against the world understanding the and and seeing the true narcissist underneath the true sort of like insecure frail little thing mm-hmm. so displaying it is what's important the grandiose narcissists your your overt narcissists they fully believe so anything you could say to them doesn't matter they won't believe it so they have basically buried alive their their true self because they are fully bought into the delusion and okay. um, the, the unrealistic expectations so, that they have. So grandiosity is about this Wizard of Oz aspect of creating this this almighty character and obviously in the Wizard no spoilers if you haven't seen the Wizard of Oz, like you're a bit late on the scene here but it turns out like there's a chuffer behind a curtain just doing the voice um, so some narcissists are that little chuffer inside and they're just doing the voice but others have lost control and they believe they are the wizard and you can say to them yeah but you're just behind a curtain doing the voice and they're like no but i am the fucking wizard yeah um interesting question in chat here from uh jay can you be grandiose without exaggerating about material status i know someone who's a narc and causes trouble exaggerating situations so does it have to be material can it be simply stuff no, no, it doesn't need to be material. We focus on material because it's very easy to understand the concept, but it doesn't necessarily need to involve material things. It can just be stirring the pot socially to benefit you and, and, and to make you look a certain way. You know, if you cause like two people start arguing amongst themselves and then you'll, you can lord it above them by swooping in there and be like, right, okay, let's sort this out. Let's calm down. I'll be the peacemaker. I'll sort everything out. Don't worry. And be the focus of attention that way. So, yeah. It, can, it doesn't necessarily need to be surface level, you know, rich and, and, and pomposity and grandiosity that way. It can be your more subtle sort of like it, it, interactions and social conflicts and mm-hmm. how they those are managed. So, yeah, it could definitely be a fair bit of stirring the pot to make yourself look better. Okay. How many, like, um, how many likes have we got on chat? I can't see it. Does anyone know how many likes we've got? Tell me in chat how many likes we've got. If we get over 100, I'm going to give £10 to UNICEF. We've got over the 100. Okay. So £10 is in the bank for UNICEF now. If you want to push it to 200, we haven't even got 200 in chat, so it's not possible. So, <laughs> uh, But if you want to push it to 200, I'll double it to 20. But that's the limit then. No, fucking, I don't think I'm made of money. Um, but your tippies are coming in and, you know, this is a good episode and I'm, I'm feeling like, you know, feeling generous. So we'll give something to the kids, eh? Uh, so, yeah, so uh, that's going well. Um, we uh, have we covered grandiosity there then uh, that's yeah. number one without going that, that was number one that was yeah that was first. number one okay uh, number great. two I've got as long as they're in the same they might be in a different order to you 
a different order. Yeah. Is it all right to go in a different I've, order? I've <laughs> taken from, I've, like I said, I, I, I got them out just do you to want, sure what I I want to ask, What I'm asking is, do you want to do these in order or do you want me to just carry on off the order I've got? Just carry on. Carry okay. on. Okay. Number two I've got is preoccupied with fantasy mm -hmm. and that they believe yep. their own bullshit and tell a lot of lies. Yeah. That's number two. It's, it's is it? being obsessed with what you think you should have and what other people have that you think you should be given. You know, it's, 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 it's whether it, again, it doesn't need to be material. It can be like social success. You could be seen as, you know, great in the group that you're in. It doesn't necessarily have to be some like, it can be, can be rich, can be wealth, can be financial success, can also be political power. It can be, you know, social status. It's, it's a fantasy of appearing successful and being given these things that you think you, you, you are owed. So your preoccupation there comes from you know, wanting to be a certain image a certain way you you feel like you should be successful you should be popular you should be powerful and instead you're not you're just some lowly like office worker you're not you know the ceo of the company so but you think you should be and if they just listen to you you could turn this company around that's sort mm. of thing other words in chat you're coming apart entitlement and jealousy they they fall into yeah. the same hat there yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. Because, yeah. again, in entitlement, you, you believe that you should have that thing. It should be given to you because you are great. Whether you believe it or not, whether you believe that you're great or you just want people to think you're great, either way, you think you should be given that thing because that's a sign that you are great. You know, you should be married because that's what an adult does. Um, it's interesting. <laughs> okay. It's you interesting that... Uh... It's a family. Like, I'm thinking of today's world as well with like Instagram and yeah. TikTok and all this stuff. And like, even when I was growing up, it was, I wanted to be a rock star and like, then I wanted to be a DJ and like, it's not a, a complete fantasy to think I could have entered into that, mm -hmm. that world. You know, I, I, you know, was in a band and we did our thing, you know, did our demo and all that. But, uh, mm -hmm. you know, the, the next leap of being signed and like, there was a little bit of a fantasy, I suppose, wasn't it? Cause it didn't mm -hmm. actually happen. And, uh, like it's a, a smaller percentage of people who are in bands end up like, you know, on the Brit Awards, don't they? So um, it's an interesting way, the way that in today's world, a lot of people are in that, uh, like we said, some of these traits, you have to have five of them to be, yeah. out of these nine to be a narcissist. And this one, I would say, yeah. I, I would say like, okay, how many people in chat, you tell me, how many people in chat, do you think either yourself or someone you know is preoccupied with fantasy in this way, that they're chasing maybe fame or, um, like we're on the internet, I'm, I'm asking for views and subs and click likes and stuff like that. You know, I feel like this actually describes me in a way, doesn't it? Like, or am I like being hard on myself there? Like, do you know what Again, I mean? How, how are you managing your expectations and reality? And, well, and, and you don't you don't believe? See, okay, okay, yeah. There's one day, me and Robbie Williams are going to be sat down with Elton John. <laughs> right, that's what I'm expecting. By the end of the year, it's me, Robbie Williams, and Elton John on the Jonathan Ross show. <laughs> that's what I'm expecting. Graham Norton, man. Graham Norton on the Graham um, Norton show. <laughs> you're not preoccupied with the entitlement. You're not preoccupied with this <laughs> thing, and you don't think you should be given it. You you yeah. you acknowledge that you have to work for it. Like yes. we've talked about growing this channel. You've acknowledged you need to work for it. It's not, yeah. you're not sat there thinking, I should be given it. People should be subscribing. I shouldn't need right. to ask. You should automatically be giving me views and likes and subs. You know that we have to work for it. So, and, and, and you're not preoccupied with that obsession that you should be given it. So you, you are able to manage your expectations. Oh, I see. Okay. So what we're saying here is oh. that, uh, what we're saying here is not that so much necessary that you think that you should be on stage singing. Like, like, okay, get this. I've been to a gig before and I've thought, you know what? They're not actually that good. We could be up there doing this or like, you know, like that sort of thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, but that's not exactly the worst of it. The worst of it is where you think like, um, I'm going to this gig and what the hell am I going to a gig for when I should be running gigs? Like even as a baseline, yeah. like it's like, mm -hmm. like um, it's not that I hope to one day achieve something and uh, work towards it and, you know, have a preoccupation with the, like some people want to be famous and they go to singing lessons and they do X, Y, Z and do all that. That's one thing, but just get, get up in the morning and say, where are my photographers? <laughs> Why haven't mm -hmm. they cottoned on yet? Like that's a different thing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, exactly. You, it, it all depends on how you manage your expectations. And, <laughs> and gonna... the whole point of this one is that your expectations are unreasonable. Most people think it is unreasonable to expect that level of, you know, attention or that, yes. those yeah. things being given to you. Most people think it is unreasonable to have that level of entitlement. Yeah. But your narcissist doesn't care. They're, they're going to have that entitlement regardless. So They're the VIP. Stop on that. 
The cat's having to go on his microphone. Yeah. Um, also in chat, I've, this is the, about the fifth time I've seen the, the hairy bikers thing come up, right? <laughs> She's going to fucking annoy me. <laughs> I'm not a hairy biker. Which hairy biker are you? Like, I don't I've know that as well. Which yeah, hairy biker I, are you? <laughs> my uncle said it. <laughs> I mean, I like cooking. I don't know but... which one they are. I don't know. It, it, I yeah. don't know. Sai, I think. I don't know. But, right, I'll have to be the other yeah, one. Yeah, I've Could be worse. We could be Louis Theroux and Jimmy Savile. Look, no. Um, <laughs> Whoa! <laughs> no, it, could be, it said it could always be worse. You could be Louis Theroux in a camper van with Jimmy Savile, but I adapted it for right, for yeah. our little joke. Um, yeah. Can we talk about Michael Jackson for a minute or two, says Bob. Um, we can if you want. I mean, I, I might actually, but let's talk about Michael Jackson for a second here, right? Michael yeah. Jackson started out like with this bullying father who made him do all this stuff and then he was quite talented so initially I don't know if it's a preoccupation with fantasy for Michael or just like the reality of he's quite talented and he's on that stage and people are applauding him and then maybe the, the thing that comes later is the bit where he like you know goes a bit far with stuff and creates a Disneyland to live in and thinks that he's some sort of like you know Jesus figure maybe that's the preoccupation with fantasy bit yeah I don't know you because I mean again Right, okay, so one of the things that's very common in narcissism and most personality disorders is, like, abuse and neglect in childhood. That's a very, very... That's a commonly reoccurring factor. So that he would develop a personality disorder later in life is not that unexpected. But again, he was Michael Jackson. He was the Prince of Pop. He, he mm. sold those records. People paid to see him play. So you could say maybe you do have, like, this, this, this fantasy and this preoccupation with how things should be. But you're expect your situation and therefore your expectations of that situation are different from most other people's most other people are not the prince of pop with hundreds of millions of record sales you know behind them so you have to skew you have to readjust your your scale when you consider something like that so also, Madonna's think... another popular one madonna is like a monstrous narcissist but again she's madonna mm -hmm. so she had a career of like skirting the press and being outrageous and shocking people and selling records and having people pay for gigs and things so she's got the success behind her so you know. it, like with someone that's success like you can be successful and believe your own hype and like sort of live up to the hype yeah and then on this other side of the scale there are people that wake up in the morning and no one's hyping them but in their head they believe their own hype they believe there is hype for a start like they believe there should be hype and why is there no hype and and that's the the more like um, clear-cut narcissist on this definition yeah basically yeah it's 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 how you think your situation should be what you think you should be getting from that and what the reality of that situation actually is and and you know the clash between that is where a lot of anxiety comes from but if you are someone like madonna you can you can lean into buying your own bullshit because You've been selling that bullshit for 20 or 30 years and people have been buying it. So, mm. you know, you, you know, again, an unreasonable expectation of your abilities as well. If you mm. over-exaggerate your abilities, that's the key component where you're just bigging yourself up and thinking, I, you know, I'm, I'm good at doing this. I could play the bass like, like Geddy Lee. I can, I, I could play Street Fighter at a tournament level. If you are exaggerating your things, if you are exaggerating your skills and those skills do not match up with the objective reality of I am actually not that good a bass player, um, then, again, that's the definition between a narcissist and having a reasonable understanding of where you're coming from because somebody like me is not going to be a, a, a singer on the level of Michael Jackson. But Michael Jackson had the talent to back up his his, his belief in his self and his level of talent. So it, it becomes difficult to sort of like say, yeah, maybe he had elements of narcissist, narcissism to him, but... Whether that's enough to be a narcissist with personality disorder diagnosis is completely different. And okay. same with Madonna. Um, you know. Someone in chat, uh, Soyla, has asked if I've ever read this book. So I've put it on the screen. Pam Ayres, they should have asked my husband. I've not, but I've put it it's on the screen there so again. people can see it. it and happier. a quick tippies on the coffees. Swish. Swish and then foof, tubby tubbies. Uh, you're off to bed now. Thanks for a great stream. You'll watch the rest of the morning. Yeah, absolutely. You can always catch up on the old replay. Um, when are we to drop in the next cookbook and some hairy biking uh, emojis? So, <laughs> no, 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 not playing into this. I done a murder, mate. Let's let's go back to I done a murder. <laughs> I don't, yeah, yeah. I thought it'd be a hairy bike. I have to think of something else. To, I'm not a hairy yeah, bike. Make suit. <laughs> <laughs> we'll, we'll stick with I done a murder. Um, yeah. So. Uh, we are talking narcissism with, with Steve of the Dead. If we hit 200 likes, we're going to give £20 to UNICEF, but £10 already in the bank for them. Uh, we are doing our 
traits and then we're going to get on to our personality test so we've already hit over an hour an hour and 20 we aim for about three hours maybe so we need to get through some of these nine traits uh, as we've only done two uh, number three i've got believes they are special mm -hmm. yeah that, yeah believes they are special i think sometimes is... they sound like they overlap in a way mm. they do yeah. but this is in specific relation to how they manage their social relationships so if you think you are special you think i should be associating with a certain sort of person i should be associating with somebody who's like you know like a higher uh yes psychopath test is a very good book by the way the john ronson one um but that's psychopathy that's different so uh potential episode there there's a lot of stuff about like um adrian rain and um uh, God, hair, Robert Hare, um, and the, the PCLR checklist and thing. It's pretty good. And uh, Hans Eisenk as well, and his three factor. <laughs> I just told you, I just gave you a time to... check, no, and know, then you immediately went on a tangent. I, I, need, I need medication. Um, <laughs> so, yeah, if you believe that you are all that, if you believe that you are great, if you believe that you are king shit, if you believe that you should be associating with a higher class of people, and really you're hanging out with Jades and Derricks, it's, it's that sort of thing. You have a, an expectation of your social relationships that they should be with people who are earning a lot, people who are seen as successful or powerful or noteworthy by society in some way. You should be in that group. You should be seen with them. And again, most of the time, you're not. Most of us, statistically, are not going to be in the 1%. Does that does that cross across borders then? So initially I might think, oh, you're talking about like the royalty or the glitterati or, you know, on the red carpet, I should be in films, I should be in in the magazines or something. But could it cross over like, because um, I've seen some people on YouTube who are like narcissists within a smaller community. Hello, Durian Ryder. Hello, Harley. I know you watch the stuff. Uh, and this one's about <laughs> narcissism, so I know he's going to watch this one. Uh, and he uh, is a narcissist within the vegan community, but not... Like he sees himself as the king of the vegan community, but that's like a niche that it, it believes their special can be like special within a niche, maybe. Or like yeah. um, Eddie, Eddie Hall was talking about being the strongest man in the world, but he wasn't trying to like join, um, you know, an athletics association and become a sprinter. You know, it, it's quite a, a narrow field there. So maybe. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. It's also it's all related to your social situation. Again, it could be like general society that we're talking about like when you're out with your mates or whatever but it could also be your little niche group of uh, your little subculture your little hobby you know your your group and your circle of this one interest that doesn't reflect or, or like have any effect on your your work and and your social life if this is like this little group that you're a thing in and you think i am someone in that group i am someone in the vegan community i'm someone in the true crime community i'm someone in the podcasting community you know Re keeping that relative as well is the problem if you expect to automatically be like well i stream therefore i should be getting as many people watching me as pewdiepie does you know that's that's an unrealistic and unreasonable expectation of your reality and your situation and that's that that would be a problem but if you're like i've just started streaming and i'm happy that 10 people are, sit are chilling in my chat that's fine you're keeping it reasonable you are keeping it relative to your situation and you have adjusted your expectations so what about yeah. what about um a narcissist just like exploring this please that special aspect um a narcissist who competes so like you're not always going to win every competition whether it be sporting or um talking about that dark side phil streamer he used to be a street fighter 2 competitor didn't he and so there is actually a like what happens like dark side feels a great example i suppose is that you compete you lose and then what you just have you you've got it there's got to be some way of expressing it's not my fault maybe it wasn't i didn't it's not me that's bad because i'm the narcissist i think i'm brilliant so how do narcissists that compete you know how do they deal with the fact that they don't always win Believe you'll project special. it outwards <laughs> you'll project it outwards normally as a defense mechanism because again if you can accept criticism and you can accept there's always going to be someone better than you there's always going to be someone faster than you there's always going to be someone who who reach higher if you could accept that then you could adjust your expectations and you can accept that criticism and you can accept the acknowledgement of your limitation. You are secure enough. You are not insecure, whereas your narcissist is insecure. So they can't accept that. So they have to reject it. They do deflect it. They will, they will project responsibility for the loss onto something else. 
might be, you know, oh, the track was a bit slippy or, you know, I, I hadn't tied my trainers right so I couldn't run properly or, you know, we had a false start or the weather was just not great or, I, you know, I, I had a heavy night last night and I wasn't feeling it, you know, I could have done better if it weren't for this thing, that thing or the other thing. Anything external that can be projected onto will be projected onto because that's easier than sort of like looking at yourself and thinking, huh, I do have limits. I do have restrictions. There are people better than me. You know, mm. so um, everyone in chat, outwards situations. everyone in chat, I know that you've won a medal in your time. I know you've won an award. I know you've got a little trophy for something on the on the top of the cabinet there, even if it's only fifteen hundred meters swimming. Please tell me in chat your little achievement, your little medal, your little trophy that you got. Please tell me in chat, little positivity booster there. Tell me your achievements in chat, where you've got your little cup and your medal. Um, as we move on to our next narcissism trait, unless I've, I've exhausted, believes they're special there. No, yeah, that's pretty yeah. much it. It's yeah, yeah. fairly number, straightforward, that one. Number four, as, as you polish up your little trophy and tell us what you've done in chat, what you've got your little award for, um, or even big award, um, requires excessive admiration. <laughs> <laughs> See, I work those two things together there. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. It's, it's, again, it you, comes from your belief that you are special and that you are unique. You need people to validate that. If, if the... You have a fear of anxiety from your expectations of your you and your social situation and the reality of your social situation clashing. One of the ways that you can insulate yourself against that is to have people around you telling you, yeah, you're all right. Yeah, you're good. We like you. We enjoy your stuff. It's meaningful. And I've literally just mentioned, I thought we'd get onto it later, but I've, I've just mentioned it now in chat to someone. Um, to what the hen? This is where we use the term flying monkeys. These, um, again, spoilers for the Wizard of Oz. But flying <laughs> monkeys are servants of the Wicked Witch of the West, and they go out and they do her bidding. And flying monkeys are, see, are seen in, term, in, in the context of narcissism. They are people like friends and hangers on who will validate the narcissist delusion. They, they, they might get something out of it in some way they might be elevated in that group so if you know say you're, you're somebody in the online vegan community one of your supporters might be seen higher than others because they hang out with you they talk to you they say yeah you're great they they suck up to you the most and so mm. they benefit from enabling your delusion by validating it and being seen by everybody else as being favored you're higher you're above the others because hey you you know, you talk to this guy on Discord, you've DM'd him, you, you've helped him out with stuff and talk to him and, you know, you, you, you give him thumbnails or you give him stream art or whatever. So and he favoured We've got, um, uh, it sounds like we've got like a leader of a group, like a gang of, like, you know, maybe subordinates. Like, sometimes I'm thinking of school bullies that had these little kids hanging around them that, like, used to suck up to them that would prevent them from getting bullied maybe. But, you know, like, you've got a leader, of, the narcissist wants to be the leader and they want the, these yeah. subordinates to, like, you can't be... Can you be the, uh, so I, I get that principle, right? What about like in a relationship where there's just two people? Does the narcissist, do, does the person in the relationship with the narcissist, do they feel they have to sort of be subordinate to them to be like a flying monkey? Or can they have someone like, you know, a, a, as a peer on their level in a relationship um, no, in that way? Never on your level. No, never on your level. No, you can never be on the level of the narcissist. The narcissist is always above you. The narcissist mm. is always better than you in some way, as far as they're concerned. You will be subordinate in a relationship to the narcissist, and the narcissist will only value your relationship with them in as much as they can benefit from it. The moment they stop being able to benefit from them, maybe you call them out on, on their bullshit and you say, nah, this is enough, I'm not doing this for you anymore. You're done. You might as well have salted the earth. You are finished because you are no longer useful to the narcissist. And but so as long as you keep telling them they're great, they'll keep favoring so in a in a relationship like one-on-one -on -one, um the narcissist is the narcissist your uh, the other person's role would then be to sort of prop up the narcissist and give them that admiration to see them in that yep. way um my feeling is that uh in any relationship over a period of time um you know you see each other's foibles at first you don't you know you, you're on your best behavior and all that and then you know things start to um ease and you see each other's foibles and you know you kind of accept parts of other people's behavior maybe um my guess is that the narcissist at this point when they start being seen for who they really are that would be a really problematic aspect of a relationship because they require the admiration the minute you see through them and stop admiring them something's really broken there yeah 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 basically yeah they, they need you to keep validating their delusional belief that they're great and the moment you go well actually no let's talk about this 
you stop being useful to them because you're not validating their beliefs anymore. You, you are going to hold them to account. You're going to make them change, which is scary. You're going to make them do something. You're going to make them look inside and, and, and face up to their insecurities. You're going to make them do something that they don't want to do. And, and, and at that point for them, it's easier to cut and run uh, than it is to actually do the thing that you wanted them to do, even if it's something small you know not necessarily go to therapy but do you mind doing this like not treating me like shit or do you mind changing your behavior in some way no fuck off why why would i do that i'm doing it like this i've always done it like this it's always worked for me and people keep telling me i'm great so you could you know buy regardless mm. of whether it's 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 like a group thing because every group every subculture every subgroup has its own little hierarchy of notability you know well, every group has the... like a social power but well, even in the... relationships yeah, I was going to ask, um, requiring excessive admiration as well. Like, where, mm. like if I wake up in the morning I'm on my own, I've got no admiration, there's no one there. So where does the narc go? Does the narc require a big group? Do they look for wider and wider social groups? Is it is it about that? Or is it the, a one-on-one, -on -one, you know, this person thinks I'm brilliant and keeps telling me, so I'm happy with this person, we're done. Like, do they require more than just one person? More than one person helps because, you know, if you have one person telling you great, that's great. But if you have a lot of people telling you you're great, it's even better. But there's obviously only so big a group can grow before dissenting opinions will start to creep up and people will start to say, yeah, we enjoyed that. But and at that point, that's when you start being look, you, you, you know, you, you, dis, you sneak dissing me and, and all that stuff. That's when you start getting questioned and, 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 and um, sort of like publicly embarrassed and humiliated by the narcissist that's when they start applying the pressure to get you to fall back in line and get back to praising them but yeah so there's only so much of a group that can go ideally you don't want too big of a group because the bigger your group gets the more chance critical voices will be heard hmm. but you, you don't want just one person either you do need a few sort of play off each other and 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 keep them all on a level field where they're, they're they're more concerned with keeping you happy than they are with say criticizing you and helping you to grow by teaching you how to do something like or making you do things and making you change so yeah ideally a, a big enough group but okay most of us have a social group limit anyway most of us don't have too many friends we'll have enough friends for what we think you know yes enough friends but yeah there's a limit the flying, it's this flying monkeys has come up in chat again yeah mm. uh, yeah 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 interesting yeah. If you can have a swarm of them that would be great <laughs> interesting um mm. do you think uh one final question about this excessive admiration is the mm. uh the idea of course is obvious to us in life that this person might therefore be um wanting to be a singer or on instagram with all the the followers and stuff but those roles aren't actually easy to achieve for everyone are they so let's say you, you don't like you you do the singing but nobody wants to hear you sing do you then turn to another role in life where you can seek excessive admiration maybe you're the leader of the the group in a, a different like, i'm trying to think of like you know maybe you run the, the bar and like you're you're the head mm. of the, the running the bar so therefore you're admired for being at the top of the tree and that you know maybe, do people find if yeah, they're not successful in, in their chosen field, do they find that they still have to be the top one at whatever they're doing, so to speak? You know? I suppose I suppose that would depend on your individual narcissist because some are going to keep pushing at being a singer and just being more and more denial of like the reality of they're not that good a singer. And they're going to, and, and it's, especially if they have like a small group of people telling them, no, you're really good. We'll turn up to your gigs. We love your music. We've been downloading you from Bandcamp or whatever. You got to have your flying monkeys enable that person. Then they might keep pushing to be in a singer, but it's not. I, I, I think even in, in, narcissists would be like, right, okay, it's been twenty years now. I'm obviously not going to be number one anymore. So I'll go do something else. I'll go and host a podcast, <laughs> or, or I'll go and make videos about this guy on YouTube. You know, because <laughs> nobody wants to come to my gigs. So, um, not that I got any experience there, but. <laughs> But yeah, no, um, so it's possible. But again, getting a narcissist to transition from one thing into another is difficult. The narcissist has to sort of like want to do it. And if they can do it in a way that like they find easy to justify, they will do. If they could do it in a way like I like to take the dark side fillers of reaction as, as an example. He's recently mm -hmm. transitioned into doing reaction content where he'll just sit and watch it's and react to stuff. Again. Despite I being a gaming YouTuber, someone who's done great gaming fresh. streams and has previously shit on people who do react content. 
but he's now finding it easier and more rewarding to do React content. So he's justifying it to him. And, you know, I'm 40 years old. I've got a carpal tunnel. I can't be giving this all day. Plus, you guys have said that you like all the React stuff that I've done previously. So if you can just, if the narcissists can justify it to themselves, and if that, especially if that's being enabled by flying monkeys going, yeah, we love the new content. It's great. Then they can change. But most of the time they tend to sort of like persist along that path and just try, just ignore all other like voices telling them you're not going to do this you're not going to be a success at this you should do something else mm. when they get um, to a point where they can't do that any longer they might change but so i want to say thank you to diana for the nine pounds there brilliant content so glad you're covering this topic thank you diana um with that that you just said i understand that then so let, let me just set a, a random example of like so somebody works in a restaurant they're like a waiter but they want to be the, the world's greatest singer Okay, and mm -hmm. they, they don't have any success in the singing. Do they then work their way up and become the restaurant manager and have to um, sort of dominate the, that environment to make up for the fact that they're not having any sense in singing? Or can they just like, can they be happy being like, you know, a shit waiter and I don't care about this because I'm still a great singer is, is too dominant in their psyche. Do you know what I mean? I'm asking if uh, the sense of in, uh, requiring excessive admiration makes them say, at the end of shift, does everyone have to tell them what a good waiter they've been? Or, or can it, yeah. like, does it transfer everywhere? Like, yeah. Again, again, it would depend on your narcissist, their sort of like, their limit for how easy they find it to deny the reality of like, you're a shit singer, you're not going anywhere. But if they then notice, oh, hang on, at the end of my shift at, at, at the restaurant, people tell me that they enjoyed the food. You might lean into that more. And you'll find it easier to justify it to yourself because you're like, people were raving about the food. You know, people were raving about like the service they got or I got a lot of tips or whatever. So it's better for me to do this than it is to do this. Like, it's easier for me to be a YouTube creator than it is to be a professional Street Fighter player because YouTube is easier and I'm getting more money from it. So there we go. I'll do that instead. As long as there's a way to justify it, yeah. But finding that way to justify it is often difficult. So... Mm. Okay, so my next one, number five, is a sense of entitlement. And I've put in brackets, trust me, because a lot of the examples of narcissists exhibiting this sense of entitlement when I was doing a little bit of research was them saying, oh, trust me, it's going to be like this, or trust me, I know what I'm doing, or trust me. And like the idea that you should put your faith in them and they're entitled to this position of, yeah, I'm in the lead, trust me, um, sense of entitlement. Yeah. It's again, it seems fairly straightforward at the top, doesn't it? It's a sense of entitlement, and it is a reasonable sense of entitlement as the issue. And again, it's not just a thing that occurs in one place, it applies everywhere. So it's not just in terms of um, work, expect great success in, in, in wealth and riches, you expect to be rich like that. You also have a sense of entitlement when it comes to. You, you know personal relationships and how you think your friends should be with you how you think your your partner should be with you it's an unreasonable expectation and a sense of entitlement that far outseeds uh, far exceeds what you <laughs> should actually be getting and so also, i'm not again, laughing at you, you. Get... i'm laughing at audrey they thought this was bake off like this is getting out of hand now <laughs> we're gonna have to do a cooking episode it's gonna have to be done i'm gonna have to learn to ride a chuffing motorbike i don't want to ride a motorbike Chuff it. I can't <laughs> Sorry. even drive. I don't have any license. <laughs> you have to go in the sidecar. I'll, I'll sit in the car, yeah. I'll yeah. sit in the sidecar. <laughs> Shit. Pair of plum puddings. Um, yeah, so uh, <laughs> trust me a sense of entitlement. Yeah, we would, yeah. 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 It's like, like, why would you? If, if you are a narcissist and you, you expect that people should be trusting you, you know, they you, you wouldn't even consider why that person might be hesitant. You wouldn't even think about why they might have reservations about putting all your trust, putting all their trust in you. You would expect that they do it because you're you. You know, you are the, the, the center of the universe, as it were. So if you say this thing is going to be great, trust me, you should automatically trust me. It's 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 all relationships. Though. It's not just interpersonal ones. It's 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 everywhere. Most of these these diagnoses that we're that we're going over again it's the impact that it has on your ability to live your life that and is the the defining thing we look for so i get if you have this ways, everywhere mm. like there's a couple of ways that I, I see different personalities here i see one as being like quite a spoiled person who would say like well I, you know i want this i want that sense of entitlement you know i should have it i should get this but also i see this idea of someone who wants to always drive the ship someone who always wants to like run the show and feels like it 
uh, the smartest person in the room all the time, like this sense of entitlement in a slightly different way. Um, mm -hmm. It must be difficult. I want to think about being in a relationship in these situations as well. Um, mm -hmm. <laughs> you chuffers of the music. Listen, this is Genshin Impact music. It's my favourite relaxing music and I need relaxing. So I'm listening to my favourite relaxing music in the background. You chuffers. It's from, it's from a computer game as well, so it's copyright free. Um, I'm thinking that in a relationship with someone who has this sense of entitlement, it must be very difficult because they always have to lead the ship and do the thing. And um, mm -hmm. like, what they want is... Like, of course, we'll go and see the film they want. Of course, we'll go to the restaurant they want. Of course, we'll... Like, it must be very difficult that they're always in charge, so to speak, maybe. Yeah, in most, most of us, again, if, if we're all normal, as it were, you know, we we would find that very difficult. And, and you know, it would be something that we would struggle to... To, to live up to we wouldn't we wouldn't think that their expectations of us were reasonable and we might protest we might disagree and we might find ourselves falling out with that person and not seeing them again so yeah most of us would rightly resist but if if you're a good enough narcissist you might be able to manage that you might be able to manipulate it a bit or sort of like avoid it skillfully by slowly convincing this person by slowly convincing us actually it's worth investing in me it's worth trusting me you know if we can be pressured into believing it we might crack and become a flying monkey or somebody else who would be useful to the narcissist so again yeah most of us would refuse but eventually if your narcissist is good enough or if your person is you know we will weak enough i guess i think there's you know, also if, if, if you're both i don't want to say weak it sounds no, bad like you know, there's if, a social balance here it, it, or just yeah. not like the other option is you have a big fat row sometimes like you have to mm. stand your ground and, and it might just be easier to say all right let them choose the restaurant do you know what I mean? Sometimes it might be easier just yeah. to give in to this um, boorish personality who's who's domineering this situation in the narcissist sense. Mm -hmm. um, so this sense of entitlement might lead to these people getting what they want more often because they, otherwise they get eggy. And because we don't yeah. have that sense of entitlement, and that feeds back. And because and, and we don't have that same sense of entitlement, it's like, well, I why should I get what I want? Let them have what they want. You know, it's it's funny. Like the natural, it seems like the natural way that would settle is the people who feel entitled get what they want because the meek have to wait to inherit the earth after everyone else has finished using it. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> like, like mm. that, that makes sense, yeah? Um, yeah, yeah. I, I really like this music. I don't think it sounds like a Chinese restaurant and I don't think we look like the hairy bikers. So I don't know what the fuck's going on today, frankly, you choppers. But um, I'm having a lot of fun. If you're I having fun I too... I the music, so... Steve can't hear it. It's the same music we always <laughs> listen to, Steve. Um, it's, if, if, um, if you're having fun too and you haven't hit that like button and subscribe, subscribing is free, right? So I don't know what you... You know, why haven't you done that? It's free. Extra value, double value, subscription. And uh, the yeah. like button is, uh, it's on there so that if you hit 200, I'll give 20 pounds to UNICEF. They're already at 10 pound. So there are your options there. If you've got any special questions, you super chat and we'll send them in the tippies and we'll directly get onto them. Um, we are only halfway through our list of, of uh, oh, traits. It's a and <laughs> so we've got, to, we've got to keep pushing with this, yeah? So yeah. our next yeah, one, yeah, yeah. unless you've got any more to say on sense of entitlement that I've missed. No, no, we've come, no, let's go, let's keep let's going. Go, yeah. <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not even going to pick up the fact that we look like members of ELO. I'm going to push on to, uh, <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to push on to interpersonally exploitative, which is quite a long, in, interpersonally exploitative mm -hmm. means like um, ripping people off or no. twisting them to, no. using people. Yeah, basically, yeah, it evolves. How much benefit can the narcissist gain from this relationship? You know, because obviously most of us have to manage social relationships. We have to manage business relationships. We have to manage relationships with people at work. We have to manage relationships with people who who we interact with. You know, in our in our daily lives. So it's a thing that we all do. But most of us don't do it with a view to what can I get out of this first? You know, most of us are on the surface level just helping. So if, you know, if you want to help somebody, like somebody trips and falls, you want to help them up because you're a nice person. So you go over and help them up. A narcissist would think, I'll help you up, but I expect reward. If I can benefit from it, if you reward me, you know, if you get, oh, thanks for helping me up, here's a tenner. Then, you know, that's very different. It's benefit from this personal relationship is the primary motivation with narcissists, with narcissists. Whereas with most of us, it's not. We might, ben we might benefit from the relationship, but it's not our primary motive in maintaining that relationship. We might genuinely enjoy being with that person and, and sort of like, you know, 
you meet a new friend and you you know they look a bit lonely and you go over and talk to them and hey a friendship blossoms from that and you start seeing them and all that then you know you are managing that relationship but you're benefiting from it isn't the primary motivation for you when you went in to manage the relationship but if you saw somebody and you were like i could get something out of this person this person will benefit me in some way you know they might they might be financial it might be social it might be professional they might be able they might be giving you money they might have like contacts in the industry that you work for they might um give you a service like they might edit your videos for free <laughs> so, so talking about this man dark side phil that came up like i've uh, put his picture on the screen again quickly um he did oh, a project didn't he with um like he did a project with some of his friends and they were making content together and he didn't pay them as much as they hoped they would get and stuff like or as much as he thought he should mm. um and overall mm. it, it felt like he really ripped them off and like they all did this stuff together but he got a load of the money and a load of the, the benefit um and they didn't get as much that sounded like exploiting them um like that sort of stuff we're talking about yeah yeah basically yeah if yeah. i can exploit if you can provide a service to me if i benefit from maintaining this relationship in some way i will I will keep it. I will work at it and I will work at keeping you on side. But the moment you stop being of use to me, I am done investing in you. You know, profit from this relationship is my primary motive for keeping the relationship. That's the narcissist perspective. And, that, and so again, the minute, the minute you stop doing good stuff. podcasts, the minute you stop doing good podcasts, Steve, you're done. <laughs> you're, you're, you're done. The minute you stop doing good podcasts. Um, uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, so, but also, okay, let me tie this into a relationship as well, because like, yeah, in a relationship, yeah. you're supposed to be equal partners, aren't you? And like, um, I think this was brought up earlier. I wanted to also say, Snips, I saw your question. It's a good question. So I think we'll ask it as well in a little bit. Um, uh, I think that uh, in a relationship, you're supposed to be equal partners, but could this come into that fiscal sense of things that happen? You know, someone said about earlier, exploitation sometimes sounds like money doesn't it could the narcissist be trying to spend someone else's money and thinking it's their own and um how do you exploit your loved ones like is that something normal or like a bit over the top and like it sounds like you know that's a world that i'm a bit confused about being in a relationship with a narcissist and then being exploitative towards you how would that work tell me about it but again it's multiple aspects of your relationship in your life. So financial exploitation might be one thing. The narcissist may benefit from staying at home all day while you go out to work and you pay off for all the bills for the narcissist. So the narcissist benefits that way. They might also benefit socially. It might They might be seen as better if they have a relationship, if they're seen as being married by a certain time or, you know, you, you might maintain... Um, Again, it could be an industry thing, a work thing. You might be maintaining this relationship with this person because they know somebody else that you want to get close to, you know. So it, it could also just be like you're lazy and a slob and the nas and, and the person that you are exploiting, they benefit you because they go around cleaning up. They provide your meals. They, they cook for you and clean for you. So it, it's not just like financial exploitation, but financial exploitation is one of the ways that a narcissist might see value in maintaining a relationship because again they're benefiting from it so it just depends on whether they think it's worth the energy and effort of maintaining that relationship to keep that benefit the moment it stops being worth it they will stop investing in you but mm. yeah plenty of different ways to exploit you, your, um, your partner we said that you only had to have five of these nine to be a narcissist could it be that narcissists yeah. um someone's asked in chat uh can a narcissist love unconditionally and my guess is yes they would say they can or that they would express that they do unconditionally love someone but maybe their um what they're saying in their head is love might not be what you think in your head is love like maybe their perception of what they need from someone like in this exploitative sense yeah. maybe they feel the idea that they love someone. I'm getting my words a bit confused there, but you know what I mean? Like, like, um, I think they would think they can love, but in a relationship, do they have to exploit? Yeah. There's another, like, there's two questions in one there. Yeah. Yeah. It's difficult because again, you, you, you come back to the idea of whether you can feel it versus whether you are willing to feel it. You could display that you feel love, but whether that's true, whether you actually feel love or you're just putting on an act is something that only you will really know. And, you know, so a narcissist might say, yeah, of course I love unconditionally. I've been faithful to my wife for 10 years or 20 years. You know, I, I, I love unconditionally. But really, do they? Because it, they might be benefiting from it. They might be benefiting from the status of being married. Could it be to that's what person. they think love is? Is that like when, when I like, uh, I'm trying to think about um, 
one of the features of love that seems so strange is that it's that when you're parted you feel such anguish and that you feel that more so over this person that you love than others like, like that extra sense of, of distress and anguish when you're parted so could it be that the narcissist feels that sense because they require entitlement and admiration and all this stuff and they're exp and when they're parted they're losing such a lot that they require in their yeah. heart so they think that is what love is like that's know? that's the difference yeah because again you you see the absence of that person as the absence of that person you miss everything that they bring to your life emotionally spiritually you know in, in terms of like how happy they make you feel in your relationship you see a personal like connection to this person and all these ways that they enlighten and enrich your life and you miss the absence of that whereas a narcissist misses the benefits that they get they miss waking up and having their breakfast ready for them they miss not having to do the washing up in the morning they miss these things that the other person okay. did and so rather than the person themselves and so loving unconditionally means means that someone could stop doing those things and you still love them. Narcissist mm -hmm. can't do that because when you stop doing the things, they're very fucked off and they're angry and they don't love you because you're not doing the things. Yeah, but again, you come down to can you feel it or are you just unwilling to feel it? Because again, if you feel it, you might see that as exposing your vulnerable, true, insecure self because you're opening mm. yourself up to someone. So the thought of doing that is terrifying, but you still might be able to feel it and you still might want it. And the thought of that might make you upset at night. You might think I'm okay with my relationships, but you might miss a friend that you used to have. So you might lie awake at night thinking of them and missing them. And, and you know, it might make you sad, but you can't express that. You can't express that because it shows that you're vulnerable. So you put on the image that, no, you're fine. It's fine. I don't need them anymore. They were, they were an old friend. I don't need them anymore. It's hard to be so, the thought police sometimes, isn't it? And see what's in someone's head yeah. rather than what they express. Because I'm a great believer in... Uh, you know the things that matter in life are the things you actually do like it's okay to say oh, I was going to do it I was thinking about doing it or you know thought that counts but you know if you don't do it like, or you don't say it then it goes unsaid so um, maybe there's something in that um, and I, I'm thinking about the idea of unconditional love as well like can a narcissist like this one of exploitative like you don't have to have all these traits do you so maybe a narcissist can be in a relationship where they don't exploit someone and they actually mm. like re legit love them but then these other personality traits spoil the relationship that could also yeah. be the case yeah yeah because that those other traits would affect their relationship because of how they would affect how the narcissist behaves and how the narcissist responds to conflict and how the well, narcissist they don't have to have all the traits do they disagreement. you don't have to have all the traits no so, just five five of nine so just mm. over half you know and that's about as far as we've got up to right so next <laughs> <laughs> Lack so we can empathy. diagnose someone at least. <laughs> yeah. um, but we've talked about expo interpersonally exploitative. I believe that the way we're going on this, there might be further episodes in narcissism. And I've got a couple of ideas for future episodes with Steve on narcissism. So um, if you want more in chat, you know, uh, don't worry, we can do more. Um, number seven, lack empathy. Uh, that sounds pretty straightforward to me, doesn't it? It's like you don't give a shit about what other people think and feel. Uh, you just It just is nothing yeah. to you like if you're a narcissist, yeah? yeah but again can you feel it lacking it does not necessarily mean oh okay yeah can. it's not that you yeah. don't care it's yeah. that you uh, don't want to seem like you care you don't want to be seen like this you don't want to show that you do psycho oh, wait wait wait, wait. Cannot do, feel you, you do want to show that you do because it, but you just don't know what it is if it's social if it's beneficial to you in some way to, to to be seen as being empathetic and 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 having empathy to someone else then you might act like you are but that's yeah. not the same as actually genuinely feeling it so mm. yeah it comes down to do you have the capacity to feel it or not well, psychopaths mm. don't psychopaths just do not feel empathy at all so they cannot feel it they can act like they feel it though they can act like it they can have learned through socialization that at certain times it's the thing to do the, to show empathy. So, you know, if a colleague announces that, you know, they've had a, a, a death in the family recently, you, you would know as a psychopath who has been well socialized to go over and say, oh, it's really, I'm really sorry for your loss, you know, and, and, and show empathy in that way. But that's not the same as feeling it. And this so, is the issue that we have narcissists. Do you feel it or not? Yeah. So, so the way we could see that, I guess, would be like in situations where they maybe respond differently to certain situations mm -hmm. or, um, I'm, I'm just thinking, I, I, tell me in chat about your favourite uh, 
uh, X Factor or Britain's Got Talent audition? Who was your favourite Britain's Got Talent or X Factor audition? Which one's your favourite in chat? Because I'm thinking Susan Boyle, when she did that song, I don't think any of us could say that we didn't feel a little bit, you know, did you, you remember did the, that? Did, did the hype package tear you up? Is when, she, when, when she did uh, I Dreamed a Dream My Life Would Be and, and, yeah, yeah, and the Tigers yeah. and then uh, like, and obviously she didn't look all the Amanda Holden's the there like that yeah I don't think I think you know to, for, to be fair you see I remember in chat there Susan Boyle yeah you know I felt that I, I can't even when I watch it back now um, I feel a little bit like you know even knowing what, what a wild ride Susan went on um, I still feel a little bit of sentiment when I see that um and there was another I, I, one. Uh, no. like little, <laughs> I didn't feel it at that time. Sorry. Have you, have you seen the? I probably can't even get them up as clips because they'll just get as copyright. But the little no, girl yeah, that does the opera great. as well. There's one. I think it might be a foreign one. And she, she comes out and she's all like, you know, I just wanted to do something mm -hmm. X Factor and that. And then she just sings this opera song and you're like, whoa. Um, it's things like that. that my uh, favorite. My favorite one. My favorite one is 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 the little girl who comes out with a brother. And um, a brother goes and sits behind a drum kit, and she picks up a guitar, and and it's like she just looks like this really sweet little eight year old girl, and they start singing a heavy metal song about zombie slaughter, and she's like <laughs> into the mic. It's that's, that's what got you in it, your heart. It, it, that really got me. That really got yeah. Me. <laughs> but it will, it will like get us copyright struck. So you'll have to look. Yeah. At it, you'll have to like check it out later. But yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. So. Um, <laughs> So yeah, I think those sort of things. Maybe if you're with a narcissist, they just like, huh? what? Depend again, depending, depending. Most narcissists wouldn't really oh, show much of a sign. But they if show they're it. socialized, yeah. if they're yeah. socialized, they might recognize that. Oh, this is a moment where you are supposed to show empathy. So I will act like I'm showing empathy. Mm -hmm. I will act yeah. like I feel for this thing. But they may not actually feel it. They so, just know that they have to act like it. So. Could it not, like, when when you're in a relationship with a narcissist, then do you think that there's a possibility that um, they, they might let that go and, like, you know, not have to show the empathy that they would normally show in social situations with their partner around? Because, you know, they let that mask slip maybe and just, like, you know, sometimes the partner thinks, they have they got no heart when they're doing things? Like, maybe it just, like, I don't know, treatment of an animal or something like that. Um, maybe, yeah, yeah, yeah. you know, it comes out in those it ways. Could. They could. Again, it depends on the narcissist and how comfortable they are around that person that they think, oh, I can let me guard down now. I've got that person enough under my thumb that I am safe enough to let this bit out because they're not going to do anything. And if they do try anything, I know how to bring them back on side. So if a narcissist feels like it has control over you, it might let a bit slip. But typically they don't. They're too guarded and too scared of having the real them exposed, the, the real insecurities. So... That they, they'll keep it guarded and again depending on how socialized they are they might be better at hiding it so this is why a lot of narcissists sort of like get away with what they do for so long before somebody recognizes what's going on because they've, if they've learned how to socialize and they've learned how to manage relationships so that they can get away with it they learn oh, at this point i'm supposed to say this oh, at this point i'm expected to show empathy or sympathy at this point i'm expected to be like this so they get used to managing social expectations and can slip undercover easily um now in chat i look like the 70s show finger bobs so thanks <laughs> I'm just becoming. I'm becoming a meme in chat today. That's, I don't know. I don't know why. Just wearing my nice clothes. You, oh, Mate, okay. I've been called Bono twice. <laughs> yeah. And, so. uh, it's, it's all well and good though. It's all well and good. Keep your chats firing off. I want to see those thumbs working. <laughs> um, we've got. We've only got a couple more of these uh, behaviours. Do you know in chat what the other two narcissistic behaviours are going to be? Bang them in chat quick if you do. There's ten points if you can guess them. Uh, okay. Because yeah, yeah. I'm going to say number eight in just a second. Um, I'm going to remind you as well that we're on every Monday. We do this every Monday. Thus, podcast me and Steve. <laughs> <laughs> broke a broke bottle. Power and shot bono. Um, we're doing this every Monday, <laughs> and uh, we're going to do different we're, subjects. Oh, you can be part of it, as you can see. Uh, you can drive the conversation. You can decide what sort of things we discuss. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, maybe at this point I should I should reveal what I'm looking forward to doing this week as well. Do you want to see this? I've got a little special thing. I've got a little special thing set up. Uh, well, I'm on delay, aren't I? So I'm you're not going to be able to see it immediately, are you? No. Yeah. But um, I just I've got this set up. If I just turn on this camera over here, and then if I'm if I'm lucky, if I'm lucky, it's not another Nicola Bully thing, is it? It's not. No. There we go. Everyone, see that. <laughs> 
Oh, we'll get a view on that. You have to wait. You have to wait. The, the stream's still catching up. The stream's still catching up. Yeah. Uh -huh. I'll, I'll just I'll just move it around a little bit. Is, is this going to be good good for a stream? I'm just going to ask my spirit guide. Oh, oh, it looks like it is going to be. <laughs> it looks like it is going to be good for a stream. It looks like that's going to make a good stream. What are these? Are these tarot cards? These are Genshin Impact tarot cards. So I've got it all. Got all oh, okay, right, right, right. So right. There we go. Got that. There we go. that that's all set up there. I've got we that. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Let's do that. Shit. Yeah. So I'll just turn that off for now, so the ghost can't come in and attack me. But <laughs> no, it's no, it's just a thing off the internet. Don't worry, everyone. It's not like bad spirits are going to come in the house or anything. It's just a little, you know, game off the internet. We can talk about it. We can have a look at it. I was thinking, call in show coming up this week might be monday or tuesday uh, probably tuesday call-in show can be call in ask the spirit world ask scotty hotty spirit guide. <laughs> tell me what you think about spirits tell me what you think about tarot tell me what you think about the whole lot we'll listen to your opinions we'll ask some questions of the spirit oh, my spirit well yeah mm -hmm. um, and mm -hmm. maybe we'll discuss some of the uh, different people that share their gift online and whether they're gifting or grifting we'll, we'll have a look at that so yeah. So one of, one of the when I came to uh, my last year of studies, one of the units that you that because obviously you have to pick which area you are specialising in once you're into forensics. So you know, it's a couple of different ones that you go down and you know you study different various fields in psychology, and one of them is parapsychology, which is obviously how people in psychology relate to the, the, the you know, paranormal and how we understand paranormal processes. And I really regret not doing it. Because it would have it's been a really, really interesting, interesting subject. Um, Could not course. tie it into a forensic framework for my dissertation, but I really did want to do it. I can so see in chat already that we're going to get different opinions. That's fine. Listen, it's fine for you to have different opinions. In terms of Ouija and spirits, if you're worried about spirits and, and you know bad juju, don't worry. I'm protected. Like I'm, I'm like, like mm. I'm like, like uh, gold shield protected. I am good chuffer. Good chuffer. <laughs> like not not gonna they're not gonna be able to fuck with me good chuffer um and if you don't believe in that sort of stuff that's also fine because like i'm not really a great believer in it but i'm okay for people in chat to have their different opinions and i want to explore it i want to get some of your voices on i want some of you to tell me what you think i want to you know even interview different psychics we've seen some recently with the nicola bully case that are not so credible so i'd like to search and see if we can even find a credible one you know i'm, I'm going to be open-minded but i'm also going to point out that there are some people that give even if you believe in it they give what you believe a really bad name because they're out there to grift. So we're going to cover some of that as well. You know, we're going to try and be kind of fair. So don't think I'm going to like bully anyone in chat and it's okay for all you to have your opinions. And at the same time, therefore, it's okay for me to have mine. So <laughs> we'll see what, what comes of that. That's for the next, uh, that's what's coming up this week um, on the stream here. So uh, yeah, we'll get back to this, uh, this episode about uh, narcissists. Um, and I've already kicked. I've set you off in chat now. Sorry about that. I've set you off in chat. Don't worry. Don't worry. Uh, let's get on to narcissist. We've got another behavior type thing. Another what do you call mm -hmm. them? Um, trait. Yeah, another trait which I put of envious of others. Envious yeah. of others. Um, these people turn it round and say others are jealous of them. Yep. In in brackets. Yeah. 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 Because again, it's easy to project your. Um your insecurities outwards and the responsibility and culpability for the situation you're in outwards onto something else than it is to turn it inside and have a long critical look at yourself and see where you went wrong and where you could change your behaviors in future so if there's something wrong with where you are compared to where you think you should be in say one of your hobbies you know if, if you're not seen as like a particularly good competitor or you can't play a particularly good game you know, and you think you should be higher in the rankings. You might say, well, I didn't get that high in that tournament because people there, the organizers didn't like me. So they rigged the brackets. So I could only play against this guy and therefore I didn't get the fair chance. And, you know, you might, you might, if you were not that great at football and your team, you think should have won, but you were denied, you know, you've, you've been consistently failing and losing games. You might be like, referee was against us in that one. You know, we should have had that free kick. We should have had that penalty. We could have had that goal if we that. You know, we were on side then. You would you would project things outwards. So, but for it to be jealousy, you have to believe that extra because they hate me. It can't just be because you're bad at football and your team isn't great. It has to be the the, the referees and the officials hate you. 
It can't just be that you place badly in a tournament. It has to be that the tournament organizers hate you or other players hate you because you are doing something that they're not somehow you'll find a way to justify it you might say like us with streaming other streamers hate us because we've got like a lot of people in our chat right now when really the reality is we're, we're doing all right by ourselves you know we don't have hundreds of thousands and we don't have millions of people but we're not saying it's because they hate us that they're not here we're aware of our situation and we've adjusted our expectations of it accordingly but if you can't do that you you will find some sort of external focus to project all that insecurity on and it will be because people hate you. They're jealous of you. And why wouldn't they be? You're great. You're fucking king shit. You are the narcissist. You're the center of the universe. Of course, everybody's going to be jealous of you. So, yeah. Hmm. It's weird, isn't it? Like, but, I, I kind of see what you're saying there. Like, they, they create a new rule set for themselves that um, I'm doing something so extraordinary. Like, the reason they don't think I'm a good singer is because they don't know about what's going to be the next form of cool singing. Like, I'm yeah. so good that they don't, they can't judge me properly. I'm outside of their, their like yeah. it's this they're like recontextualizing the world around them to say that like it's the game that's at fault, not the player. <laughs> um, yeah, and, basically, yeah. <laughs> uh, this it's a weird point as well. Envious of others, um, I understand mm -hmm. the concept of like you know someone being jealous of what someone else has got. Like they might have a car, uh, family life. Um, I'm trying. I'm trying to think of you know random things, but they're sounding like Nicola Bully things. Um, but they might have a um, uh, they might have a reason to feel jealous of someone. But then turning it around and saying that someone's jealous of me is a bit confusing to me as well because mm -hmm. I it, it's almost like it's it's what it, well, it is the opposite thing, isn't it? It's like living two opposite mental frameworks in a way. Like, yeah, that must be quite okay, it's it's like that clash between your expectation of reality and what reality actually is. You can't handle that people aren't jealous of you because that means you've got nothing to be jealous of. So, you know, it's understandable that people are jealous of people with success or with money or with power or with fame or, you know, it's understandable to be jealous of someone like that. But if you don't really have that, then people aren't going to be jealous of you. So if people aren't jealous of you, it must be because you don't have that. So why would why would why would anybody be jealous of you if you have nothing? And you can't countenance the idea of nothing as a narcissist. You can't countenance the idea that you have nothing or that you've achieved nothing or like the last ten or fifteen years of your career has amounted to nothing. So it has to be turned outward. It can't be that, you know, I, I have failed to climb the corporate ladder because I'm not a good person and therefore I can't be a good manager because I can't manage people well. It must be there's external forces management someone in management is jealous of me someone at hr doesn't like me people in in, in like upper management are threatened by me you know mm. there, there has to be an external reason why people don't like you because that otherwise be it's all very, on you. that must be very exhausting and dramatic to live in that world where success cannot be just accepted or, or lack of success cannot just be accepted but has to be attributed to a, a wider conspiracy so i'm guessing trying to think about it in terms of a relationship as well this person that uh, a, a, like a sign that you're in a relationship with a narcissist would be they're like constantly moaning about some other force or some other person maybe even you that's sabotaging their mm. world in some way yeah like they, yeah, they feel they're be being sabotaged. Right. Yeah. yeah, it's how you would handle that as a narcissist. You would you handle that sort of gnawing reality of actually you have failed in your like career or your relationships because of things you have done. So it's easier to be like, well, this other person is jealous of me and they acted in some way that hindered me. They might have, you know, they were jealous of the fact that I might get the promotion. So they talked to the boss and stopped me from getting that promotion. You know, no evidence of that at all. But it's a delusion that the narcissist can come up with to sort of justify this is why you didn't get the job to themselves and not need to 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 be critical or to be vulnerable or to, to you know examine themselves internally it projects it outwards and therefore it's easier to deal with you don't have to consider where are my flaws where are my faults where did i go wrong there's somebody else somebody else did it mm. somebody and else this, sabotaged your career this leads us on to you. what number nine or the final one would be arrogant behavior um, which is what you're starting to describe there, isn't it? Arrogant behaviour is a general term, I guess, for just like being a bit of a chuffer all the damn time. But uh, <laughs> have you got a more uh, clinical definition of arrogant behaviour? 
Hello, hello. No, uh, wait, can... wait, 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 wait. Got, we got our first dark side fill. Got our first dark side. I want to. I think should have a soundboard thing. We got our first dark side fill meme in chat. There's a picture oh, of the fucker. SSTV. There's a picture of the fucker. <laughs> there he is. Woo, -hoo. woo. Detractors. Yeah. Um. So, so serious, serious, uh, serious um, clinical conversation we're having here. <laughs> um, <laughs> Audrey's getting starving. Kilty's asked a good question as well. Um. So I want to take that as well. Uh. Would illness change a narc? Um. Before we get onto aggressive behaviour or sorry. Uh, um, arrogant, arrogant behavior would yeah. illness change a narc like parkinson's or neurological conditions um that's a bit of a deep question but just a quick response mm. off the top of your head maybe off the top of my head um no because you could blame the illness for it like say if you know if you have parkinson's and you you struggle to uh, control the muscles in your hand to the point where you can't open a bottle well that's not your fault you've got parkinson's it's the parkinson's disease that's the reason why you can't do this thing it's nothing to do with you personally you know and again disease you could sort of like yeah it runs in the family i have a great aunt that had this disease and that's where i get it from you know so in a way you can project that responsibility outward as well so i don't but again the, the, it depends on your nas it always depends on your nas it's their level of socialization and how they've learned to temper things and manage things mm. because you might be able to accept the humbleness of illness because illness is not, you know, right. Quick really off the top of your head, answer. We do. So, <laughs> yeah. Right. Quick last off the top one. of me, head answer. Yeah, you nearly went <laughs> off then. Um, arrogant behavior. Arrogant behavior. It now. was two hours. I was, I was doing some <laughs> arrogant behavior there as well. Um, arrogant <laughs> behavior um, from a clinical perspective. It's not just being a chuffer, is it? Or is it just being a chuffer? Um, it, it depends because, again, how much of a chuffer you are and and the context in which you become a chuffer and you know the, the the sort of like how relative to your overall level of skill your chufferdomness is associated with basically what i'm saying is if if you are arrogant and you can back it up probably not a narcissist because you know you've got the skills to back it up again we're coming back to the whole like reasonable expectation thing if uh what's it called eddie hall is it mm -hmm. the the strong man eddie hall really he, could pick he, that shit up off yeah, the ground yeah, yeah. Yeah. yeah, he could really pick it up. So it's not arrogant for him to go, I'm this strong, I can do this, because he knows he can. Mm. Whereas somebody like me or you, who's who's not Eddie Hall, who's not a big man, acting like could, we I were, could, that would I be could, a bit. I could pick up, I, if it, yeah, I can pick up a reasonable amount of shit up off the ground, but I wouldn't go in the gym being like, I'm the biggest fucking picker-upper. I ain't yeah, yeah. going to pick up any more than me, you chuffer. No, that wouldn't happen. Yeah, yeah. Um, I have gone yeah. up a ladder, up and down a ladder with tiles on my back and like extreme amounts of tiles that people yeah, think yeah. is, you know, I've been a roof tiler. So. Been a roof tiler, yeah. yeah. Um, <laughs> Rolling uh, up your shirts to pad your shoulders so that they don't get ready yeah. on the way down. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Been doing a bit of labouring, <laughs> so I can pick some stuff up. Um, yeah. Uh, I've got some more um, like points that like little note points yeah, yeah. that I made and people in chat have made, been making some points and I've mm -hmm. made a couple of notes of them here as well. Um, so we've got a few things that I'd like to just bring up that I think are, um, I think in the future we might do a red flags of a narcissist in a relationship thing. But I wanted to ask um, about what it's like to be in a relationship with a, a narcissist. And I've got a, a sort of a list of some other red flags that I want to bring up, right? So we'll do red flags first, then relationship. And you can tell me in chat if you've got any red flags for a narcissist that you want to like pop into chat that you think want to go into chat there. Um, now's a good time for it. Uh, my first one is rages, rants, tirades, and cowardice in that these people might be like having a go all the time, having a rant, like going off on one. But when it comes to actually like, okay then, wind the window down, get out the car and have a, have a fight. They're like, oh, no, 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 about that. And I was happier in the car having the rant, like happy having a go. Like, the yeah. ranting and the raging and the tirade is, is somewhere they like enjoy living, but the actual fight is not. Comment. Yeah. Well, the, the rant is the fantasy. The rant is the delusion. The rant is the, the, the shield against reality because in that rant, you, you, you're powerful and you're like, I swear to God, I could have had him. You know, I swear, oh, if he did come up to me, I swear. If I wasn't on that stage, I'd have gotten down and I'd have taken, you know, you, you get all that release and you get to pick yourself up and you get to feel like, you know, you're not going to whack the, the microphone next time you're, just, you're, you're doing this thing. Um, so you get to do all that and let all that out in a safe way. It's completely, you know, you know no one's actually going to challenge it. Nobody's going to be like, right, okay, then come on, let's have a fight. The ranting and the raving is the way that they sort of like reassert their unrealistic expectation of themselves. It's how they reassert their arrogance and their sort of like sense of worth. It's coping, mm -hmm. basically. It's a coping method. It's reassurance. And, it's like, this is how I feel good. 
and quick fire round the cowardice bit of not wanting to actually have the the Barney the running away from the fight when it comes to the final showdown. Well, at the heart of all this, narcissists hate conflict, terrified of conflict. So, it's it's it's, it's a scary thing. It causes a lot of anxiety, and I guess we've seen it with Dark Side Phil that time when he started mouthing off online, and then when it was time to go to a tournament, the people who were like, "We're going to kick your head in." were there at the tournament and Phil was shitting himself because he can't handle conflict. And somebody else had to come and defuse that conflict for him. So, you know, and we know this because we've spoken to the person who was involved in that conflict on, on that being said. Right, so quick, quick, fire quick fire round. Quick fire round. Crying at inappropriate times as manipulation. Fake crying. Mm -hmm. Yeah, fake crying. Again, it's it's a way to um, to control you. It's a, it's a way to sort of like project the image of, no, really, please don't go. I am vulnerable without you, you know. It's about to be like, I, I trust you. I'm open with you. It's 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 a manipulation. It's to get you back on side because obviously there's no regret felt. There's no actual sincerity or like truth to whatever they're saying. It's a show of emotion designed to have, designed to provoke a response in you that gets you back on side. Mm -hmm. You know, please okay. forgive me. You know, quick, you know. quick fire. Victim speak. Everyone else is crazy. All their exes are crazy. Mm. I get what it says. What it, it's it's pushing the, the the responsibility outwards onto everyone if we if you end up with you know if your relationship ends and you both go your separate ways it's a period of introspection where you look at your behavior in that relationship and you think what did i go wrong where did i do this what you know was there anything i could have done differently or is it all on them and most you know that's a difficult thing for us to go through but most of us will eventually if a relationship is breaking up like you know in a, an appropriate way not all relationships break up well most of them are very painful to go through so if all goes well you, you come away from the relationship thinking well that's where i wrong last time that's where i went wrong last time we had problems in this relationship because i wasn't open enough or i wasn't expressive enough or i didn't like recognize her needs as much or i didn't help her at this point or that point you know you will find fault in yourself and you'll be able to work that so that next time in your next relationship it's not such a big deal but obviously again your narcissist isn't going to do that so it's so, easier to say they're all crazy it's their fault Sarah in chat, um, having one of the nine traits, uh, sorry, five of the nine traits makes somebody a narcissist. Five of the nine traits that we've been going through. Um, another quick fire one, narcissists are huge hypocrites. Yeah, well, yeah basically. Mm. It's saying one thing, doing another. Expecting you to behave one way while behaving the other. And it's fine for me to behave this way because I'm the narcissist. You know, if, if you... Contrary opinion, contrary belief, if you want to do something they don't, again, it's... I will slam you for doing it and then I'll go and do something similar. I'll shit on people for creating this sort of content, but then I'll go and create this sort of content. Okay. They've got no regard for rules. Another quick fire one. Uh, I said earlier they sounded like, you know, make their own rule set if it doesn't go their way. Like, no regard for the rules. Yeah. Well, the relationships are based on trust, aren't they? And you, you establish ground rules. You establish limits. You all have things that you won't do in a relationship and you know you you maintain those healthy boundaries through communication with your partner but obviously that's going to be impossible with a narcissist because if there's a rule they don't like they're just going to ignore it and then they'll they'll usually if they break that rule and you call them why did you do this i i specifically said i don't like it when you do this thing they'll have a reason and they'll be able to eventually pressure you into being oh, okay right fair enough i understand why you did that now i won't be mad next time you do it and they can get away with it then because they've just had that so it's like constantly yeah if they constantly accuse you of cheating when they're not mm. when, when you're uh, not sorry when you're not but that's also true in borderline personality disorder that's that's you know, it, relationship instability is you know yeah, yeah. <laughs> the only reason i'm sort of saying quick fire so I want to get these ones in and we're going to do the personality test because yeah. we're definitely And also doing that. I need the toilet. So. All right, so you can, have a, you can have a break from the toilet after doing your next quick, three quick fire go. ones. Quick yeah. fire. Okay, quick fire. <laughs> um, they pick on your insecurities. Hmm. Yeah, okay, because they, they know the value of exploiting an insecurity. If you're, you know, they feel terrified of their ex, uh, insecurities being like like exposed and, and highlighted for the world to see so they know it's a powerful thing and if they can use that on you if they know like you might be insecure about your weight or something they might use that to their advantage so yeah narcissists are very very good at picking up on that sort of thing and thinking right i'll make a mental note of you being insecure about say your nose or your hair or you know your weight or something like that and then later on when i need it i can use that the, another quick fight they've got a history of addiction or trouble with addiction is that necessary? I, I, it, as, as, as a coping method for anxiety that you might feel from, 
you know, the, the, the clash of reality and your expectations. So if you think you should be more successful, but you're not, it's easy to drink that away. So okay, and then, it's usually as a coping method. And then one more quick fire for you is uh, that they're polarizing because initially believers or people that fall for the, the con and the, the facade, they love them and they'll big them up and, and back them. Um, and those that fall for the manipulation, they're one camp. And then there are other people that see the con and, and dislike them intensely. And so they either love them or hate them sort of people. Again, just look at Dark Side, Phil, for an example of this is a person who has his own group of people that really do believe him. They've fallen for it. They like him. They support him. They'll give him money regardless of his unreasonable expectations for it. And then there's a group around that called detractors who don't. They see the con. They see what he does. They see how he abuses and manipulates his audience. And so they call it out. And they're the different group. So, yeah, polarizing. But in context of a relationship, this might be your friends and your family, your co-workers, your ex-partners. This might be some people who if you get into a relationship with someone. Maybe a couple of their mates might come up and be like, oh, yeah, she's wild, but, you know, nice girl at heart and all that stuff. And then there might be other people that are like, fucking run. This person is crazy. They're dangerous. They're mental. It's, you know, so, yeah, again, it, 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 it socially, that's the sort of way you'll find it. I mean, your friends, your relatives, your co-workers, the people you've associated with. Okay, so you're going to go to the toilet, and then when you get back, we're going to have a quick yes, run I through um, some aspects of a relationship. Like, you take your headphones and go, yeah. yeah. Um, um, when he gets back, we're going to have a little run through these aspects of the relationship that I've been looking at in chat as well. Love bombing, gaslighting, manipulation, um, what it's like to go through a relationship with a narcissist. I think what we've done tonight, by doing the nine traits, learning about the character of the narcissist in general, has been good. I think we're keeping a, a good uh, a good vibe going on. Yeah, I think we're, we keep. We're like, it's quite a serious subject in a way. You know, some people have suffered with with people who have been narcissists in their lives at times. You know, it's quite a serious subject in a way. So um, I hope we're keeping a nice uh, vibe going, right? And then after that, we're going to do this personality test, which is we're going to do it in the form of a narcissist. Steve's going to shit on the personality test itself. He's going to say, oh, I don't like these. Psychologically, top psychologists don't really do these things, but we're going to do it and we're going to have fun doing it. And then maybe in the future weeks, we've got, uh, I'm seeing that there might be a, um, I'm seeing that we might be able to do a further couple of episodes on narcissism. It's a bigger subject than just this one stream, I think. Maybe relationships with narcissists could be its own stream itself so you know we, we could definitely dig into this a bit deeper and if you've got ideas like that then get them in the chat i'll remind you that uh, i am sustained now <laughs> by your chuffing coffee tips thank you for all the people that have tipped so far we've got super chats on the screen that can come up when you do those we are going to also move towards a membership thing where we want to make a bit more of what we're doing we want to get more guests on have more voices and we also want to go out and use our cameras to do something like a special once a month or so um, so we're going to have memberships, membership goals and content that goes along with that, like a step up in content. So that's my, uh, that's my, um, aspiration for this year. And I'm incredibly grateful for all the new faces in chat, all the new people. Uh, if you'd like to click subscribe, it's absolutely free. It costs you nothing and it helps the channel immensely. So thank you very much for all that. Um, I'm getting used to some of you people in chat now. I'm getting used to you, Audrey. <laughs> getting used to you, Audrey. <laughs> We're not doing a cooking show. <laughs> I, yeah. I feel like I'm, I feel like I might have to one day do a Harry Biker subscriber goal. Yeah, subscriber yeah. goal, Scott. We'll have a subscriber goal. Yeah. Well, the goal is um, that uh, we hit certain targets and. Uh, uh, we get. I'll tell you what. I'd, I'd like to get a sponsor as well. Our pro, our pro. If you're listening, mm. I'd like to get a sponsor. But yeah. Anyway, that's all. I, you know, that's all for the future. At the moment, we're just. Hit, I've recently hit my targets of this is going really well. That's, that's my targets of this is going really well. So thank you very much, everyone in chat. This is going really well. Um, I'm now going to move us on to relationship with a narcissist and the, again i was just saying to them like we're doing a good job of keeping a nice vibe going on so i don't want to make this get mm -hmm. too down and and like you know it mm -hmm. might touch on some subjects that people might find really um difficult as well so i don't know what the right um see i don't i know mind.org right maybe someone in chat can help me with this i know mind although you can't put <laughs> you can't put links but i know mind is good mm -hmm. for mental health in general and it's a really good resource yeah, they're, um, they're they're a mental health charity yeah 
Definitely. Yeah, and like if you go to mind.org, you know, then that's going to help. Like I, I also feel like if we cover the heavy stuff, I should give you resources to go on and seek help for heavy mm. stuff. But maybe I don't have all those resources at hand myself. But um, yeah, let's discuss what it's like being in a relationship with a narcissist. Then uh, my first couple, of, I've, I've got a few things I want to throw at you. In, um, in, in as much as we can. Yeah, in as much I, as we can. Then yeah. I don't have experience of this, so I don't feel too comfortable going into detail about what you could expect. Okay, fair enough. And also, this is one I was just saying while you're away. I think we could do a full episode on this and get other voices in. I think that might be the way yeah. to go for this. Yeah, yeah. But I'd like just to ask your opinion on some of these ideas. Like, mm -hmm. okay, first one, love bombing. The idea that a narcissist might shower you with affection and like, mm. like literally, as it sounds, love bombing. And um, it seems a bit weird to me because the idea of a narcissist is that they're the big special one and they're the, the great one and they're the important one. Mm. So in early stages of a relationship, they throw a lot of whether it's financial or attention or um, providing you with the responses you want, I'm going to be the man of your dreams and all this stuff. Like, you know, they throw a lot of that at people. Um, why is that, that it, and how does that work? It might seem counter, but uh, it, again, like I said, if the narcissist thinks that they can benefit from you, they might put in a lot of effort to, to you know, put that across and get you on side. So part of that involves love bombing to sort of like say hey i will be open and honest with you and i will treat you well and all that stuff and then once you're on side it stops they don't need to anymore they've got you until you decide right well they're not like they were they're not treating me nicely at all i'm done and they want to get you back love bombing again to get you back so it, it's if they feel like it's worth putting in the effort because what they get out of it is greater than the effort they're putting in they will do it once it becomes a matter of I'm putting in too much work and getting in nothing, it, you know, they'll, they'll stop. Or once they've got you on side as well, they'll stop then. But to, to, to sort of like keep you on side and to get you in, they will often shower you with that sort of thing. It might be affection, it might be presents, it might be taking you out, it might be money, it might be all sorts of stuff. But yeah, they will basically shower you with love bombing to get you on side. Once they've got you and they've got, they can take advantage of you and they benefit from having you, then it stops until. Mm you leave and then it starts again right so, yeah um, that sounds uh, that makes sense to me so um in the uh aspects of not you know, i think that's a uh, are you happy with that in chat like someone was asking about it to me um there was a question <laughs> so are you happy tom jones did sex bombs tom jones did sex bombs. um yeah as long as you're happy that we've covered that and it makes sense like, that doesn't really make sense to me you know they want what they want from you so they give you the love bombing then when they've got it they sort of switch it off mm. um the next one i've got because i want to move through these but give them due care and attention of course is gaslighting uh mm. can you please explain to me what gaslighting is and like why a narcissist is doing it and what's mm. what they're getting out of that Gas, gaslighting involves emotionally manipulating you into doubting your own memories of uh, your experiences and you know things that you think you remember a person saying and doing it's it, it's it's a way of controlling you because it it leaves you sort of like unable to to trust your own instinct and your own memory because it, it basically say like you know we if we have something for tea on wednesday and then on friday i say i would like this you remember you made fish and you can remember making chicken and you're like no i didn't make fish. no we made fish on friday believe me and that's like a, a minor thing but it's symptomatic of how that mechanic works if i can make you doubt your sanity I, you are easier to control so i'm going to invest energy in making you doubt when we went to this place i didn't say that at all you remember me saying what i never said that i would never have said that you know and again sometimes this is so weird sometimes like, we have arguments you know sometimes in relationships you'll have an argument where you you insist you can remember vividly saying this thing and they're insisting no they can't that's not necessarily gaslighting it's the, it's the amount of it that takes place within the context of your relationship that determines it you want some every now and then when you're having an argument over something that one of you's misremembered that's completely different from consistently applying psychological pressure in order to break you down to the point where you can't trust the things you remember because that way you are easier for me to control them so it's like making you lie to yourself mm. I, yeah. I find this one really difficult because if someone were to tell me no da, 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 I, I, I might say oh right yeah okay i made fish the other day and i might think to myself no fucking bollocks did i like oh in my head i would always be thinking no fucking bollocks did i but um the idea that it might um mm. i suppose over a period of time and with enough um yeah manipulation you might start to think I, maybe i did then i don't know like they seem pretty sure of it. Uh, yeah. Like, and it, it's insidious because... Eventually. It's like, yeah. 
Uh, the, all the other things, a lot of the other things, we're talking about the narcissist working on themselves. Uh, I think this, I'm showing you this, I'm doing this, I'm mm -hmm. pretending that. Um, but in this one, it's they're getting into your head and twisting what you think. Like that, yeah, this is where it becomes manipulation and it's yeah it's harmful because the narcissist being insecure and acting like they're billy big bollocks is fine they're not hurting anybody they're just being a dickhead but when mm. it comes to this sort of thing the, the 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 abuse of a partner is involved and it becomes quite a serious thing so yeah narcissist gaslight to control the partner and make them doubt their own recollection of things just just as a method of manipulation and control so, okay, um, yeah, we're going to move on to more deep manipulation. Snips also asked, mm -hmm. how do you know if they're wonderful or love bombing in the beginning? Like maybe they're just like a really nice person. Is love bombing, um, is it normal to love, like a normal loving people mm -hmm. love bombing in general? Or is there an extra level to narcissism of love bombing that is more obvious? It would, it would be the extent of it you would have to gauge whether you think that's appropriate. Like if I'm sort of like flirting with you and we meet for a few times and I'm just like, you know, I will occasionally message you, but I'm quite casual about it and we're both okay with that. That's fine. But if I'm going overboard, you might say that's too much. That's too, you know, if I send like flowers to your place of work, you might say that's a bit too much. But if I keep doing that and I'm not listening to you, then that might be a bit more of a problem. So I get, it's it's the amount of it. It's how long it lasts. It's how consistent it is. Because obviously, it, it, you want to put on a, a good impression when you when you first meeting someone and get to knowing them, and you want to be coming across as as loving and caring and and giving, and you know you want to be thought of as a nice person. So you might think, oh, this is a nice gesture that I'm doing. But if you then tell me actually it, that made me uncomfortable, don't send chocolates to my work. You know, okay, fair enough. I'll learn from that. Or if I continue, or I do something else instead. I think, okay, well, she didn't like that. How about if I if I send flowers, or if I pay for someone to write a message in the sky, or whatever, you know, mm. those sort of things. That's when it. That's when you have to determine whether I'm comfortable with that or I'm not. It's a problem. Okay. So again, it depends um, on whether the narcissist listens and how much of it, how long it lasts, and whether you know. Because you might be a nice person throughout the relationship and, 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 and keep doing it like that. And that's probably not love bombing. That's probably just being like a nice person throughout and occasionally buying gifts. But if I'm plowing it all on you in the first month or two and then it stops, that's, you know, and then we have an argument, we have a falling out, and then I start again with it. That's the worry. That's that's when you should be thinking, hang on a minute, something not right there. Um, Kirsten in chat also says gaslighting means it being impossible to please and taunting. Um, maybe like you know, uh, I I see what you mean there as well, Kirsten. Like um, things not. Yeah. Like, it must be very difficult to be with someone who is impossible to please and gives you shit about it as if it's your fault. Mm. Yeah. Um, yeah. So uh, we're moving on to these uh, ideas all about manipulation. This is on my piece of paper, actually. Manipulation. So um, gaslighting was a form of manipulation. The narcissist is a manipulator because we haven't focused on that too oh, much. Oh, very but... quickly. Very quickly. White Swan has just raised yes. Yeah, love bombing too much too soon. Wanting to marry in the first month. Wanting to move in with you the first week. Yeah, that's that's the sort of thing as well. It's not necessarily just buying things for you and trying to make you you know even like that it's 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 emotional things as well it's promising you everything yeah like we'll get married and have kids i'm already seeing a venue and you know i'm already like picking the kids names out and it's like we're, we're still sat in greg's having a pasty together you know that sort of thing is is a red flag i've so, got such lovely yeah. intelligent people in the chat thanks mm -hmm. um yeah so uh manipulation like narcissists manipulate let's just have a, a word yeah, on that so like it's just um, again if if they can do something to make you behave a certain way if it benefits them so again if me controlling you in a way manipulating you into not going out of a friday night with your mates because i don't like you seeing your mates because one of them sees me and sees the bullshit and is going to call you like you know take you to one side and be like look his behavior's not right here so if i manipulate you into not going out tonight let's stay in let's have a romantic night in i'll put you know i'll put some candles i'll, I'll cook us a nice dinner let's have a night in hmm. i might put in that work at the start to manipulate you into staying so by the time you've stopped seeing your mate i can stop putting in that work because you're not going out anymore. Your mates aren't there to tell you that I'm a I'm a dick and I'm a narcissist and I'm manip manipulating and abusing you. Because you're not going out anymore. Because I've stopped you seeing them. I've manipulated you over the months into not seeing them. So now you're mine. And I don't have to bother putting the effort in to keep you indoors away from your mates. I've already done it. So, you know. That's interesting, yeah. Mm. Um, in terms of being in a relationship, there's this aspect of being tracked as well. 
like that they've got mm -hmm. their uh we talked about it earlier with phones you know and like having like a timetable being tracked that um, it's, it's maybe wrapped up in jealousy but uh why and how do narcissists track their loved ones like I was, I was saying it like uh, laughing at it but it's not it's a serious thing but i find it to be quite a strange mm. concept now as a you know as a grown up you mean in like, terms of like 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 gps on your phone well or, like they what the narcissist those, yeah. will want to know where you are and what you're doing and like you know mm. in a relationship it seems that the narcissist um has some almost it's almost like they're a police warden and from what i've you know read on the internet and you know seen in in some videos and stuff it's almost like they want to track their their loved ones like you know is this a form of control and manipulation as well um yeah. I'm, I'm, what i'm trying to do is i'm trying to make sure that we cover a lot of different aspects mm. of um, red flags of narcissism in relationships because we might do a whole episode on this uh, like red mm. flags of narcissism but um, if anyone's listening and they are hearing any of these things <laughs> and seeing some of the things people write mm. in chat um then the next step was going to be like you know sort of like you know maybe get out of there and take a break from these people um it's probably good advice from me uh although i'm not you know able to give people huge advice in this aspect am i but mm. um but yeah so what do you think about you know tracking people and um keeping an eye on them from a narcissist put point of point of view Again, it's a control thing, and it's because you benefit the narcissist in some way, they don't want you going. So if you're a mate who will, you know, will fund my my being in a band or will is funding my business, I don't want you buggering off because then I lose your money. If you're a partner of mine and you're, you know, you're making me food and you're taking care of my house and you're doing, like, all these domestic things for me that I can't be asked doing, then I'm going to want to keep you on side as much as I can because I don't want you going and doing other things and then depriving me of that service, that benefit that I have from having you around. So I don't want the, you to go and hang out with your mates or be at work as long as you can because there, those are times when you're out of my control. Those are times when I'm not there to make sure you're behaving a certain way, you're doing the things I need you to be doing. So... If you want to go out with your friends and I want to keep you in, it's because I don't want you hanging out with your friends. You benefit me. And when you go out with your friends, I lose that benefit for the time being. So the risk there is then I might lose that benefit forever. And I don't want to do that because you're benefiting me. You and being here benefits me. So I'm going to try and do what I can to keep you here. It's also so. coming up in chat about cyber stalking and hacking Facebook and yeah, stuff yeah. like that. Um, is that maybe a sense of entitlement there? Like It seems like a really strange thing to do. So... Um, it's mm. a narcissistic thing to believe that you should have access to somebody else's private affairs. Yeah, but again, it's you sort of rules for me, not uh, rules for thee, not for me, in it. It's like I, mm. I want to know where you are at all times because I want to make sure that you're not somewhere I disapprove of, like down the pub with your mates. But if I want to go out and you try to stop me, how fucking dare you? I deserve to be able to see my friends. I work hard all week and I deserve this Friday night off at the pub with my mate, you know. So, again, it's it, there's a, a lot of hypocrisy tied up in it because your narcissist is only doing what they want to make you believe what they want you to believe. And then once you do, they're done. They're fine. They've, they've, they've won it. They've got you here in your in, in the house playing skyrim not going out not socializing not meeting other people you know who might take me away from you yeah you who made that take joke you away from me joke about dark this this fellow dark side feel his mm. wife is at home playing skyrim but for others it's a bit more serious and it gets a bit more dark and i don't really want to turn this episode yeah, yeah. into that darkness necessarily we're going to finish on the personality test for a bit of fun um but mm. uh i do want to like you know have a word there to say like if you're in a situation like that if you're listening to this um probably like get out have a break even if you know whatever comes next just get out have a break is probably a good a good piece of advice from me i think um it might not be easy to take a break from a narcissist they probably get angry i guess um yeah but, yeah they will but they, they, i get that you'd be like i mean i, I can't i can't i've not been in a relationship with the narcissist i don't know mm. what it would be like to deal with the fallout from that so just what we know about narcissists it's they, they are going to be mad they don't want you being independent because that means you're not there benefiting them you're, yeah you know. and violence is coming like violence and chat and stuff mm. like, it, it, like obviously we're not doing a specific episode like that but it is part of this mm. issue and i'd just say like you know you have to get away from these people i think that's the, the best advice mm. I, i'm not again i'm not the expert and i've i have recently talked to somebody you know people who are in chat will know that recently with this paul ansel stuff um we got talking to this like on which episode was it now that i did uh we, 
we got um, no we did we took it to, I think it was uh, one of these call-ins um, I was on a uh, okay get my words out I was on a twit tweet twitch twi- oh the twitter, twitter space the twitter twi- space thing yeah, yeah twitter, twitter space thing. and some people in that twitter space had experience of domestic violence and they were able to talk from their experience so i recorded that little snippet and broadcast it as part of that conversation there so um like we take it seriously and i will listen to other people's voices ahead of my own on that one uh but yeah, like that's certainly like a worrying issue. So, from what I learned from them, is it's probably best best to seek help from elsewhere and get out of those situations if someone is turning violent and controlling. Um, this will lead us on to our final question here from me to you, and then we can do the quiz. Is can you change a narcissist? Uh, I've heard that they get worse with therapy, and that it's that, that they don't change. Is that true? Therapy has a very low success rate with narcissists. Yeah. Um, a lot of it is because, like we've said, there's there's no sort of like genuineness to the the things expressed in therapy. They, they they're doing it because they know this is what I'm expected to say and do in therapy. They're not actually genuinely doing it. I could tell you that I've got, I've given up smoking. I've given I don't smoke anymore. But when these streams are off, you don't know that I'm not in my garden having a fag. You don't know that I'm not still smoking. Mm. So, it, it, you know, that sort of thing applies. Therapy is very, very difficult to work with. It's not impossible. Narcissists can. But your first part is you have they have to be able to recognize that they have the problem. The second part is then they have to be able to see that it's become a problem to the point where they want to change. So not only do they have to recognize there's a problem, they have to want to change it. And then you can start therapy. But getting a narcissist to that point is incredibly difficult because it involves recognizing that there's a problem and narcissists just can't you just know not to that extent where i need therapy so therapy is very very difficult with narcissists with other personalities disorders borderline and and um with emotional affective disorders as well um things like depression and bipolar disorder they can be managed with therapy from in personal opinion they're better managed with a combination of therapy and uh chemotherapy chemotherapeutic methods basically medication and therapy combined to have your best chance of success but personality disorders like narcissism it's it's much more difficult and and especially with narcissism because of the inherent part of being unable to recognize that there is a problem and wanting to change it genuinely it's difficult you could you could you could lead a narcissist to therapy but you couldn't make them engage with the process Hmm. they've got to want it in their heart they've got to think that they're being destroyed by their own narcissism and they've got to recognize that it is narcissism got to in some way break that mirror Um, Mm. yeah because otherwise they're just going to do what they know they're supposed to do to go through the course and then bugger off if Mm. they don't drop out part way through assuming that their uh, treatment and, and their presence on a course is actually mandated and not voluntary if they have to be there, they'll just do what they can to get through the course. And Sorry, this is... Bugger off once it's done. Sorry, Gainer, yeah. if this is triggering you. Yeah, I'm trying to not make it too mm-hmm. dark. We're going to get onto the fun bit of doing the personality test quiz. Um, in just a minute. I'm really sorry. Um, it's a very difficult thing to talk yeah. about. Um, there is one other question that came up in chat that I do want to cover before we do that. Is parenthood and narcissism? Maybe as a quick fire one. Um, mm. You know, no. I, 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 from everything I've just learned about narcissism, I don't think it's going to be very easy to deal with them as a parent-child relationship. Um, oh, I thought you meant like whether your narcissist is like born or made, whether it's an inherited. Oh, we were going to we were going to we were going to talk about that as well. Yeah, actually, I was I was just I, there was a question in chat about whether you as know, parenting, yeah, narcissistic parents, but. Um, again like like we said earlier with with like diagnosing kids because children are still developing their personality and their their uh, cognitive processes their 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 actual physical brain is still developing so you know they're still learning and socializing so you can't so like the, you can't say these um these things are diagnosable and consistent until they've been until they reach a certain age you know but signs do show up in childhood in in most personality disorders the the signs are there in childhood there are some signs but again you need to wait until your child has actually finished growing up because plenty of children show signs of stuff like like narcissism or like be, having unrealistic expectations of relationship because they don't know better they're learning this is the first time they're literally encountering these things so i mean if your parent was a narcissist you find, then you're mm. going to find it very difficult to um 
Like they're always going to be right. You're always going to be wrong. They're always going. Yeah. Like, they, they get to wield this power that they have this expectation of themselves as a great parent doing the right things. Oh, um, narcissists, narcissists can fuck up a child. They yeah. really can. There's a whole subreddit called "Raised by Narcissists," where people who've like re realized as adults, shit, my parent was mental. You know, these um, things were not normal. The ways they behave were not normal. Sorry, I don't mean to sort of maybe like we should maybe the, you know the experiences what? of people yeah. who have narcissists as parents. But maybe this this is... feels like it's a bit of a bigger conversation than just like one question. So I might save this for yeah. a bigger conversation. Um, but I would also <laughs> say that uh, someone who lives in that environment could learn to um, navigate the. Uh, personality of the narcissist like uh, whilst it might as you said fuck up children it might also give them a, a more set of astute tools to deal with certain personality mm. types as well like children are quite good at um like i say like you know like picking up the toolkit to navigate these situations uh, as well mm. so it might it might lead to some other like sort of superhuman intuition that that these people have through going through these, these processes maybe um mm. Yeah. But then you you also have to consider how uh, attachment styles in parenting affect the child, and so if your narcissist isn't genuine with their emotions, the child's going to struggle to attach emotionally to that parent, and you know have a fulfilling relationship with them. So mm. yeah, it gets very difficult. Uh, yeah, and uh, so yeah, genetically, um, <clears throat> most personality disorders do have some genetic component, but it's what okay what also is... dependent. I'm careful not to say anyone in chat is like a nutter because mm. they had a difficult childhood or a difficult parent. Like I think that like everyone in our chat seems, including you, Audrey, and your cucumbers, seems like quite a reasonable, <laughs> like interesting chuffer, and they've all got good positive things to say. So uh, um, I'm as a, yeah, I don't think we. I'm careful not to write off children who have been fucked up by narcissists, um, yeah. and at the same time to sort of show sympathy and empathy for that. Um, but I don't. I, I feel like we can't get so deep into it because it feels like quite a big one there so maybe we do like it's, a, yeah, yeah. a follow-up on narcissism with some of these deeper issues and bigger issues mm -hmm. as well um are you happy with that so far are yeah you, you're happy yeah? just wonder very quickly then the genetic bit yeah yeah oh, okay nature versus yeah, yeah, yeah. nurture Before, nature versus we'll nurture. The there's, yeah. there's a genetic component to all personality disorders but that doesn't necessarily mean that you will grow to be full-blown that personality disorder once you're out of the womb and into the environment the environment starts taking more of an effect and the older you grow the less impact genetics has and the more impact your environment has you can be born with narcissistic tendencies but if you better look if you learn to socialize them if you're in the right way if you're in the appropriate setting and you can throughout childhood and school and, and adolescence and college and all that if you learn along the way you might be able to keep it under control it might not be an issue for you you might learn to actually feel empathy and and, and or to be vulnerable with people you might learn that it's okay to let people in sometimes and to be open and honest with people so you might actually overcome that but again it, it doesn't necessarily mean that you're going to be a narcissist if you've got the genetic disposition for it Right, so you're saying there just, could be the seed of narcissism maybe mm. just born into someone, but then they can learn to be a good chuffer. They don't have to go down that road of narcissism. Mm. So therefore, it would yeah. it would seem that it's not predestined. And therefore, it would seem the other way is that some people in some way learn to become a narcissist. Or yeah, you can, you can learn to... to um... What's the word? You, you can be taught it. You can learn to sort of like fake it to get along. You can learn to be guided by your emotions. You could be insecure enough that you do end up developing that sort of personality because those are the defenses that work. It's easy to keep the people at a distance so you appear cold and, and detached. And you know, you, you can learn those manipulation skills as well. You, but again, if you're genetically predisposed for it and you're in the right environment, you'll end up that way because there, there there is a genetic component i was shocked as well to discover that samantha but there are genetic components to personality disorders because these are things that come from how the brain develops and how the brain develops is ruled by genetics so as as much as your environment and your diet and your well-being your upbringing can can affect that so too can your genetics so there's a genetic component to personality that we can't quite untangle yet it's not to say that we found like you know we've been through the human genome it's like there, there's the narcissism gene mm. there let's treat it but how you handle these things is determined by how your brain is structured and formed and how you learn from society so it's both 
Okay. Um, Samantha, Samantha is quite adamant in chat here that you can't be born with it. Um, I see what your point is there, Samantha. I don't think Steve is saying that you're born a narcissist. I think the idea is that um, in some way, and we don't know exactly what way, but in some way some people can be born with some tent. Like it can be, the seed can be within you, but you don't have to become a narcissist. Yeah. Can I plug the other show? Because <laughs> yeah. um, when we had Baxter Zevchenko on, the episode mm. is called The Recluse of Renton, I think. Because Baxter did a very long video called Reclusive in Renton about Dark Side Phil, and we talked about narcissism in that. And we talked sp specifically about this, whether a narcissist is born or made. So, you know, that might be worth a look yeah. at. Because we um, do and... move. There's a big chunk of it that is just narcissism, it's not necessarily Phil. It's just um, me and Samantha Baxter. asks like schizophrenia. Um, I would say uh, Steve is a forensic psychologist. That's who he is. He's my co-host with us. And uh, if we disagree on some aspects of science, that's okay because I believe that we've got more study to do and you know facts mm -hmm. to find out. Um, yeah. It's okay to have differences of opinion. But yeah, um, uh, is it like schizophrenia that you can be born with um, uh, predisp a predisposition <laughs> to it? Yeah, yeah, all personality disorders because again they're all based on something going wrong in in how you handle things because of brain is developed so you, your type a disorders are you not being able to sort of like work with reality and, and and understand reality properly your type c disorders are you not being able to handle fear or anxiety when it comes to like certain actions or outcomes you might expect the worst your type b you can't handle these emotional things because your brain is just it's developed and wired differently so when somebody acts a certain way you can't handle the emotions that are coming from them or the emotions that they're inspiring in you so you react differently and yeah the genetic component is there you can be predisposed for it but like i said once you're out of the womb the environment starts taking over and so slowly that balance shifts and over time you know it becomes Again, me and we talk for hours. Me and Baxter talk for hours about this. It's a, it's a contentious thing because ultimately you can't say one or the other because mm. there's always an argument. It's really funny that um, you're referencing this that being said podcast for an intellectual mm. discussion on the nature of narcissism. <laughs> That's, what know, come it, I, That's what we've come I to. That's what he's come to. I genuinely really enjoyed that show but because that, that I really get to go yeah. deep into it like that with Baxter. Yeah. So. Maybe we'll get him on here yeah. and discuss narcissism in this context. That would with be him, good. You know. He would be a great... um, He's another... Uh, you, yeah. I don't know what Nat Baxter is, actually. You tell me if you know what he is, but um, he's another voice. I'll say that, yeah. Do you know mm. if he's, he's qualified yeah, yeah. in some way? Uh, he's done a lot of work. I don't know about his qualifications, but... Okay. The, the um, reclusive in Renton alone stands as testament to like the yeah. research he's put in, and then you hear him talking, he knows his shit. So. And does Paul Ansel tick the boxes? Revenant, I would ask you to uh, review our conversation and tick your boxes as appropriate. Yes, yeah, yes, he does, yes. <laughs> right, so, um, um, Queen of Swords, I've noticed a connection between narcissism and hoarding. Well, I, I've noticed that as well, and I don't quite know. I feel like it might be related to anxiety over loss, but I, I don't know, because anxiety over losing things is, is key to hoarding disorder, which I've spoken a lot about in previous videos. Um, but yeah, I, I, I would have to look more into that. But mm. yeah, there is there is a link. So mm. now listen, I've promised everyone this personality test. You can't see it on your oh, screen, yeah, yeah, yeah. but uh, it's between agree and disagree. Uh, we could probably, like I keep saying, we could do another show on this. This could be a whole show in itself, but we'll try and do it reasonably quick now because we're up to the three hour mark and our shows in on Thus, uh, we tend to aim for about three hours for a Thus podcast. Mm. So we're okay to go over a little bit, uh, but we're going right. to go through this because okay, we've save, promised it. Yeah. I'll save shitting on it for another day. Let's just, let's, let's go through it like a narcissist. Okay. okay. Um, so question one, you regularly make new friends, agree or disagree? You regularly Ooh, yeah. make new friends. Are we using Phil as an example? Uh, we can use any. Well, you can discuss Phil if it's you want. Like, yes, because, I mean, we'll, we'll, we'll probably just assist. try and just do this reasonably quickly now. I'm, I'm going to agree. No, yes. No. You're going to say no. I'm you don't make you. new friends. I would say that, like, if I'm a narcissist, right? I'm from everything He's I've heard today. Like, yeah. I'm going around and everyone thinks I'm fucking brilliant. And like, do I? Oh, wait, wait. I've got a question. Do I answer this? Do I answer Not this everyone. as the um, as the narcissist reflective self? Like, I'm going to answer. This is a, okay, this is a, a meta question, right? Am I answering yeah. this about the true core of myself as a narcissist, what I really think about myself? Or, or, or am I answering it what self. people would expect me to say? Mm. I'm answering <laughs> it what people would expect me to say. Loads of people love me. I make friends all the time. I'm a narcissist. Then go with yeah. 
Yeah, okay. Yeah. You're what would you, what, give me your uh, uh, no, argument for no. Again, you find it difficult to maintain social relationships in the first place. So it's oh yeah, and I uh, you, friends. Yeah, because everyone's you, a cunt. You're abrasive. Yeah, yeah. You're difficult to approach. You're difficult to get. They're all crazy. You know? So yeah. I don't want to go out and meet your friends. No. No. Yeah. yeah. I'd rather yeah, stay you in my small group. Yeah. Where everybody thinks I'm great. You know, I'd rather hang with the flying monkeys than I would go out and meet new people. So. Mm. What do you think in chat? In chat, you regularly, does the narcissist regularly make new friends? Yes or no? Agree or disagree? You tell me in chat from everything we've learned. And then uh, while they're answering that in chat, you tell me what you think Phil would answer. <laughs> I think he'd yeah, count I think the door dash, man. Yeah, but he can't. Yeah. He just got, Phil is a definite no there. Uh, Phil, I think Phil would say, I'm always meeting new friends in chat. There's always someone new in my yes. chat. Yes, he would. Yes, yeah. something like that, yeah. Yeah. We're getting some disagrees, so yeah, we some no's and yeses in chat. We're getting an equal balance in chat. So oh, yes. I should maybe put it in the middle. Your light's gone off. Oh, that's, that's yeah, the three hour mark. Off, you're all right in the, you're <laughs> fine in the dark. If you want to fix it, you can, but you're fine in the dark. The um, out. We're getting more yeses or no's in chat here. I'm going to put, I think it's going to be strong either way. You're getting a lot of no's as well as yeses. This is quite tough for me to decide, getting a lot of no's as, as well as I am in yeses. Does a, does a narcissist believe they regularly make new friends? They're not real friends. They're all saying no. There's a lot of no's. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to have to accept that there's more no's than yeses now, I think, no. that they're coming through. Okay. There are more no's than yeses. I'm going to put okay, not strongly ahead. disagree, because I still think there's a part of them that might think they're, they're a nice chuffer. Um, super chat from Vix Logic is a man who enjoys portraying himself as a woman. There we go. <laughs> Fucking hell. <laughs> Fucking hell. <laughs> no. Uh, no. misogynistic or a narcissist Steve saying no to your question no. that is an entire different kettle of fish my lady so uh, we might have to investigate that one in an entirely different episode but interesting question you know I'm not going to um, begrudge your questions here that's fine you just give it a straight no did you Steve, Steve the question yeah because you, you, you could do again. that with neither, without me neither no misogyny involved or no sort of like inflated sense of worth you know no <laughs> Okay. Um, <laughs> Pam sent me a, a coffee and uh, soya chocolate milk is on Pam. <laughs> thank you very much. Hopefully one day it'll be on the damn company that will sponsor me to drink their stuff. But <laughs> thank you very much, Pam. Um, right, so so we're yeah, going with no. We're going with no. We're going, we've gone with disagree, but not entirely strongly. Not the worst one. Just the one back from it. Because I'm still saying some people said yes and I felt yes. And mm -hmm. I, I think they might still they make some new friends, but maybe not so regularly. Maybe we'll say yeah, that. Fair. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Okay, next question. You spend a lot of your free time exploring various random topics that pique your interest. You do what? You spend a lot of your free time exploring various random topics that pique your interest. So like going on YouTube and looking at different stuff then, or um, tr what did he say? What did Phil call it? Going out uh, oh, oh, there is that, yeah. I thought I was going to say um, uh, scouring Twitter. <laughs> <laughs> Scouring Twitter. Scouring what, Twitter yeah. what do you think in chat? Does the narcissist think that they answer, whether they do or not, or what, what it's their answer I'm interested in? Do they answer, mm -hmm. agree or disagree to this? Does the narcissist agree or disagree with this? Um, I th think they would disagree because, again, new things are scary. Trying new things are scary. The unknown is terrifying. The, the, the comfort and safety of the known bubble is more reassuring. So I'd say no. No, yeah. Um, on the other side, though, right? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to argue devil's advocate for whatever you say now. Then I think it's a good format. Um, on the other mm -hmm. side, uh, they might think that they're quite worldly wise and like, oh, I go to the Chinese and the Indian, mate. So I'm quite, <laughs> you know, I'm, quite, I'm always exploring various. The other day, I had no, like, like DoorDash. The, from yeah, I, I, I had the uh, Hawaiian barbecue off the DoorDash. Never even eaten it before. Always exploring things. Um, the, the other day, uh, and the random topics, it, but also, I could also see where you might say, no, I don't need to see that bullshit. Like, I know what's good on, and I know what I want to watch. I don't have to explore. Yeah. No, I don't need to go and watch fucking this other thing at the cinema. I'm going for what I like every time. Bang, bang, bang. Give me my pie and chips again. Thank you. Um, I... Yeah, I see. I see both there. Like maybe they're very strong in their mindset of like their routine and what they like doing. Yeah. Um, in chat, no. in chat, you were like disagree, weren't you? In chat, there's a lot disagree. of no's. There was a lot. Of, you, yeah, but you were saying no, so you're going to say there's a lot of no's. Yeah, I'm not biased. <laughs> I'm open and upfront about it. <laughs> 
Uh, so we're going to say disagree on that then. Strong. Do you want strong on chat? How strong do you want your coffee here? Super strong or not quite disagree? You tell me. Full disagree in chat or not quite disagree? Come on. This is like, I'm Ken, what's his name on the telly? And you're the people in the audience. I'm Bruce Forsyth. Higher or lower than a, di higher or lower than a, whatever that is, a seven. Higher or lower than a seven. Do you say higher or lower than a seven? You, you strongly disagree. Better, better than being Barrymore. It's the top, the middle, or the bottom. <laughs> they want us to do an episode on Barrymore. Um, not, don't they don't know? Right, fuck it. Disagree. There you go. Um, seeing other people, you, you strongly disagree. Come on, you need to type it in chat if you want it to be heard. Now, seeing other people cry can easily make you feel like you want to cry too. Seeing other people cry can easily make you feel like you want to cry too. What do you think mm. about that one? Again, it's the, your empathy thing. Mm. Yeah. Like if you want to down. answer as a narcissist trying to be portrayed as normal, you would say yes, because you expect, yeah. you, you recognise that that's a, 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 a social prompt to show empathy. But whether you're really feeling it, is it really making you want to cry? Or are you just acting like it does because you see that this is a point where you should be showing empathy? So again, I'm going to go with no. I'm going to go with disagree. Disagree. Oh, man, I, I feel I, like I, strongly disagree again. Yeah. But I don't want to all the strongly disagree so yeah they fake it though so they might say oh yeah, on the, I would on the personality strongly disagree test. on this one because it's empathy it's empathy and it's unwillingness to feel so i, I agree that they don't disagree. feel it i agree the answer is they disagree but i do mm. when they fill this in do they just say agree because they think that's what everyone says and that's a good chuffer yeah i think they do i had this sort of like meta mental breakdown yeah bit when i when i did mine about filling narcissism as well because i was like part way through and i was like hang on a minute how am i answering um, these and also pam has just and bought you a lucas aid water, <gasps> pam has just oh, bought you a lucas aid three, three pound in the coffee tin for for your lucas aid there so i'll thank give you. you that extra I, I i'm quite happy to say on the internet that steve is like a um i think his time is valuable so oh, i pay him oh. So like he's like uh you know he's a Shut up, Scott. <laughs> valued member of this <laughs> of this stream. But I uh, yeah, you can also give me extra money so that I can pay him. <laughs> That'd be nice as well. So thank you. Um, but like yeah. Uh, but I mean more who can say the robo speed Robo speed. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah, so what are we answering then? To see does do other people make That's you true. want to cry, yes or no? What are you saying in chat? Are you saying they answer yes or no? You're a, a narcissist taking the test. Do you betray yourself and say disagree knowing that you feel nothing or do you say agree and say like well they you know of course i'm a good person i press agree like what what do you press here are you okay, pressing disagree it, they're saying disagree I, I in chat disagree right. i suppose it depends on whether you want uh, to appear like a narcissist thinks they should appear or whether you want to appear as how a narcissist should appear you know, because like you said, a narcissist is going to be seeing this thing and thinking, right, I'm supposed to answer yes here, you know, but we know that's not true of how I they think, genuinely feel. So. I think they want to make, when they do this test, right, a narcissist sits down to do the test and wants the best outcome. And like you say to them, well, what's the best outcome? They don't, there is no best outcome. It's just different outcomes, isn't it? It's like who you are inside. And so for the first couple of questions, make new friends, exploring topics, they're like, well, these are benign, these questions. doesn't really matter either way. I'll answer what I think. And then with this one, they know that it, you've got to cry. You're supposed to cry. Mm -hmm. They know you're supposed to. It. Audrey, you've made me want chippy and it's going to be closed by the time we finish. <laughs> Audrey won't stop going on about food. Um, I, I don't mind it, Audrey. It's not It's not awful what you're saying, but it is, <laughs> it, like, it is your own style there. So, you know, if you're happy, you're happy. Um, so the true nature, and no, everyone in chat is having saying no. We're not faking empathy, we're putting disagree, okay? We're having it your way, like at BK. Except if it's not quite your way, you might talk about it for the next 25 years and immortalize it in a video and, and keep like shortcuts in your video of your <laughs> picture on your obs yeah. settings so you call it if, open and if you're a narcissist and they give you too much sauce on your chicken sandwich you might be tempted to take a photograph on your phone yeah that <laughs> may turn into a big thing um, you often make a backup plan for a backup plan you do what now this is not me so i don't know what the right answer is here but i'll tell you no, honestly yeah, no, this no, is no. not because today we didn't have a backup plan for fucking how the computer doesn't work did we? <laughs> <laughs> no we didn't know but you often make a backup plan for a backup plan. Oh, I don't know, actually, because like your narcissist has probably got several methods of manipulation and control. So if one doesn't work, they just switch to another. You mm. know, if if one thing keeps you in, if one thing doesn't keep you in the house, I might try a different tack. If me sort of like going, no, I don't want you to go out. Let's stay in and have a romantic night in doesn't work. I might lie on the, oh, actually, I'm really ill and I don't feel up for it. 
sort of thing instead. So a narcissist might have several other ways of controlling. I don't know, actually. We've got a lot of yeses in chat here. Um, one no says they think that uh, Solar Ray lost since they're more reckless. True. Um, but a lot of people are saying, yes, they need structure. True. Um, that's, some... that's a level of planning, though. That, that does yeah. involve a level of planning. That, like narcissists tend to be a bit more impulse. No. <laughs> A bit more emotionally impulsive, not necessarily behaviorally to the point. I just where don't even. Like, oh I yeah, can't I'll even... go jump into something. No, there's nothing. My problem like with that, this but... one is I can't fathom in my head what a backup plan for a backup plan is. Like it's like having more than one. Like what well, I don't even because I maybe because I don't have backup plans in general. Like that's not. I'm a bit more wouldn't have the back. Like I'm trying to think of some so, 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 like okay so. Um, I, well, okay, well, I think of it like Phil, Dark Side Phil, maybe. Like, he's got his tips, but he's also got his super chats, and he's also got his thing. And if that goes down, he's got somewhere else he can stream. And, you know, he's thinking ahead to things going wrong, and he's got plans if they're going wrong. See, and like, like you said, yeah, go ahead. Yeah. Like, like for me, it's like, should we, should we go out for a coffee? And then if that don't work, let's just go out for a drink. Uh, and if that don't work, let's go out to grab something to eat instead. That's like a backup of a backup. Well, <laughs> but that's if we can't like... go to this, if we can't get in this restaurant, we'll go around the corner. But like, yeah, yeah. you know, and if that doesn't work, then we've got something. And if that doesn't work, like, it seems yeah. like there's a limit to how far I would ever think of plan. Like, because if that doesn't work and that doesn't work, isn't a world I live in? Because it's going to fucking work, isn't it? Like, and if it doesn't, I'm surprised by that. Um, but in 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 chat here, we've got a lot of this idea about it being a tactical game, and like, there's a you know a bit of planning and, and stuff like that going on so we're going to say yes to this then yeah agree agree but not strongly yeah, agree but is not that strongly. the scale we're working on by the way agree to disagree yeah right okay agree and disagree gives you a lot of green it's a bit of a funny actually, on like this as well that's actually cool. that's there's... like a scale right it's one of them scale i didn't learn that i didn't put it in my brain um <laughs> you said it i just let it go over my head <laughs> i've had to do it in statistical analysis what's it it's called again uh like a scale like, like a, scale. a L I K E R T, if I remember correctly. Oh, like a, like. No, it's like a, it's like a scale. Um, mm. So <laughs> it's actually now I'm looking at it. They've strongly negativized. Like agree is green. Oh, lovely. Agree, nice and green. Disagree. Oh, angry purple bruise. Disagree. Oh, uh, lovely green. Agree. Look, angry bruise. Disagree. They've they've made that so to put you off. Disagree, haven't they? <laughs> You usually stay calm, even it's, under a lot of it's, pressure. It's 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 a scale. It's how we measure stuff. Is in psychology, yeah. it's a scale. You know, but it seems a bit like unfair, doesn't it? That so. one's green and one's horrible. Like if, if if it was lovely green on both ends, and it was just like A or B, that would seem like a fair choice. But it seems like they've weighted mm. it towards. I would assume that pressing green is better. Well, right. typically we have that association of green being accept, uh, agree or go or yes or positive, and red being no stop warning caution. So, yeah. you know. That's like yeah. our Western thing, so, yeah. They're chuffers on the personality test there. They're, they're cheating. They want us all to agree. They want us all to agree. Um, look, anyway, you usually stay calm, even under a lot of pressure. Is that a narcissist? I suppose this... Mm, I'm going to say again, they would say it yes. It probably depends right? on your narcissist. Yeah, okay, right, I'll, I'll line up what I think, because I've got this one in my head. I think they say yes. Oh, uh, pressure, bring it on. I'm the big chuffer. I can handle all the mm -hmm. pressure. But when they're actually under the pressure, they're fucking breaking left, right, and center and going, oh, I'm under so much stress. Oh, it's your fault. It's your fault. They they think they're staying calm under pressure, but actually all they're doing is appropriating blame to everyone else. And like they're the one on Kitchen Nightmares whose restaurant is going under because they're just fucking <laughs> shouting at everyone and they can't take it on board. Like, yeah. like you ask them how but they're they've doing. They've also... They've also fucked with the, the menu and they're the ones who are like, no, you should be cooking it like this. Yes, and, yeah, absolutely, yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah. Uh, and then, But then you ask them how they're doing and they're like, yeah, I stay calm under pressure. I'm like a rock. My food's 10 yeah. out of 10, yeah. Yes, my food is 10 <laughs> out of 10, yeah. yeah. So I'm going to go yes with that. And what do you think in, in chat? You've got a lot of yeses here. They crack in chat. They've said, yeah, they're not calm, no. They're yeah. not calm. But whether they say they're calm is a different story. Because um, who's going to admit they'd lost control? Had a go, had a rage. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Uh, in chat there, um, asking about specific places, I would just caution people to not say exactly where they live on the internet, on chat, but it's nice to talk in generalities about time. And I, I tell you what I do love, if you're in chat now and you want to bang out your flags and you know shout your representations, I do love it when we do that thing where everyone says where they're from, because we get people from all over the world. Like We had Serbia in the chat the other day. We had all sorts. So if you want to do your flags and chat like that, um, but I just caution people against like talking too specifically about their places of where they are. 
um, on Tinternet. So staying calm, we're going to say they say agree. They say agree. Mm. Yeah. Um, final one. At social events, you rarely try to introduce yourself to new people and you mostly talk to the ones you already know. You mostly talk to people you already know. You, you don't... Oh, yeah. You don't try again, and introduce not, yourself. Your yeah, narcissist is a bit cautious. Maybe, I don't know, though, because some narcissists are well-socialized enough where they can be the center of attention and can sort of thrive in that role because that's what they want. They want all eyes on them. They want to be the center of the world. And so if mm. they are, like, this, like, outgoing and loud sort of personality at a party where everyone's, like, chilling and hanging with them and talking to them and listening to them talk, you know, it's like... Some narcissists will thrive in that if they're socialized well enough. But, you know, I think most narcissists fear... Because, again, if you're meeting someone new, you're letting someone new in, there's potential risk there. You don't know that person. You don't know how well they're going to be able to see through your bullshit. So uh, I would I would say, oh, I don't know. See, I would have been neutral on this one. Hmm. I would have been right in see, the middle. What I would have probably said here is that I, as a narcissist, uh, lots of people want to talk to me. Like the, I, 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 of course, I'm always talking to people because they're always interested in me. And like me personally, I like to stick with my own little group. You know, right. my VIP yeah. clique. You argue, right? Yeah, right. You argue as how the narcissist would answer, and I'll argue as how the narcissist should really answer. So you know. Okay. Yeah. Well, you know, like, yeah, if you see if you see it differently, then obviously you know, correct me. But yeah, um, so that's yeah. where I'd say that. Yeah. So I, I would say agree that I would. Um, I would. I'm not. I'm not really group. trying to introduce myself to other people. I mainly talk to my, my close friends, my special friends. Hmm. Yeah, I would Yeah, I, I would say that they would keep that social circle small as well because it reduces the risk of somebody new coming in and finding something out. All right, we're only 10% yeah. through, so we're going to have to start whipping through. Oh, fucking hell. Fuck. Fuck, yeah. We are going to have to whip through these a little bit quicker. Like It's only a little quiz, right. but I didn't realise that. I thought that was the whole quiz, that page. Sorry. Um, you prefer to completely finish... <laughs> Honestly, I'm an idiot. Um, you prefer to completely finish one project. I think we should finish it, though, yeah? Are you all right with finishing it, Steve? Like, if you... Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, but we know to we push it. We promised people. We can't yeah. clickbait. Exactly, yeah, we promised. So, um, we've got to push it as well. We can't linger over these answers too long. You prefer mm. to completely finish one project before starting another. Okay, me, the narcissist, I prefer to finish one project before starting another. Uh, yeah, I do. I like to get things done. I'm a, I'm a bit of a get-things-doer. Yeah. Yeah, until it's yeah, because obviously you are willing to put effort into a project because you think it's going to benefit you ultimately. So, yeah, you would only you would only abandon something. See, I, I, although again, look how quickly Phil's given up channels. This is no, my new way. This is my new way of doing it. Forward. The reality, yeah, you give up a lot of stuff. Yeah. yeah, yeah. The reality yeah. is you fuck up all the time and not do it, but they yeah. don't count. So you answer. Actual... You answer. I'll I'll provide the counter. So, yeah, yeah. So on. the answer is I agree, but the truth is I fuck up stuff all the time and leave it half done. <clears throat> yeah, yeah. You are very sentimental. <laughs> oh, I am. I'm such a lovely person. You <laughs> <laughs> know, not really. Not really, yeah. But that's okay. That that one's quick, isn't it? You are sentimental. Narcissist says yes. The truth is no. He's drinking Benelin. He's drinking Benelin. He's on the he's on the sizzup. He's on the sizzup. Are you on the sizzup? Are you on the sizzup? Um, sentimental. They're saying no in chat. They're saying no. The bake off has really gone downhill. That's your best one yet, yeah, Audrey. <laughs> <laughs> um, you like organising tools. Like schedules and lists. Ooh. Ooh. Yes, I like that. The yeah. Nicest, yeah. Big fan of that. Elements of control involved in that one. Yeah. Yeah. Hello, Indrid. Hello, Indrid. Special. Oh, it's Indrid. Hello. Super, a super, a super detracted in my chatter. Indrid. Oh, Indrid's in the chat. Hello. I want to do cheeseburger. 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 Burger. Okay. I've done, I've done that now. Um, <laughs> even a small... These are these are narcissist questions. I'm the real narcissist. I'm not real. I'm answering for the narcissist. And Steve is the truth. And he's telling us what the truth is. Even a small mistake can cause you to doubt your overall abilities and knowledge. Wait, we just didn't linger on that enough. Schedules and lists for, for mm. Phil. Phil the narcissist. <laughs> I like I making schedules. Yeah. I can appear busy as well. I can appear <laughs> like I'm a busy person. I'm an adult. I've got responsibilities and a job and all these roles. Look at my timetable. <laughs> I have to inform everyone of the schedule. <coughs> Phil loves the, the lists. 
It's like he's got a, a thing for them. It's like they uh, list feel, list hard, list equal hard. Um, even a small mistake can cause you to doubt your overall abilities and knowledge. For a narcissist, no, I don't make small mistakes. So no, fuck that. Uh, what's the truth of the matter? Do you think? I'm, I'm, I'm happy with my narcissist answer. Yeah, if you tell yeah, me in yeah, chat if you yeah. want to change it, but narcissist says no, no small mistakes for me. The truth of the matter is, the moment something goes outside of your control, which can happen when you've when you make a mistake, you get a result that you were that you weren't expecting or prepared for. You could totally freak out. It could be an incredibly scary and anxious thing. So the reality is, no m mistakes and things not going to plan. It's terrifying because it involves dealing with the unknown and improvising, and narcissists struggle with that. So, but thankfully, it's also, all I somebody just else's fault. Out to, I quickly want to point out to chat that I've had COVID recently, and that's why I've, I've got the the, the penicillin. <laughs> I just <laughs> I smoked loads of life. weed. <laughs> <coughs> I've got a cough because I smoke loads of weed. No, um, I've had a cough. I've had a, a snivels too. Um, you've, I've been poorly. Listen, you feel comfortable. Uh, <laughs> the narcissist is happy because they don't make problems. They haven't got... It's everyone else's problem. It was their fault, not mine. Right. You feel comfortable yeah. just walking up to someone with like two old men coughing on them. <coughs> you remember um, in the fast show where that chuffer... Yeah, the, yeah, yeah. Bob, Bob <coughs> Fleming. Bob Fleming, that's him. Yeah. Hello there. <laughs> um, Bob Fleming here. <laughs> <laughs> you're uh, right Bob you, fine yeah <laughs> you feel comfortable just walking up to someone you find interesting and striking up a conversation me the narcissist yes mm -hmm. I feel very yeah, comfortable no. just walking up to someone I find interesting and striking up a conversation because damn it I'm a pretty big chuffer I'm a pretty shiny chuffer and they think I'm brilliant so mm -hmm. that's fine yeah or as me, the true narcissist, buried under a, a, like six feet of dirt in a wooden box, is banging on the coffin lid, saying, no, you are shitting it. You are terrified. This is scary. This is a new person. It's an unknown. We don't know how to deal with what might be there. So don't risk it. So in the realities, I'll click yes on the question, but reality is a narcissist will never actually go and do this. So they don't have to. They will, but it will terrify them. They won't right. be comfortable doing it. That's the point. Right. They might Sweaty act like confident and be able to like swagger up to you, but inside, yeah. shitting it. Squeaky bum time. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You're not too interested in discussing various interpretations and analysis of creative works. Not too interested in discussing various interpretations and analysis mm -hmm. of creative works. I suppose as a narcissist, I'm going to say, no, I'm not, because I know the analysis. I know pretty much what the, the true answer is, the right answer. All these other ideas that are coming out are just fucking idiots with their stupid answers, yeah? Like the mainstream gaming media doesn't know fucking anything. So I'm going to... Yeah? What do you think in chat? Are you going to say, do narcissists want to hear various interpretations? They're not interested at all. No. 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 They don't ask. It involves empathy. It involves considering somebody else's opinions and perspectives, and that's... Empathy is involved with that. Creative thought processes are involved in that. Too much work for the narcissist in the frontal lobe, mm. so no, they're not going to want to do it. Yeah, why would I want to hear the opinions of a load of fucking idiots? Yeah, <laughs> you're already you're already right. You're already convinced of your inherent <laughs> rightfulness. So why would you? <laughs> I'm just laughing because I was thinking, imagine living in that world because you'd never get anything done because like everyone else's voice is important and that's how like you know uh, in every field. This diversity helps drive things forward. And if you are in narrow niches and you've only got like one group of people thinking on something, they lose the sight of things. They haven't got all these other ideas. And it's that that melting pot and, and fusion of ideas that gets us somewhere. And then I think about like, you know, Dark Side Phil in his world and, and it makes more sense. Yeah. So I strongly disagree on that. Fuck everyone else <laughs> and their thoughts. 20%, 20 percenters. You're more inclined to follow your head than your heart. Head and heart. Mm. Oof. I'm a very smart chuffer. I'm a very clever chuffer. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I would go with that as well because it's your head that's planning everything and keeping track of like all the lies you've told different people and all the ways you've mm. presented your image. You don't want your heart, your actual genuine emotions to to properly be motivating of your behaviours, even though it will be. You're genuinely terrified of something and trying something new, but your swagger in your ego is telling you to do it. So. And Alexander in chat says, narcs don't have hearts. So I guess, yeah, we'll Point. say agree. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Point well, <don't> you? <laughs> yeah. Um, Squirrel Sniper says they didn't realise we were asking for an artist. Oh yeah, this is, I want the, this is the 16 personalities to come out. Uh, and at the end of it, I want it to tell us what, like if you did this and, Sorry, it's a 16 personalities test. I want the answer mm -hmm. to be the narcissist's answer. So you get your friends and relatives to do it. And if they turn out with this answer, they're fucking narcissists and you can prove it to them. 
<laughs> clinically, Steve's here. He's representing clinic. He's Steve is representing the clinical world, and he's going to love the idea that we can use this test <laughs> to clinically diagnose a narcissist. <laughs> This is so, like, wildly unethical. <laughs> in another episode, in a future episode, I'm going to shit all over this quiz. Yeah, so. Steve doesn't like it. It's wildly unethical. Wildly unethical, we can get that as a slogan. Um, right, you usually prefer just... <laughs> <laughs> You, you usually prefer just doing what you feel like at any given moment instead of planning a particular daily routine. What a weird question, because as a narcissist, I fucking love the schedule. But at the same time, I will throw the schedule up the wall at any particular moment because I just feel like it. So I'm going to say I prefer doing what I feel, yeah? Or no, I don't know. What do you think in, in chat? Disag agree or disagree on that? Is the narcissist happy being spontaneous? The schedule is control. The schedule is control over as many variables as are possible. So you don't need to worry about being involved in an accident in your car and then having to deal with somebody else and the stress of insurance and everything. If you, you know, you know, I get from point A to point B, I'll go get me shopping and then I'll get back home and I should be home by this time so then we can order food. All that stuff is designed to limit your your risk of exposure somehow, some other way. So the schedule is king. I don't know how to feel like a narcissist control. on this one because I think it is about control, isn't it? And people are saying in chat, like, you know, this planning, this schedule, this control, um, just doing what you feel would like. Now I'm thinking about it as well with, with the, the, the comedy personality of Dark Side Phil that overhangs this aspect of this conversation is that if he was on his stream and sometimes someone suggested, well, you don't have to play this game, you can just do what you feel, he would say, absolutely not. We're doing this on this stream because it's scheduled in. And like, I can't just turn off and. Yeah, exactly. You can't let you can't improvise. Yeah, no improvising. Involving, yeah. It involves unknowns. It yeah. involves reacting to things you can't predict, and that's terrifying. I'm going to disagree so. on that. Yeah, you rarely worry about whether you make a good impression on people you meet. Well, I rarely have to worry because I'm such a good chuffer. <laughs> that's crucial to narcissism, though. You know, yeah, the idea of how, how how your image is perceived by other people is is. Really, really cool. Cookie with kick with Zig and Zag. I fucking love that show. Zig <laughs> <laughs> and Zag ruled. <laughs> but yeah, um, I don't know. Well, this is an interesting one because the narcissist will answer. I rarely worry about what people think of me, but deep down, yeah. they're gonna. The truth of it is, they all they ever do is worry about what people think of them. Yep. So yep. Yeah. So you answer that, as. I'm answering as the narcissist would answer because he's yeah. going to the answer. The answer is going to be tick. I don't worry, um, but deep down we all Reality. know the truth. That's a really Image weird one. Is yeah. That's a really weird one. It's it's kind of a sad world that people must live in where they're clicking the thing that is the total opposite to what they'd like. Like in the whole point of the quiz is that you find out who you are. But a narcissist is so like I don't want to say fucked up, but like so messed up in a way that um, they'll click the opposite and they won't find out who they are. So they won't mm -hmm. be led to the truth. Like. Yeah. This is why we have problems diagnosing and treating narcissists because no thought police. The, the false self is king, and the false self is reactive. It it, it can change on the, the the needs of the the social situation. So a narcissist will answer this how they feel they can, rather than how they genuinely actually feel. They'll yeah. just be like, oh, I don't care. Of course I don't care. I'm full of myself. I'm great. But crucially, inside you're like, oh fuck, I'm terrified. I'm not actually that great a person, and I have all these flaws and insecurities that make me less. So. Yeah. Um, in chat there, Sue, uh, Queen of Swords asked, did I choose this test? Yes, I did. And I did because it's quite a popular one. And I know that Steve doesn't like mm -hmm. it as a, a general personality test, so I thought I'd force him to do it. So, um, yeah. <laughs> um, if, if we had more time, I'd be complaining more. But Yeah, we, we can give a, a critique of this on the next Narcissism stream that we're going to do. Um, Steve will be back next Monday for sure, and maybe in the week as well, depending on how things go yeah, with his yeah. schedule and stuff. Um, you enjoy participating in group activities, Narcissist. I'm going to say probably no. No. Uh, everyone else yeah, is a bit of an idiot. Taking the focus off me. Everybody yeah, else like, has been an idiot taking the focus off me. Like Group deep down, you're going to say the truth is that they're taking the focus off you. But on, on the surface, I'm going to say that it's because they're fucking idiots. Like, why do I want to sit in the cinema with people grunting up their popcorn? I just want to watch the movie on my own. You know, why do I want to go to dinner with a load of people who like I have to split the bill and pay for their battered onion rings? Like, you know, I just want Most, you know, when, when you've ever been like in, in your office and you, you have to go for one of the meetings that are like, we're going to do a team building activity. You know, we all have to introduce ourselves and then we'll all get put together to make some sort of project you know yeah yeah and, exactly and most, Fuck. 
most of us hate them because they're fucking tedious. Yeah. And they're just like, I'd rather be out doing work. But narcissists will hate them because it's like it involves working with other people and not being the center of attention. So. Do you know what I used to sometimes, do? I'm thinking of those things sometimes, and I used to just think like, I've, obviously this is not proper work time, so I am now at liberty to just do what the fuck I want, and I would yeah. just not participate, people would be cross at me, we need to build this bridge out of straws, and I'd be like, yeah, yeah, I'm yeah. outside for a reefer mate, like call me in when you want me to burn it down, that's it, I don't give a two, two shits about your team building, like, I work in a call centre, leave me alone, like, do you know what I mean, like, but um, that was a previous life of mine, yeah, um, so enjoy, disagree, disagree. Um, you right. like books and movies that make you come up with your own interpretation of the ending. Absolutely not. What a load of rot they are, where they make me do the work instead of having their own meaning and ending. Uh, Dark Side Feel himself would 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 agree. The king of the king of uh, the king with of Phil specifically, with Phil specifically, the requirement to have everything spelled out. And I don't know if this extends to all narcissists, but if you've got like a plot in your movie and. There's there's some subtext or there's some you know um, like like implication rather than outright explicitly saying something you will get mad that you didn't actually do it you didn't actually mm. say it or spell it out he needs that direction he needs to be told hey this is the point of why this character behaves like this hey this is why this character did this can't be open to interpretation it involves too much work and again empathy considering other opinions considering other perspectives all that sort of yeah stuff. yeah all that's in it isn't it yeah. That's why it's a problem to the narcissist. I get it now, yeah. Uh, before, I just was thinking, like, they just think, oh, it's just like someone hasn't bothered to do the ending, but it's because they can't comprehend that you do that bit yourself and that's why it's magical. So they just think it's fucking rubbish because they don't have the magic in their soul. Yeah. Mm -hmm. What a sad world. Um, your happiness yeah. comes from helping others. <laughs> your happiness... <laughs> oh, God. Your happiness comes from helping others accomplish things than your own, <laughs> own accomplishments. So other people's accomplishments are more important to me than my own. Even on this test, I can't pretend that that's like... A narcissist would think that everyone would say agree. They would think that they would say agree, and I'm supposed to say agree, but can't, I can't really press agree, can I? You'd probably put it in the middle, will not you, as a narcissist? But obviously... Like, you know you're not supposed to say no. You know you're not supposed to say no. You know that looks bad. Yeah. yeah. You know it looks a bit like selfish, so maybe don't. But internally very strongly disagree there's no fucking way a narcissist could take pleasure in the joy of others such yeah. a weird question because i think i'm gonna have to click more agree actually because everyone in chat's correct there's no way that the, the, the narcissist agrees with this like in in their heart but yeah. they know that in the, the real world if you don't show that you help other people and you're happy like today we're going to give money to charity depending on how many likes you've got us to i haven't looked if we're over 200 it's 20 pounds to unicef hooray it's just a little thing we do instead of blowing bubbles i give 10 pounds to unicef if we get 153 oh, 153 so unicef have got their 10 pound for the 100 likes they're getting 10 pound for charity um like i'm not doing that because i think i'm, I'm doing that because i actually do happy for other people yeah like i want to yep. do that sharing a narcissist would still do that because they know that people should think better of them for doing it yeah mm -hmm. so i know they don't actually care but because they're filling in this questionnaire and they want the questionnaire to come out nicely for them they're going to click agree and i think they're going to agree strong i'm such a charitable nice chuffer i'm such a good chuffer no they wouldn't snood's in chat snood a narcissist oh, is even able to take valley personality tests surely a narcissist would want to make themselves appear not to not be a narcissist that's what i'm 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 the what we're doing. yeah i'm, I'm the, uh, answering it here so that I'm, I can fill in how it properly would be. Yeah, and I'm I'm dark side Phil himself, like actually saying what he would say. So I'm going to click agree, even though it's wrong, and it's one of those questions that's like a flip reverse it. Yeah. 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 It's, I, it's a shame you can't all hear Snood's voice and Indrid, Indrid saying yeah. cheeseburger, but you'll have to go to their stream, the Detractor Beam, sometime and have a look. See, that, um, that that call from the DWO in the future after the uprising. So I was great. Come with me if you want to wave. It's, it, we're, we're <laughs> getting some deep deep fill law. Getting deep on on the fill, mm -hmm. so deep you can scratch his back look anyway look um your happiness comes more from helping others accomplish things i, I agree we're going to move on to the next one you're interested in so many things you find it difficult to choose what to try next no i don't as a narcissist i don't have that i know what i want Give next. Me questions in a different order than you got them bugger is it well you can just listen to me say it 
Yeah, yeah, I just thought if I <laughs> answered it as well, then we could compare the results at the end. Oh, you were doing it on from the other buttons. Oh, yeah. Well, why is it doing that then, the fucker? Oh, no, wait, there it is. There it is. I've, you've got a head, haven't you? You were ahead of me. Sorry. I'm at 30% you. now. Right, okay, still at 20. There we go. Yep, go on. <laughs> we're interested in so many things that you find it difficult to choose what to try next. If you're happy, Steve, we're running over time. That's all. I'm just concerned for your yeah, time because it's yeah, three and a half hours now. I've had a, I've had a stretch. Stretch okay. my leg when I went to... So, yeah, yeah so we're, we're running this. We're, we're going hard. We're going hard. Go hard or go home. Except most of you are actually already at home. So just go hard. You, you just go hard. Um, are you interested in so many things that you find it difficult to choose what to try next? No. <laughs> no. I'm saying no. Mm -hmm. I'm happy. You're happy. I'm happy. Yeah, because okay. obviously the narcissist is anything. It's too much effort. It's too much work. There's a risk involved because it's the unknown. Yeah, <laughs> I know, and also I know what I want to do next because I'm such a in, in, smart chuffer. I've got I mm. I want to be a super this or wonderful that. You know I know what I am. I don't need to mm. change my mind. So I actually strongly disagree on that one. You're prone to worrying that things will take a turn for the worst. In chat, does the narcissist worry? Is the narcissist anxious? Um, from what I've learned earlier, Steve, I might think they are. Yeah, but do you think as a narcissist that you are prone to worrying? If, if things are going to take turn for the worst, or do you think that you would be expected to answer differently? Because they very much are terrified of the unknown, and if they have plans and those plans don't pan out exactly as they thought, shit your pant time. So it's like 4D yeah. chess now. I, I don't know. I, I've forgotten who I am. I've forgotten who I am. Uh, do I care? You are the dark answering. <laughs> I, I'm so brilliant. I'm a great chuffer. You're all fucking idiots. Um... But that I mean, things might take a turn for the worst because everyone else out there is a bit of an idiot and they might fuck me over. Yeah, and that like, doesn't I, mean, are you going to worry about it, or do you <coughs> think I've got a backup to a backup, so I'm not worried because if it does, I can handle it. Mm. I've been here before. I know my shit. I can handle this. What do you think in or chat? I need I need your chat as well. I need your chat now. I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm an uncertain narcissist here. They don't consider the worst. <laughs> I'm saying we're gonna go disagree then. I'm not worrying about things. I'm a Bad chuffer. <laughs> Fix logic had a question for you, Steve, that maybe we didn't get to. Sorry, is, was that a normal one? Or was that were you all right there, Fix logic? Do you want to ask it again? I can't see where it is in chat. Yeah, oh, no, no, it's all right. We can just move over past that. Right. I didn't see it. I was busy catching up with this one. Fix logic. I can't <laughs> see it either, to be honest. So if you've got a question that you want to answer, ask, by all means, ask it again. Um, we're not trying to... <laughs> right tip us again. Tip us again. Send it in another picture. All right, if you tipped it, if it was a tip, that's then, a like, just... That no, yeah, yeah. Joke. That's a Steve... That, that's a dark side Phil joke. Yeah, yeah. Um, but, yeah, like, uh, if you do want me to... You know, if you want it to be top of my mind, then you might as well send it with money because, like, you know, what do you think makes the world go around, you big chuffers? Um, <laughs> the money! Right, look, anyway, what we're doing is this personality test. You're prone to worrying that things will take a turn for the worst. Disagree, then, yeah? We're all saying disagree. Do you want it disagree. Well, obviously, genuinely. Terrifying. You avoid leadership roles in group settings. No, disagree. I take the leadership roles in group settings because everyone else is an idiot. Yeah? Mm -hmm. yeah? Yeah. Quick one, that one. You're definitely not an artistic type of person. They mean art, art, artistic. Artist. You're definitely not an artistic type of person. I'm not even making a joke there, actually. I was just making sure I got it right. Um, you're not... We we did have to clarify that with that being said's intro because when it comes to maker and he's like artistic style host, but because of how <laughs> Phil pronounces artistic, it sounds like autistic. autistic. So some like people ask where we first did that theme. Are, it, are they saying Meerkat's autistic? <laughs> it's like no no no, artistic. He does all the graphics. He does all the thumbnails and stuff. He's, he's artistic. Good night, Flo of Love. You've been um, a big supporter tonight. Yeah. Thank you very much for your contributions and your your chatting and all that. Um, we. You know, good night. I hope you watch the rest of this as we uh, leave it up on the internet. Yeah. Uh, I'm, I'm not an artistic type person. I mean, am I? I'm, mm. I'm creative and I'm cool and I'm the narcissist. So maybe art is something that's seen as positive in this world. And, you know, if you want someone to be in the band, then I'll be the lead singer, like we were saying earlier. So maybe I agree or disagree that I'm not artistic. Disagree. They're saying disagree in chat. Yeah. So if you thought you were artistic, you would disagree. Yeah. But creation is difficult, and creation often involves emotion. And I think it's difficult for a narcissist to be truly creative. They can mimic very well, but genuinely, truly creative. But then again, what's you know, what's the difference? 
what's the difference between me painting something and a narcissist painting something? We both painted. I might have put more like emotion and feeling into what I wanted to represent on the canvas, but your narcissist is still just as good at like technically emulating what I'm doing. So what's the difference? But I I, I think most narcissists would not think they were not they were artistic because it involves too much um, emotion and energy into something that's not as profitable. Mm. Okay, so I think and I and I think as a um, as a narcissist, I'm going to say I'm, I'm good at stuff. So type of person, uh, but good at stuff, maybe agree a bit. But I agree with what you're saying, that the things that make you a good artist, they don't really possess. So when it comes to the crunch, they don't turn out to be a good artist. But like, do you, like, what do you, like, I might be not very good at drawing, but I might, I don't know. I suppose it's like drawing's a kind of crunch thing, isn't it? Like you either are or you are not good at drawing. Um, mm. But maybe that's more technical. You might be able. You might be able to do like the technical bits. You might be able to get like perfect uh, perspective, for example, mm. and, and keep that consistent. But is that the same as somebody who's not as good, but is emotionally invested in the painting, so they are putting more energy and effort into it, and that comes across in the distortions and the the imperfections and. So, but what the do they things. say about themselves as well? Do they say they're an artist yeah. or not? Come on, in chat, you need to help me now. Does, does a... I think enough? Because again, it's creative field, so I think a lot of narcissists might say they were artistic definitely not strong agree or disagree but they might say they were because they do involve some level of creation in whatever they're doing but they're not in whatever they're doing for the purpose of creation they're in whatever they're doing say like right. being in a band because it gets them praise and adulation right that's their okay. primary motive not creation for the sake of creation you know okay we're going to say agree can... we're going to say agree yeah. and vix logic yeah we did answer your question steve said no his answer was no a very oh. straightforward no yeah, yeah. um and if you want we can do it i think there is like i follow graham chapman on the chuffing twitter is that his name the one from father ted uh Graham Linehan. Uh, Graham, Graham, Linehan. Linehan. Graham Linehan, Graham Chapman. I follow Graham Linehan on Twitter. I see what's being said. I'm following the conversation. Um, so I would like mm -hmm. to do an episode on it and get the different voices involved. Um, but yeah, uh, Steve said no. So um, that was that. And we're not doing that episode now today. So that's all right. Do <laughs> uh, you think the world would be a better place if people relied on more? Wait. If people relied more on rationality. More on rationality and less on and their less. feelings. Would the yeah. world be better if people were less emotional? Basically, absolutely. Yeah. As a narcissist, yeah, absolutely. More rational, less emotional, yeah. Yep. Yeah, yeah, 100%. Yep. Not only do they <laughs> think it deep down, like you, you're the voice of deep down and I'm the what they should say, they also think, yeah, because emotions just fuck everything up. And Yeah. If like, I, I don't like being emotional. It's scary as a narcissist. It's scary, so I'm not going to do it. So yeah, and all the people yeah. that are emotional are crazy, and they're fucking me up. And if they weren't so yeah. chuffing emotional, I'd I'd get on in the world. Yeah, if we weren't so mm. emotional, we wouldn't argue as much. Well, we're arguing because you're emotional all the time. If you were just rational like me, you know, yeah, yeah, totally. And yeah, <laughs> Snood's, hard to agree, yeah. Snood's saying that I'm a hundred percent rational. If you're a narcissist, yeah, I'm a hundred percent rational. I'm always mm. like you know logical, and and like, I don't let my emotions get the better of me, do I? Because I'm a narcissist, absolutely. Yeah. You prefer to do your chores before allowing yourself to relax. I don't have to do chores. Other people do them for me because I'm a narcissist. Yeah. <laughs> Simple. Um, so, what, agree? Or do, I don't understand chores as a concept as a narcissist. Cleaning up. Just sort of like general operation of a household. You need to dust. You need to do the washing. You need to take the rubbish out. All that that's, sort of stuff. As a narcissist, don't mean to be funny, but that's Mexican work. Um, Julie bought me a coffee. Um, she <laughs> said, uh, that was a narcissist. That was just a joke, obviously. I don't think Mexicans should do my, my work. Obviously, I think women should do it. <laughs> no, that's also, <laughs> that's also a joke. That's also a joke. I haven't got anyone to do it for me i just live in squalor because nobody's gonna fucking do it um so thank you very much for the coffee there julie thank you for much buying me a coffee on coffee.com which is my preferred choice of tippies because i get the majority of the cup but if you want your super chats go on top as well and you want your opinion to be above everyone else's up there on the top of the super chat you can just buy that here it's just you know we'll sell out that that's fine um yeah, right so <laughs> the next and and also you know if anyone thinks that i'm doing really like you know dangerous work exposing people on the internet in some of my other episodes then of course you can just buy out like, i can those can just disappear you don't have to mi5 murder me i've said this before i'll just take the money i'll take the show if you want an advert if you want to sponsor my thing and you want to spot unless it's not vegan i won't go not vegan but you know we can have a sponsor as well we can do that um do you prefer to do your chores before you're allowing yourself to relax i don't what was the answer i don't 
I don't know. See, I get you, you think as a narcissist, you've probably got somebody to do that for you, so it's not a consideration for you. So, yeah, would you, you know, but you know, it's a sensible, mature thing to do. You get the cleaning up done, and then you can relax, you know. Yeah, you, totally you agree. To yourself, it's a mature thing to do. Yeah, I always do all my business first before I like, I know I'm at the pub at three o'clock in the afternoon, but I finished all my work, so now I'm allowed to relax. Like, that would yeah, be a narcissistic yeah. take, so yes. Okay, we are up to 40%. Dun, 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 dun. You enjoy watching people argue. Oh, I fucking love it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I tell you what, gets me hard. Gets yeah. me hard, yeah. It also benefits me because I can pick up on things that I can use to manipulate you later. If I know that you're arguing about, say, a case where you think your partner has cheated on you, I could take note of that and be like later on, hey, do you remember that time when he was a bit suspicious? And, you know, if I want to stir mm. the pot a bit and benefit me socially, I could do that. So, yeah, yeah I love it absolute big tick you tend to avoid drawing attention to yourself mm. yeah yeah that's difficult isn't it because uh, i want to say instinctively i can't help it people are drawn to me i'm a not like i'm a good special chuffer special chuffer so yeah and i want to say instinctively i do want to avoid it because i don't want anyone getting close enough to see the real me so. yeah yeah if i'm out in public people are just drawn to me i actually try and keep my head down but they still I think, mm -hmm. as a narcissist, even though I'm actually doing things to attract attention, I'm attention-seeking, if you accuse me of it, I'm going to say, no, I'm not. I'm doing my best to keep out of this. Um, yeah. I got drawn in, like Dark Side Phil, I got drawn into a conversation on the, the Twitter, you know, and I got conflated with the issue when actually I inserted myself in the issue and made it a, a, a problem for everyone. Yeah, I avoid drawing attention to myself. Mm. Yeah, I think as a narcissist, in, internal as a true self, it's terrifying, the idea of having attention on me, because it means that somebody might see the real me. So really, I do want to be left alone. I don't mm. want a huge social circle. I just want the people that benefit me around me. Yeah, and I agree with what you're saying in chat. They even love negative attention, like all the attention, yes. Yeah. Like a narcissist in reality is going to attract and solicit all the attention. But if you ask them, do you draw attention to yourself, they're not going to say yes. They're going to mm. say, the reason I get all this attention is because everyone else is a fuck-up. And I, I'm a good chuffer. They're all jealous of me, or they're yeah, all, like, scheming against me, or whatever. There's all yeah. these external things. But... They're jealous. I don't solicit it. They're jealous. Yeah. God, this is tough. This one. Um, hmm. What are you looking at there? The next one. Your mood can change very quickly. That seems fairly straightforward as a narcissist, because it can, can it? Yeah. If you don't serve a narcissist. It's not my fault, system. but it can. More. Yeah, 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 yeah. Agree. Mm -hmm. Agree. Are you happy in chat? We're agreeing with that. We're moving through them. Moving through them like a laxative. Coming at you like a laxative. No, that's not, mm -hmm. that doesn't sound cool. I'm not going to get any street cred for coming at people like a laxative. Look, you lose patience for people who are not as efficient as you, right? You, you come in, I'm going to go through you like a laxative. All right. Chisora said it once to Dillian White. He going said through it. you like Seneca. Yeah. Going through you, like, yeah. Um, yeah, tough, big and tough. Um, you lose patience with people who are not as efficient as you. Well, yeah, do, who doesn't, frankly, yeah, yeah. says John. Again, unreasonable expectations of people. Not only yeah. what they should be giving you in the relationship, but how quickly they should be doing it, how easily they should be doing it, how often they should be doing it. How You have no care for how difficult it is for them to keep up with your demands. Just that they meet your demands is what's important. So, mm. I will say, yeah, do you yeah. know, in chat, Life Shank says that we're here for some sanity. I shouldn't pretend to be a narcissist. Um, but we want to find out what the narcissist, what the test says for a narcissist so that we can compare it. Um, but also, I would say some of these are quite easy to answer because who doesn't, I, I mean, I meant that as, as truth as well. Who doesn't lose patience with people who are not efficient? Yeah, like, yeah. Like, yeah, yeah. With a narcissist, it's even amplified. But like, it's about, okay, you, you lose your patience, but it's about how you treat people. Like, okay, I might feel a bit frustrated at times, but I'm not going to say to them, oh, for fuck's sake, just stop doing that, you chuffer. Like, you have to be nice <laughs> people as well um although having worked as a hairdresser i remember there were times in the salon where people would have thought i was being rude but it was because like if your hair matters your hair matters so i can't say excuse me do you mind just putting down that color brush just for a minute and maybe changing this color for this color and i have to say stop that immediately put the brush down paint it with this <laughs> like sometimes uh, feelings are out the window so efficiency and patience are not always like maybe the narcissist doesn't feel that they're being um, rude to people and losing their patience because they're just saying it as it should be like just doing yeah. the job and p other people have got feelings and attachments so maybe they don't agree with this I don't know but 
But I've got to agree because yeah, <laughs> you know, this is going to be frustrated. They want things. They should have things. They deserve things and are entitled to things. Why are you not getting them immediately? So, yeah. You often end up doing things at the last possible moment. No, I plan them then. I'm a narcissist. Yeah, I don't, wouldn't say I wouldn't agree. Yeah. Yeah. Snippies yeah, with the super would. chats, 10 of the American dollars. Thank you very much. I'm going to have to wait till I visit America to uh, cash in my American dollars. <laughs> but one day that'll that'll come through. Not, no, yeah, it comes through in, in English dollars through the YouTube system. So thank you. Thank you. Um, a narcissist is more likely to super chat. We're more likely to super chuff, I tell you. And also I thought of a terminology. I thought of a terminology for the people in chat where you can all be the, the chuff rejects. The chuff rejects. Oh, yeah. Yeah. that's good, isn't it? The chuff rejects. You can all be chuff rejects. It's a bit. It's a bit. You know. It's a bit sort of. Um, you know, insensitive oh, to the that, women that fought for your right to vote. But other than that, other than that, it's quite a fun thing for me, part of the patriarchy, to be just you know, shoehorning that into my own content. Anyway, look, you chuff rejects. Uh, do you often end up doing things at the last possible moment? Narcissist is going to say no. I'm planning. I'm. I'm sorted. I got things under control. Yeah, there's too much control involved in, in, in planning things and making sure you yeah. stick to the schedule. So, yeah. So, rejects. Yeah, the insecurity flares. The insecur mm. insecurity flares up at that point when you're like, oh, oh, God, I can't. The anxiety of, like, not having planned for this thing in advance. Even though we saw with the channel launch recently, that was <laughs> very much month-long oh, planning. things will be done at the last possible moment, but I won't say things I'm going to do them. Yeah, yeah, you are, yeah. are going to do them. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So absolutely um you've always been fascinated by the question of what if anything happens after death that's a weird one hmm. fascinated you know, I, as well. I don't think I, steve of the dead <laughs> see steve. i have been that's partly yeah. you know, but i i don't know how you would answer that as a narcissist i i suspect that would transcend personality disorders and just be a general sort of personal disposition because no, I, I don't mm. that's individual it feels too individual i can't sort of like say yeah a narcissist would do that because probably going to be both you know probably going to be an even distribution of yeah i do think about it or no i don't you know um i might disagree so i think if i was answering as a narcissist i might say i don't because like we've got busier doing no i'm the, yeah. the big i'm the big important one not god and all them and their heavens they're not important what's going on with me and my chuffing stuff is what's going on i'm more preoccupied with like you know all the questions of life and how to manipulate people than worrying about feelings and thoughts after death is because we don't know the answers do we um yeah i did scare i did bring up the ouija board there for a little brief one we're going to be doing ouija board this week we're going to be having a look at it so um but uh Ask. And ask now. Well, you've got to. I could ask one. Yeah, yeah. No, that's for the next stream. That's for the next stream. Um, but uh, I'm going to say I kind of disagree because it involves emotion as well. And you were describing all this uh, um, yeah, yeah. emotional stuff. So I'm going to say, but not strongly, but just disagree. Right, like we're at fifty percent. We're pushing. You usually prefer to be around others rather than on your own. Mm. I want to say disagree, but you also want your flying monkeys, don't you? Yeah. 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 Because again, you, you you benefit from them being around because yeah. they're there for a reason. You you gain from them for some somehow. They might give you the emotional nourishment you need and, and and soothe your ego, or they might actually be doing like practical things like like bringing you food and doing your washing. Mm. But in chat, we've got they have to be around others and a lot of agreements mm. in that. So we're going to say yeah. agree. Yeah, you become bored or lose interest when the discussion gets highly theoretical. Uh, yeah. I mean, highly theoretical says to me that it's about like a, another level of understanding and maybe the narcissist doesn't want to go that deep into these conversations and just wants their opinion to be heard and just understood and that's it. Yeah. So like highly theoretical starts to throw them off maybe because it becomes a specialist area where they're not that specialist, where they reveal themselves to be something that they're not. What do you think? Yeah, because once you get meta, once you can sort of like take the understanding of a subject to the level where you can then discuss how that subject is discussed you know like like we did before where we were mm. talking about being a bit better about stuff we you can you can do that but as a narcissist you take your focus off yourself and you're getting into a, a again you're getting into another area where you have to consider other things it's not just the here's the hard evidence here's like me me rational practical pragmatic side of it it's it's in a a, a more interpretive thing when you get mm. into those levels of, of of discussion so yeah i would say you would 
Not only um, because the attention's being brought off yourself, but because it's just too much cognitive effort to keep I up. S- I see what's being said in chat here. Um, generally agree, but White Swan says they're competitive, so they might enjoy this. Like, yeah, I can also see them arguing till the cows come home with the theoretical, you know, yeah. getting into the minutia or maybe some of these conspiracy theories as well. So I can see both sides of this. As a yeah. narcissist, I'm probably going to just click, um, maybe slightly disagree then. I'll tell you for why. is because I think become bored or lose interest sounds negative to me, like I'm not smart enough to do this highly theoretical stuff. So as a narcissist, I'm going to say, no, I don't become bored or lose it. Like I might do in reality and it might yeah. play out as problems in conversations, but I'm not going to see that as my problem. I'm going to say, oh, I didn't lose interest. I'm not bored. You're bored, you fucking idiot. So I'm going to say slightly disagree. Yeah. See, I've leaned way, I've waited towards agree, but not fully agree because again, there is that, like you said, some narcissists will do well in that situation. We'll go neutral. Go we'll go neutral. Problem. We don't know. We'll go neutral. Yeah. Yeah, because a yeah, bit of a good argument on both sides. Um, you find it easy to empathise with a person whose experiences are very different from yours. <laughs> Straight up disagree with that one. Yeah. But as, as as a narcissist answering this with the weight of public expectation on them, God. Yeah, I totally agree. Answer? That's one of those flip reverses, isn't it? Like, yeah, inside yeah. they're thinking, uh, like, they probably think they can empathise, but they don't even know what it is. So, mm-hmm. like, they probably click, click agree. <laughs> A good example for DSP in this situation is the wings down the rabbit hole thing where he thought empathising with wings being depressed meant let me talk about how depressed I've been, but it's not. That's not how empathy works. That's you turning it about yourself, you know? Mm. So, yeah. I, I, I see what everyone's saying in chat. It is a total no, but um, I'm going to put it agree because as a narcissist, I empathise with other people. It's a good thing that you should supposed to do. So I'm saying that I do it, yeah. even though I don't you can recognise understand. that social cue. And, yeah. And, and so on. I'm supposed like, to act like once, for example, once I was I outside no. the chip. Shop, straight up hard no, as the the true narcissist the truth, underneath. The truth no. is no, but once I was outside the chip shop and this kid dropped his chips in the in the bin and on the on the road and they got run over by a car and I I knew he felt bad, so I can empathise. That would be a narcissist answer, wouldn't it? Like didn't give the kid any chips, didn't help the kid, yeah. but yeah. knew the kid was feeling bad, so I'm definitely empathetic. Um, you usually postpone fa- finalising decisions for as long as possible finalizing decisions postpone them um i'm going to say disagree as long as possible again it sounds negative like i'm fucking up I'm, i shouldn't mm. postpone finalizing my decisions for as long as possible that sounds like a thing i shouldn't do so I, as a narcissist i'm going to say i do the right thing which is to disagree but i'm also waiting this way as well because disagree um finalizing a decision means you take control of everything that's it you are out ruling out any extraneous variables that might be unknowns that you can't control anything that might cause anxiety you're already so what the moment the decision is finalized you've you know you, you, you're good mm. you, you know everything then at that point and the plan can proceed you don't need to worry about externals you don't need to worry about variables you don't need to worry about unknowns that might cause you fear yeah and you you know yourself what, what the answer is you know? like what's the yeah. decision well i'm taking the decision so we don't need to discuss it let's get that decision taken yeah agree um, or disagree that I postpone them. You rarely second guess the choices you've made. Uh, inside, deep down, a narcissist is always second guessing every choice. Overtly, I don't second guess any choices, but I might be tempted to click agree on this one as a narcissist, even. Do yeah. Think? Do you think? Because you yeah. you you know that that sitting is a bad thing. You, you once you've made up your mind, you should stick to it. So. I mean, I might yeah, be. Ta- I might at some point as a narcissist, I might even be able to admit some character flaws. Maybe should I like you regret? You rarely second guess the choices you've made. Um, I don't really, but I like it's not a hundred percent. Like maybe a little bit. You might you might like make a show of it. You might make a public show of. Oh, you know what? I regret doing things that way. But whether you're actually feeling it though, that's the thing. Yeah. So regret because an asked might either like at this point socially i should display humility so you might make um like a token gesture of it but you don't really feel it because once mm. you know that token gesture done publicity gained people saw it and went oh wow he's, he's made amends you're done then you've achieved your so they so never a narcissist oh. never regrets anything looks back questions anything they've done i rarely second guess the choices i've made totally agree yeah mm-hmm yeah. Uh, okay. It's everyone else's fault. Of course. Kilted. It's never my fault. Yeah. It's always someone else's fault. After a long, exhausted week, a lively social event is just what you need. No. Not after a long and exhausting week. Don't these social people understand me? I need rest. These social people should just shut the fuck up and bring me my, my slippers. Uh, disagree. 
Uh, yeah, I'm also going to disagree with that one because it's too much social management to handle. Especially after a long and exhausting week. You're probably mm. just going to want your small bubble of comfort, your your few friends that are your monkeys that will tell you, yeah, you know, it's been a long week, you've worked hard, you deserve to relax. You, know, you deserve your one meal a week with your wife. Ali M, I agree that they do thrive around on being, be, they do thrive around being with people, but I, I, they've added this after a long and exhausting week. So that's the thing that yeah, threw me into saying, modifier, yeah. like, yeah. Uh, I'm, I'm too tired. Even have a limit. Everybody's yeah. got a limit. Even even us. So. so I'm going to put disagree. Next. Yep. 60%. We're getting there. You enjoy going to art museums. Oh, uh, I, we're gonna tick, I, I'm going to tick agree, but the minute you try and actually make me go to one, I'm going to fuck you about and we're going to end up at McDonald's. Yeah? <laughs> yeah, yeah, fair enough. I'm going to go with disagree because, again, too much interpretation, too much emotion, too much risk of being like... Exploded. Yeah, I'm, I'm not... Well, how does that painting make you feel and all that mm. stuff? So, you know. Do you know what, actually, I've got to say this. I know we're trying not to go over... We're already over time, and I'm, uh, Steve's got a bit of a bad back, and I don't want to make him sit in his chair for too long, so I'm trying to push. But um, And I appreciate that as an episode of three hours is a kind of good good limit, but we're doing this now. We're, we're committed. But I did want to take a quick minute here to say one of the most... A couple of the most beautiful moments in my life have happened in art galleries. Um, mm. And uh, one of them... <laughs> what happened is uh, I was looking at this picture and it, it was of Jesus and then there was this statue and it was like... Um, the statue was kind of like Jesus as well, but it was like of the earth and all this like concrete and the painting was much more expressive and human. Mm. human. And I, I was talking... I, 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 there was a nun in the room, yeah? And I knew she was into Jesus because like, you know, nun, isn't it? So like, I was saying all this shit to her and like, it was... I, I don't know if she could understand me. We were in a foreign country. Like, I don't know if she could even understand me. But I went on and on about this fucking art and this Jesus and this stuff. And like, you know, just giving her a good time, you know, get, getting, giving her a little tickle. Um, and then afterwards, I went off around the art gallery and she came up and like, you know, shuffled up to me this nun and she like had me and I was like oh I hope I've offended the nun and she gave me a little um like Saint Christopher like little trinket thing she Aww. gave me that and she was like there you know have that and like held my hand and stuff and I was like oh you know I've, I've tickled the nun um so that was nice yeah um art I like the art idea that she yeah. described a nun as into Jesus oh yeah she, fuck, oh they love that <laughs> married to him isn't she she's married to him so um oh, love a bit of Jesus <laughs> do you fancy coming out for a bit of Jesus yeah tell you what yeah I haven't had a nice bit of Jesus for a good long while <laughs> love a bit of it absolutely love a bit of Jesus um, she liked a bit of me after that conversation as well no it, was all, it all went really nicely yeah love art galleries um, but as a as a narcissist we can't understand our feelings and we don't want to talk about them so we will not go yeah. but we will say that we love them because we're intellectuals you often have a hard time understanding other people's feelings. Well, other people don't have proper feelings. It's their fault, not my fault. I don't have a hard time understanding them. They have a hard time being chuffers, right? So you go, we disagree then? Because I don't, I don't, I'm a narcissist. I don't have a hard time doing things. Yeah? I yeah. Don't, don't point I'm your terrified. finger at me, you and your feelings. Mm -hmm. Yeah? You tell me what the reality is. I'm terrified of it. I don't want to understand other people's feelings because it might reveal something about my feelings and how I feel. So I don't want to run that risk. I'm going to keep it hidden inside. So I'm going to go, yeah, I don't. I have a hard time understanding other people's feelings because I don't want to. Nice. Mm -hmm. You have. You like to have a to-do list for each day. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, all that important shit I've got to do. Yeah. Control, yeah. Yeah, all Ooh. that control. The next one. <laughs> okay so we, we're happy just skipping over that one like we don't need to go too deep do we because we're at 60 percent. you rarely yeah. you rarely feel insecure um a real narcissist knows deep down that they feel insecure all the time but is unwilling to admit it so mm -hmm. would rarely feel insecure agree but this question doesn't say you never feel insecure so it would throw them a little bit and maybe they wouldn't totally agree because sometimes they I, might feel or maybe sometimes they feel properly agree wouldn't you You'd be like, I never feel insecure, man. Yeah, but if you never feel, they've said rarely, and you're going to critique you the question because rarely. as as a narcissist, the people who've written this question aren't smart enough as me. They've written rarely, and they shouldn't have done. I don't ever they feel insecure. Yeah. <laughs> I'm so smart, I've broken the question now. Um, we're all <laughs> a, do you know what I mean? I can't click agree to a question that says rarely because I don't ever. Fair enough. That's your I'm logic. A, that's my logic, I, I, narcissist. I, I disagree because I'm a narcissist and I'm fucking insecure. So yeah, a yeah. real narcissist is clicking purples there, aren't they? Yeah, mm -hmm. but I'm I'm going to click that. Your questions this, aren't good enough. 
for all the DSP knowers in chat, for all the people who are fully aware of who Phil is, this next question is for you. <laughs> you avoid making phone calls. <laughs> <laughs> and even as a real narcissist here answering first, I'm going to say... Grand. I'm going to say, yes, I do agree. I avoid making phone calls. And I'm going to say that reason is not my own. It's because everyone else is an idiot and the phone call companies are idiots. But um, <laughs> I do avoid them because why would I want to talk to those fucking chuffers yet? Yeah. I've got to agree as well. I avoid making phone calls because why should I be the one to make them? You should be making them for me. You should be calling me and telling me and doing things for me. So... Mm. Yeah. I'd like to make it clear before we get through this test. This isn't a it's narcissism also... test. No, it's not. No, no, no. This no, is no, a general no, personalities test. I'm answering as part. I'm the narcissist. Steve's the the truth. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. Yeah. Also, very very briefly, there's um something to do with making phone calls that terrifies you because you can't read body language in a phone call. You're right. completely stripped of that thing. We use a lot of body language to mm. to determine what we think or feel about a person and how they are with us and make judgments based off it. So and we do a lot of it subconsciously as well. You might pick up on like how someone's sitting when you're on a date with them that makes you, oh, they're not into me. You know? So we read a lot from body language and a phone call strips you of that. And for a narcissist, that's one way of like learning about somebody gone. I can't know that, you know, if we're talking about something, your body language gives away that this makes you uncomfortable. I can't know that and make note of that to use it later to control you. So Okay. Yeah, that's the state. It strips you off a source of information about somebody. Next, you often spend a lot of time trying to understand views <laughs> that are very different from your own. <laughs> Disagree. Pure narcissist here. I don't spend a lot of time doing that. I don't need to because those views are stupid. Yeah? Mm -hmm. Yeah, you don't need to, but... But do they say they do because it's the right thing to do? Yeah. Are you managing your social appearance and how people are seeing you? by going yeah you know i understand i've been depressed i can understand how you feel with your depression yeah. they definitely don't they definitely don't but we're going to click i'm going to click slightly agree not completely agree because i don't maybe yeah, spend a lot of time doing it maybe i don't have to spend a lot of time doing it because you know generally people understand that i'm right but uh sometimes i have to and i'm good at it mm -hmm. so there we go yeah next 70 percent. only three more of these it's i'm sorry that i'm pushing you past the four hour mark now but like we are committed <laughs> With, with that, we're halfway up the fucking cave disaster. And if we don't get out of the tunnel, then we're going to drown. <laughs> so we have to keep going. Um, in your social circle, you are often the one who contacts your friends and initiates activities. Uh, as a narcissist, no, they all want to speak to me. And I don't, oh, besides, I don't have contacts and friends. <laughs> but for me, as the true self, yeah, because I'm the one who needs to keep control over them. I need to know that all my flying monkeys are nearby, so if I ever need them, they can quickly come to me. So mm. I am the one who sort of keeps control of all that. So I'm going to say okay. yes. If your plans are interrupted, your top priority is to get back on track as soon as possible. Absolutely, because any interruption to my plans is a massive chuff in the chuff hole. And really, like, what are they doing? <laughs> like, I'm the driver. What the fuck are you doing distracting me from my, my journey? Yeah. Um, and this just yep. screams dark side feel, doesn't it? Yeah, 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 it does. Yeah, that's one for me as well as a hard agree because obviously when you make a mistake, you're introducing variables and unknowns and you want to get back on plan as soon as possible mm -hmm. to reduce the number of things that you don't know and can't control that might cause you anxiety. So yeah, as soon as you're back on track, you're grand. So you're going to want to do that as soon as possible. You are still bothered by mistakes that you made a long time ago. Now, listen, I didn't make any mistakes a long time ago. Everyone else was at fault. It wasn't my fault. But people still bring up shit from a long time ago that we've never been able to resolve because they've got problems they can't resolve, apparently. That's my answer. So I'm saying I totally disagree. I'm not bothered, but everyone else seems to be. Mm -hmm. Whereas I'm saying that I am. I am really, really bothered about this sort of stuff. Don't mention it. I can't. And I can't properly assess it to the point where I could see where I've made mistakes and how I should change my behavior going forward. But it's still all there burning. I'll still remember embarrassing moments. I'll still remember times when I've been disappointed. I'll still remember things that, where where my plans went awry and where things went wrong and where I like made a tit of myself in public. Burning like bitterness inside, um, mm -hmm. but maybe not taking it on as their own. Maybe they still think, uh, like mistakes that you made, maybe they just think like things that went wrong instead of mistakes they necessarily made themselves. Like, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. It was lag. It was something and other code. people did. Want me? Why would yeah. I? You know. But internally, I know it was me, real. 
You rarely contemplate the reasons for human existence or the meaning of life. I rarely contemplate the reasons for human existence or the meaning of life. I don't really contemplate them as an, as an arrogant narcissist because I know them. I'm, I, I have my own vision of what life should be and it's all for me and I like it and yum, 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 get it in my pie hole. So I rarely contemplate it. Agree. Whereas for me, why would I contemplate it? It's too, like you said earlier, it's too much. And besides, I'm here now and I'm great now. So why would I worry about what comes next? Why would I worry about all these deep and meaningful things? They distract from me. They take attention away from me. And they're also too meta as well. They're also like levels above talking about your de general day to day. I went to the shop and I bought some milk and then I made, you know, egg on toast for breakfast or whatever. The levels above that. So too much thinking, too much work, too much effort and too much being open because you're also talking about how you perceive these things. So, mm. yeah, I'm so not going to bother. Your emotions control you more than you control them. Now, I want to say disagree because as a narcissist, I'm in control. But mm -hmm. I also feel instinctively, honestly, that my emotions do control me sometimes. But then maybe as a narcissist, I wouldn't admit it on the test. Mm. So I'd, I'd waver around. What do you think in chat? What's the narcissist going to say? Steve's going to tell us the truth. What's the narcissist going to say on the test? It uh, Internally, is the true self. I'm fucking terrified. So emotions control me. My anxieties and my fears and my worries control how I behave, how I act, how I form and establish and maintain relationships. They inform everything I do because it's all in service of avoiding that anxiety, avoiding that fear, avoiding being exposed and being seen. So, yeah, my yeah, emotions and control me. And with what they, you've said and with what they're saying in chat, I'm going to say disagree because I won't admit that my emotions control me. When it comes mm. to push comes to shove, you're the emotional idiot. I'm the one that's got my shit together. So disagree. Right. You take great care not to make people look bad, even when it's completely their fault. Oh, I, I'm always, it's always, I'm as a narcissist. <laughs> I do always take great care not to make people look bad. I totally agree. Job done. <laughs> do you want to tell us the truth or is it after everything we've said this evening is it is it totally obvious to everyone in chat it should be a bit obvious but for the record if it's your fault i will absolutely shit on you for it being your fault i will take advantage of that and use it to publicly excoriate you every opportunity i get so yeah i i disagree i do not take any care to avoid making you look bad if i can make you look bad i'll make you look bad so. <laughs> <laughs> right, 80%. Your personal work style is closer to spontaneous bursts of energy than organised and consistent efforts. As a narcissist, no, I'm organised and I'm consistent, but in my real life, I, I perceive that I'm not, conti like, not consistent. Yeah, I perceive it, I have these problems, but when the problems arise, it's not my fault I'm not at work, it's not my fault I'm not showing up, it's because, oh, this other thing happened, or that other thing, it's never my fault. So in my mind, I'm a, I'm a consistent, organised worker, but the rest of the world keeps fucking me up. So I'm going to say disagree to this, yeah? Yeah, yeah. And I'm going to say agree because, but not full on agree, because... Again, you're going to want to put in the impression that you do plan in advance, but that planning will be minimal and it won't be appropriate and it won't be enough to get you to the point where things are okay. So your your work is going to end up being a mad scrabble at the end and it's not going to work. And, and, and when things do go wrong, you're not going to be able to counter it or handle it well. So your work is closer to a spontaneous burst. I mean, you might say, oh, I've done months of work for this new stream, but that month, might have just been waiting for somebody to get back with your channel art and the actual setting up of your stream isn't there because you've not done it in advance so you then have a mad dash to do it again again another dark side film one sorry but yeah, yeah. Um, and in chat there, Queen of Swords says, I can see the result of this test being you're a narcissist with ADHD, procrastination disorder, anxiety and depression. <laughs> I'm answering with all the, uh, the best box ticks here. When someone thinks highly of you, you wonder how long it will take them to feel disappointed in you. Oh no, people don't feel disappointed in me. I'm a narcissist. If they do feel that, it's because they're confused, yeah? I'm going to say I disagree. I don't worry how long it will take them to feel disappointed. But in reality, maybe I do, because I know the reality is so strong that they always end up being disappointed in me. Maybe I'm going to disagree as well because I think you, you would just take as many as much effort as you could to avoid it getting to that point because you mm. don't want them to see that far into you that they're disappointed in you because they have. It's almost like you could reword this for narcissists by saying like you wonder how long it will take for you to be found out. Yeah, 
Yeah, sort of, yeah. But again, it's like not necessarily context either. It could be, you know, at work. If people, you know, oh yeah, I could do this project. It's fine, no problem. You could, and, and somebody puts you forward as like he could be the project leader. He's great. He's great at this sort of thing. Mm. You know. Yeah, I disagree. Yeah, mm. yeah. They, I'm not going to be confident in my own abilities until the point where it's fucked. Yeah. Mm. Okay. Um, uh, whereas would... I'm just not going to let somebody get that close to me. So. Right. Yeah. You would love a job that requires you to work alone most of the time. Absolutely. Everyone else is an idiot. Like, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I can control everything. I have complete control over who's in my chat. Well, this isn't my chat, so, you know, you, you are all free to say whatever you want. I should make you a mod, <laughs> shouldn't I? But, yeah, yeah. How's it going but, in chat? Uh, are you all still with us? You're still you all still awake? Oh, are we alive out thanks, there? Thanks for hanging in there. Yeah. <laughs> I appreciate it. We're nearly um, done. We're at, like, eight. Five now, maybe. and it's good content. This is we're squeezing the the you know we're squeezing the orange here. We're getting the, the good juice outside. So you believe that pondering abstract philosophical questions is a waste of time? Yeah, I do. I like to get things done. I'm a narcissist. I like to have like my you know my my shit going on. I, abstract bullshit is a waste of my life. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, and it's it's again a distraction. It's too much meta thought process. Is too much effort involved and it's too much of a distraction from the greatness that is me so yeah uh you feel more drawn to places with busy but bustling atmospheres than quite intimate places uh no i don't feel drawn to it because it's too busy and lots i'll tell you what lots of people are more concentrating on what they're doing out there i'm not the, i like to be the center of attention but out in the big bustly world people don't treat me as center of attention they're busy on their own shit so i prefer quiet intimate places where i can dominate yeah, true, because the lower your crowd, the smaller your crowd, sorry, the, the more easy you're going to find it to dominate it, especially if you're like, you know, an outgoing, confident, cocky narcissist who mm. does believe that shit and is socialized enough where they're like, I can handle myself in this social situation, it's fine. You're, you're, you're going to be like, I can handle this crowd, no problem. So, um, you know, I, whereas obviously you, you do need some people, so... Mm. I think you just don't, you need... as a narcissist, you don't want to become a face in the crowd. Like, you know, mm. when you're at the football, everyone's singing. They're all singing. You're just somebody that's singing. When you're at a, a small pub and you're singing, everyone's looking at you. So, like, yeah. you know, yeah. yeah. Um, you know, at first glance... There are more people there to take attention away from you. That's the yeah. problem. Yeah. So. Uh, you know, at first glance, how someone is feeling. Uh, narcissist, yes. I think I know how they're feeling because I don't understand feelings at all. So they're feeling, shut up and get me my dinner. Like, that's how they're feeling. So yes, I'm going to say. But the reality is... Um, oh, that's a good one now, actually, because it's like, do I think I know how they're feeling because I'm that good? Or do I think I know how they're feeling because I assume everybody is going to be feeling the same way I do? Mm. I might say yes for that actually I might say agree because I'm going to assume that everybody feels like me because why wouldn't they because I have no experience or empathy with other people so I don't yeah. know I'm just going to assume it's, it, it's a funny question because it is about feelings and mm. as we've seen like you know that's not their strong point is it but last 10 then okay. or last last yeah, board now mm. you often feel overwhelmed the reality is that as a narcissist, even I know when I'm answering this question that I do often feel overwhelmed and it's never my fault, but I often feel overwhelmed, but I would never agree in public that I often feel overwhelmed. So I'm going to say disagree. Yeah. Whereas internally, obviously I'm going to feel overwhelmed a lot because anxiety is a thing that's going to dominate my, my thought processes and my decisions when it comes to behaviors and actions. So I'm going to feel overwhelmed a lot. So interesting in chat there someone said they can instantly get what makes people tick really good point for the last question um you complete things methodically without skipping over any steps oh i'm going to say 100 percent agree but then you get me setting up the ikea furniture and i won't even read the fucking instructions but yeah, i'll just know <laughs> whereas obviously i'm going to disagree because it's like i i am going to assume that i already know stuff and the reality is i don't so i do need to read the instructions but i'm not going to so it's interesting, isn't it, the way the narcissist would answer some questions at completely the other end of the spectrum from the truth of their, their soul. Uh, yeah. yeah. It depends on how much of an impression you want to put us across, you know, of yourself. But, but we, we're how saying that that is what narcissism is. Yeah, You have to put that, you can't, 
you can't not put that impression across. You wouldn't want this test to say, like, even though you know in your soul the right answer, you wouldn't want this test to say the wrong thing. So you couldn't press the wrong button because you're so narcissistic. Like, it's a funny thing, this is, yeah. Um, you're very intrigued by things labelled as controversial. Uh, intrigued by controversy. Yeah. Yeah. I like watching people have... A, I like the fact that I've got an opinion on it and I'm always right. So um, controversy is quite fun for I me. Like, I like that in a controversy, I could take a moral high ground. Mm. I can appear to be one way. And obviously when other people are being controversial, it means it's safe for me because I'm not the one being controversial. They are. They're the ones making a public embarrassment of themselves. I could just sit here and go, look at that dickhead. I can elevate myself above them and make myself feel better about myself because I'm not the one doing that stupid thing over there that everybody's looking at. Mm. I'm over here smart and, you know, nobody's paying attention to me. So nobody like is, is at risk of actually finding the real me here. So, would you? But would again, you... It also lets me pine and put over my, my, my superiority to somebody else. So yeah, definitely the superiority thing. Any controversy, I can be the judge. Like mm -hmm. yeah, you would pass along a good opportunity if you thought someone else needed it more. <laughs> yeah, um, like obviously no, uh, disagree. But the correct answer is agree. So I'm pressing agree because I'm a narcissist. But yeah, the, the truth is we yeah. If, if it was a good opportunity for me, I would take it with both hands immediately. And I don't care that somebody else needs it more. It's how it benefits me as an artist. In fact, so. the question's loaded. Other people don't need shit more than me. I need shit the most because I'm the yeah. narcissist. So, <laughs> yeah. you know, what are they going on about? You struggle with deadlines. As a narcissist, no, I don't. No, I don't struggle with anything. What's the truth, Steve? What does the narcissist do? I think that's there for people with ADHD. <laughs> um... Oh, I don't know, because again, it, you're depending on how how much planning and control you have over a situation. So, mm, I think I might have to remain neutral on that. I don't know. The real narcissist doesn't know if they struggle. Mm. Truth, yeah, to, I, 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 truth I, I, down, they know they struggle, don't they? They know they struggle. Deep down, yeah, but it's like, how much are you going to believe that the planning you've put in for something is appropriate enough? Thing, oh yeah okay thing, so it's know? not it's not that you struggle with deadlines it's that people set unreasonable deadlines yeah yeah so you you if you do struggle with deadlines i could have done that work reasonable if you'd have given me two more weeks yeah uh, you know, I, I would have had that project done it's just someone else's fault yeah yeah hmm. you feel confident things will work out for you as a narcissist um that's that's a really hard one because i suppose everything we've learned so far is that it's all about a confusion and um about trying to show off to the world something that you're not so that's a lack of confidence in everything deep down but would i show the world that um i think the correct answer from a narcissist is that the beautiful people that are successful that i want to be and want everyone to perceive me to be feel confident brad pitt feels confident i feel confident tick yeah yeah, whereas obviously internally, I'm insecure about things. I'm insecure about my uh, level of skill, my achievements, um, my capabilities and my ability to, to achieve things and to handle, um, say, a, a crisis or a situation or a catastrophe. So I'm not that confident. And if if we now click see results and it asks us to pay 20 bucks, I'm going to be so mad. Yeah, bloody hell. No, I think this is actually just gives you the results, this one. I'm pretty sure. Um, I hope so. Uh, my gender is optional, but of course I'm going to click male because fucking hell. Because <laughs> all these things, bad men are narcissists. Bad men. But it is a question. It is a question. Can women be narcissists too, Steve, in reality? Yes. Yes, but the percentage of female narcissists is tiny. Ma yeah. the majority the vast vast majority i think it's something like two percent i think it's really small like that the vast majority of narcissists are men conversely borderline personality disorder the vast majority of sufferers are women and it's a tiny minority that are men there i think it's actually five percent there okay i think it might so, be the way around i think it's two percent of men are borderline what we've got to do left on stream now is We've got to discuss the results yeah, yeah. and I've got to um, publicly give that money to charity. Mm -hmm. So uh, mm -hmm. this is the person answer results. Defender. What did you get? Um, I just want to, will you check those likes? I can't see the likes. Tell me in chat how many likes we got and I'll just quickly UNICEF up that money. Um, uh, so that, that's done. 159. 159. So. We'll give them, what did I say? 10 pounds. Well, I can give them 15 pounds then, can't I? I'll give them 15. Um, mm -hmm. Let's donate. I, that's... Uh, we used, what I used to do on stream is I used to do um, reject the cookies, reject, 
reject mm-hmm. cookies. I used to do a regular um, charity stream, but we haven't been doing it for a while. So uh, we'll do single donation here of 75. Are they mad? Are they that hungry? Are they that fucking hungry? Don't give them the posh biscuits. Don't get a fucking hell, 79 pounds. Are they fucking mad? No, look, we'll give them 15. <laughs> Sorry. Like if I was, if I was more wealthy, and you would, if you lot would give me more super chats, you chuffers. Um, but like, <laughs> we'll donate that now. And they're going to want my details, so I'm going to quickly just turn this off for a second. Um, and uh, what did you get for your results with the honest quiz? Um, I got quickly. logistician, um, ISTJ. Uh, logisticians are practical and fact-minded individuals whose reality cannot be doubted. Oh, reliability, sorry. Not reliability. And to be fair to Phil, he's reliable. He's there every day when he says he will be. He does put out seven videos a day. So, but mm. practical and fact-minded individuals, that's a bit... Because mm. obviously, you're not, as a narcissist, you're insecure and very emotionally driven. Okay, well, you just... might want to portray that fact-minded, rational sort of sense. You know, you might want people to think you're very calm and rational. Okay, I'm just getting through my PayPal checkout. Um, we will be back on on next Monday, and we haven't really sorted out a plan for what we're going to do next Monday, but we might well do continuation of narcissism, mightn't we? Um, uh, as long as everyone. If you click chat- next, it gives us more stats. It's a bit of a breakdown. If you click next on the on your results screen, so. Okay, yeah, I will do in just a second when I've just done my PayPal payment is processing. Um, thank you. Okay, I can bring that back up on screen now. Uh, camera there. Thank you. The donation is on its way. So uh, thank you for everyone that's done your chippies and super chats. Obviously, I do put that in the kitty for running the stream. I do like to do a little bit. Like We did the 100 likes, didn't we? So that's instead of the bubbles, yeah. we've given some money to charity. So that's a nice thing we've done for the kids. Um, you can all pat each other on the back in chat here for doing that. Um, you're all part of that donation. That's all on you. And then... <laughs> Let's, bubbles <laughs> yeah no bubbles for us just something a bit a bit better than bubbles um and then yeah we were doing uh my narcissism quiz weren't we so um we are the defect the narcissism would come out if if you've got a friend of a fan friend of a friend who's done this quiz and they've come out defender isfja defenders are very dedicated and warm protectors ready to defend their loved ones that would i would agree as a narcissist i'd say yeah i am aren't i yeah. totally yeah, like yeah. that defender stay indoors and let me defend you um, mm-hmm. we, we're best defended by boarding up the windows and not listening to anyone. Yeah, mm-hmm. interesting. Sixty-five percent introverted. Oh, really? Extroverted. That's introverted. Seventy-one percent yeah. introverted. Introverted individuals tend to prefer fewer yet deeper meaningful social interactions and often feel drawn to calmer environments. Agree. That's Which what it says on mind. Tiny yeah. amount of friends that Phil has, you know. Yeah. Mm. Introverted. I always find introverted and extroverted very strange because I think at some moments we're all quite introverted you know we all need to think about things on our own for a little bit and sometimes we're all quite extroverted and i think we all experience those parties where we don't quite know anyone and you know we're sort of sitting on the sofa and uh, uh hi uh do you know oh, are you friends of so you know we've all been there but we've also yeah. been the person where it's like you know my best friend's birthday and we're you know right on the town and having a laugh and singing a song so um i think we can all be a bit of both really but um yeah introverted if you're a narcissist it's coming out introverted for both of the tests um me really? the 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 narcissist answering like i think a narcissist would has come up with energy 69 percent observant observant individuals are pragmatic and down to earth they tend to have a strong focus on what's happening or very likely to happen and as a narcissist i will agree with that i'm going to say yes i'm observant yeah what did you get on i got the- 83% observant and again I think for a narcissist it's about control and, and not wanting to jump into something impulsively because you know you're running the risk of exposure to new and unknown things and that anxiety drives a lot of your behavior so most of the time you are going to want to stay back and you're going to want to watch and plan in advance yeah just to make sure to, to a sinister many- level like to a horrible sinister like controlling computer level like where they bring things up on you like six months later about what you said to so-and-so about their haircut or whatever yeah yeah, um, yeah. you light her out <laughs> you have any i've got, I got the skills i've got the skills you have to hold it down and do the flick next 54 percent feeling in nature uh, feeling individuals value emotional expression and sensitivity they place a lot of importance on empathy social harmony and cooperation so uh, halfway there to being cooperative and social harmony. Um, as a narcissist, I'll be disappointed I only got half. I think I should have got top scores. Fuck, where do I, where do, I do that now? Um, what are you doing? Output, headphones, there we go. 
I could hear. There we go. Sorry. <clears throat> Knock me mic off. Hit reset. <laughs> Am I audible? <laughs> yeah, you're audible. Yeah. Great. You're all good in those. <clears throat> Look, mate, this is not right for nature, this one. <laughs> what, did you, what did you get? I only got half. I got 50%. And as a narcissist, I'm angry that I didn't get top marks. But, you know, what yeah. did you get? I got 83%, which I think, again, I think mm. is due to my bias to over planning in advance to avoid anxiety thinking individuals focus on objectivity and rationality often dismissing emotions in favor of logic so yeah you're going to want to be seen as like pragmatic and rational because you don't want people seeing the emotional side of you oh i so. see this one between thinking and feeling is not top marks is it it's like are you more thoughtful emotional or are you more um pragmatic like you said so yeah um narcissist gets things done and like it's interesting that on the the real test that you took very much a thinking person very much not really time for emotions reminding me of what the question was about parenting as well because i've been in situations with one of my parents where like you know it's it's more about this like pragmatism and getting things done than it is about how you feel about like through the process of doing them are you happy doing them irrelevant do your homework <laughs> like do you know what i mean it's kind of like a, that sort of yeah, thing yeah. isn't it like so the yeah interesting um but me the, the fake narcissist who's answering like i would do if i was trying to sell the right answer comes out with some feelings so but mm -hmm. can't quite push it all the way to feelings yeah tactics <laughs> 96 percent <laughs> judging <laughs> judging over prospecting here are the two um integers here judging over prospecting 53 here that's quite interesting you're in the middle there more prospecting judging individuals are decisive thorough and highly organized they value clarity predictability and closure preferring structure and planning to spontaneity uh, See, that feels like it should be mm. higher for for, for like because obviously your narcissist doesn't they don't like spontaneity they can't um improvise well they're not impulsive in that regard they 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 can't cope with having to think on the fly so things like predictability and structure are, are, are quite important hmm. mm. uh, i think prospecting i don't really know what it means is the other option in this like scale but judging i know what that means and i would say a narcissist is very judgmental um <laughs> like that would that would make sense to me um I, as a narcissist who sees this come up on their test i'd be a bit angry that i'm very judgmental i'd look at that and say this test is wrong that you know i'm not i'm not a judgmental person i, I would judge about, them <laughs> badly it's more about uh, the thinking involved in planning and um Oh, so maybe I'd like see there's good in decisions it. and things. Maybe yeah. I'd say, yeah, that's good because I do plan things well rather than just go off the rails. Yeah, mm. Mm. Um, that's identity. why I'm surprised that this is so low for me because obviously there's a lot involved in making sure you've got control over situations. For and I've got more like. on me as the artist who's trying to write the right answers. Mm. But again, mm. you, you know, that's because you want to be seen like that. You want to be seen as being, you know, very mm. well thought out, very planning plans in advance make sure okay i got it yeah in a row you know yeah i yeah. got it yeah the reality is not like that though you're a bit of a mess you chuffer next um, one's right though Fuck me. identity <laughs> identity 85 percent assertive I i'm gonna have to just move you so that they can see what it says over mm -hmm. assertive over turbulent so i'm assertive over turbulent assertive individuals self-assured even tempered <laughs> and resistant to stress they refuse to worry too much and tend to be self-confident when striving to achieve goals that sounds like you know giga chad doesn't it that sounds like sigma male and but mm -hmm. actually yep. uh it it might not be the same the reality on your your spectrum what, what did you say I got wildly the opposite i got 83 <laughs> percent turbulent Turbulent individuals are self-conscious and sensitive to stress. They feel a sense of urgency in their emotions and tend to be success-driven, perfectionistic, and eager to improve. Now, apart from that eager to improve bit, fill in a nutshell right there. Mm. Uh, we've got a super chat from Snips who's picking out what Audrey said, which is, Steve, did you have a beard at the beginning of the chat? <laughs> uh, no. I was clean shaven. We've been on a little while. Um, we just got one more thing. It asked for my email address. I don't want to give it my email address. And yeah, there's, no, no, it's doing that, a, yeah, a bit yeah. of a more detailed more breakdown here. That's your breakdown not, thing. Yeah, yeah, but we, we don't need to go through deeply now at this stage through that, do we? But um, if you want to take the test yourself and if you want to have a look at it and what have you, it's the 16 personalities test. Steve will shit on it another time. <laughs> <laughs> Have you all had a good time in chat? Have you all had a good time? Listen, everyone, have you all had a good time? That's I the main so. thing. It, we're not trying to like be too heavy, but at the same time, we are dealing with some quite interesting topics and some quite, in t at times, you know, some people find it triggering some quite difficult topics. And uh, what we do here is try and uh, cover those serious things, but also with some 
you know, with some bounce and some joy in us as well. So I hope you've all had a good time here. Um, I'm going to say thank you to Steve. I'm going to say thank you to you in chat. Everyone that super chatted, everyone that sent in their coffee tippies, everyone that did the super chats, uh, you know, special thanks. Um, the kids, thank you from UNICEF. Uh, Steve, do you have any final words that you want to add to today's episode? Um, yeah, if you know me, then you know that I like editing long videos. I'm currently having problems with my video editing software that is just outright refusing to render. I've got a whole video edited and done, ready to go, and it's just not rendering at all. So it keeps crashing on me. I'm having a lot of trouble with that. So I'm going to spend much of the next few hours trying a bunch of workarounds. And yeah, but other than that, I am still doing things. Yeah, <laughs> I have Steve's just had a period of illness. Steve's so. videos will appear on his channel, which I'm showing them on the, the screen now. Um, and oh. I'm going to be back on stream hopefully tomorrow with this Ouija board tarot stuff. We're going to, I'm going to mess about tomorrow and do a, a review of some of the psychics. And then on what's that Tuesday on Wednesday will be the call-in show so I'll quickly just show them that on the screen which is I had this prepared earlier and now it's not prepared um send a voice message to me super chuffer the speak pipe means you can send me a voice message as of now this will be open for submissions for the psychic uh the psychic call-in so either send in a submission what you want me to ask the Ouija board or send in a submission with your experience of anything psychic or if you don't think psychic's real and you think it's a load of chuff send that in give me your opinions on the psychic give me your thoughts that's the speak pipe open i'll remind us all about it tomorrow when we do an episode as well and uh that's that's the thing i've got to finish with saying thank you very much for all your support in chat thank you very much everyone lovely to meet all you new chuffers i hope you all click subscribe because it costs you nothing you chuffer uh and uh, <laughs> uh yeah um I, I, we, we need to close it down now, don't we? Because it's like gone way over time. So thank yeah, you all yeah, for um, an excellent episode. Steve will back, be back on Monday. and if It's not, no longer week, midnight. But, yeah, it's no, it's it no is always midnight. midnight. Oh, that's it. I need to say my thing, don't I? My thing. Oh, it's nearly Literally. actually midnight for us. It is for us, it midnight. is. Yeah, it's always midnight. Yeah. <laughs> Listen, you're good. You're all good. Yeah, I've got an email address. I'll quickly put that. Um, Thanks for being great, chat. I've really loved seeing a lot of people here talking. and It's been fun for me. So thank you. Uh, and if it is nearly midnight, or you, you know, head off to bed. Unless you're a night shift worker, might be a night shift worker. Snippy sent me tippies, um, I'll, and I'll check these and then I'll say good night. Uh, thank you, thank you very much, Snippies, for your tippies. Uh, Snippies is like my my producer. She's been around for for a long time. I'm going to make her an admin. I'm going to make her a uh, what do you call them? A mod. I'm going to have to make her a mod. Um, so, yeah, thank you very much for everyone. And remember, you be good. And if you can't be good, 